where do you want me to put your briefcase? It's all right, I'll sort that out. So are you, um, are you going to be working all day? No. Just got a couple of things I've got to sort out, that's all. There's, um, there's some kind of problem, isn't there? What gives you that idea? Well, it's just, you know, you seem a bit edgy. Do I? I mean, you're not still worrying about me, are you? Because, because you needn't. No. So it's, um, it's work then. Look, why don't you just tell me what it is? Because it's all over, honest. Listen, uh, why don't we go somewhere decent for lunch, eh? We haven't had a chance to celebrate. Oh, no, come on, my hair's a mess. I'd be just as happy to slouch around here all day. Then phone Audrey. She'll do it. She'd be closed. All right, I'll phone her. She'll understand you need cheering up. Oh, come on, she's not going to open up specially. You leave that to me. Like a war zone round here. As soon as I turn me back, the whole area takes a nosedive. Where have you been? Whose is it? Sally's. I thought you'd gone for good. <laughs> Can't get rid of me that easy. I need a job. Tried the job centre. I could help you here. You don't give up, dear. Do <laughs> I can't afford you. I've already took Jim on. What, on crutches? He's working in the office. Mind if I put the kettle on? There's biscuits in the tin as well. So, uh, what happened to the van? Don't go too near. Has someone crashed into it? I don't know. I wish I knew. It'll be all right. Mummy will just have to get another van, won't she? What the hell happened? I don't know. <sighs> Was it an accident? Is there anything in the back? I'm stuck. The whole lot of it. Oh, God. It's gone. Tyrone! Keep an eye on this place till Jim turns up, all right? Come on, then, you two. Let's go and find you some sweeties, eh? And you can help me out in the shop. Come on, Sal. Come and have a sit down. Morning. Morning. And uh, how are you after last night's excitement? Remind me. Sally's van, Steve. Ah, I uh, thought it was very um, inconsiderate of whoever did it. <laughs> I think it was more than inconsiderate. It's lucky there was no more damage done. I was, sir. Uh, Thinking about that coffee you offered me? Oh, you'd like a coffee? I'll put the kettle on, eh? Uh, well, Todd, but not now. Uh, I was thinking maybe, uh, what about lunch? Sorry, far too busy today, Steve. Uh, well, tonight then, maybe. Um, a meal? Um, uh, I think I ought to get an early night tonight. Didn't get much sleep last night. Oh, another time then? Yeah, brilliant. We'll do that when there's a bit more time, eh? Well, I'll hold you to that then. Bye. Nita, my darling, I should have phoned yesterday. Yesterday? Why? What happened yesterday? Oh, it was your birthday, of course. Surely you didn't forget. Uh, no, but everyone else did. <laughs> but it would have spoiled the surprise. Oh. He oh. promised me. He gave me his word. It would be ready in time. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Never ask a favour of a friend. They always let you down. Jewellers, builders, accountants. Mm. Do you like it? Yes. Read the inscription. To my darling Nita, from her adoring father. See? I'm just an old softy. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. Thank you. <laughs> so what did the police say? They said they'd pick the van up later. Well, if they need any help, just pass them on to me. Tom. What that me insurance policy, but I don't even know if I'm covered. It's all jargon. Oh, third party filing theft shouldn't be a problem. But it won't be worth much. It's not my van I'm worried about. All my stock was in the back. I usually unload it, but last night I didn't. 
It's over a thousand quid's worth. I tried farming them, but I can't get through. Let's have a look at it for you. Yeah? Yeah, OK, uh, what junction are you? All right, yeah, I'll come and have a look. I'll be about 20 minutes, OK? I'll take it with me, see if I can make sense of it all. Thanks. Kevin. Thank you. He's after you. Who? Oh, Ashley. Give up. Hey, you want to watch yourself all alone together in that house? Rubbish. Ashley doesn't fancy me. He does. Hey, I could see him when you were dancing with Vikram. You were dead jealous. <laughs> I'm telling you. Toya, you want something? Just browsing. Well, would you mind letting your sister get on with what she's doing? It isn't bad books as it is. No, oh, I what's she done? Well, I like what she's not done. You've been good girls. Thank you, Sharon. Kevin's trying to sort everything out for me. I'm sorry. Look, if there's anything I can do, alone or anything. Thanks, Rita, but no. Can't be going capping on to folk all my life. I've got a fend for myself. Well, I understand, but if you change your mind, you know where I am. Thanks, Rita. Hey, 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 hang your horses, Tyrone. Now, listen, you're telling me Kevin left you in charge of the garage, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Well, why in the name of God would we want to do a damn fool thing like that? Because well, I'm a mechanic. Oh, I see you're a mechanic, are you? And just precisely what type of mechanic are you? Y you are. M motors, I'm a natural. Oh, natural, eh? And you tell me that he left you in charge of the garage, eh? Yeah, because you were, eh? Oh, right. Well, let me tell you something, Mickey. I'm here now, OK? So why don't you just toddle off home, OK? I'll take over from here, all right? Get the belly. Hey! No, he's on a breakdown. Problem? Ah, uh, it's all right, mate. I'll take it somewhere else. Oh, it's your, uh, What's it? Your warning lights on? Oh, yeah, I'd noticed, mate, yeah. How long's it been like that? A couple of miles. <sighs> I won't move it another inch. Take it somewhere else. You might knacker the engine. Open her up. Oi! <clears throat> You, uh, know what you're doing? Uh, don't worry your head, son. I'll keep an eye on him, you know? You know, make sure you do, cos I've got a guy looking at this this afternoon. Right. Everything's under control. Be ready in a couple of hours. So, what's the crack then, eh? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> oh, hello, Audrey. Mike, is Alma still with you? No, 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 it's OK. Just uh, give her a message, will you? Will you tell her not to come back here? I'll meet her in the Rovers later. <laughs> yeah, you as well. I owe you a drink. <laughs> OK, see you later. Bye. Where's he taking you to that? Oh, I don't know. It's a surprise, if he remembered to book. Oh. oh, there you are. We're about to send a search party out for you. What have you been doing? Something cropped up. You know, a bit of business. Oh, so are we, are we still going, then? Yeah, of course we are. It's oh. all sorted. I'm yours for the rest of the day. <laughs> oh, I'll get these. And a scotch, Ooh, please, Jack. Oh, no. Hey, your hair looks great. Audrey? You are a diamond. Oh, oh, Mr Smoother. Who, me? Oh, and I'm modest with it, aren't you? Yeah, that's me. She's taking her outfit day somewhere, somewhere posh, I shouldn't wonder. Oh, well, good luck to her. When did you last take me out for a meal? Yesterday. You didn't? I did. What, Rice Cafe for a cup of tea and a bun? Yes, and I had to pay. Well, I sat with you, didn't, sir? Well, that were big of you. Look, that's not taking me out. I made conversation, didn't I? What, talking about horses and dogs and how you've no money? I bet my Baldwin doesn't aggle over the price of a bun with Alma. What has got into you, eh? 
Right. Um, do you want a drink? Please, thank you. White wine. Mm. Oh, could you do a white wine first, please? Right. Take the day off tomorrow and let's go out somewhere. What, together? Of course, together. As a couple, it's bank holiday. You know, like we used to. No, no, I can't. I, can't. I told Natalie I'm working on it. Oh, that means that I'll be left on my sod. Well, go somewhere with Eunice, then. What? Spend, spend, spend? I can't keep up with her. Well, all right, then, Trisha, then. Give her a ring, go out with her and her kids. No, she'll have arranged something now. Cheers, mate. Here you go. Thank you. Yeah, I've got your present. Happy birthday. Oh, you shouldn't have spider. Yeah, well, I wanted to give it to you yesterday, but I didn't get the opportunity. And then when we got back here, that van was on fire. Mm. And then you and Steve disappeared. I was tired. Oh. I went home on my own, Spider. Oh, it... It's... It's great. What is it? It's a dream catcher. The American Indians use it. Oh, right. What for? Catching dreams. <laughs> well, you see, in the night, there's, uh, bad dreams. And then there's good dreams. Floating. And good dreams, they're clever. They don't get caught. But in the morning, Bad dreams all tangled in the web. So when the sun shines, they melt away forever. You can hang it in your window. Oh, I will. It's a beautiful present. I love it. Thank you. Mm. Listen to that. Sweet as a bird. So what was up with it? Oh, your battery weren't charging. Alternator. Anyway, I've fixed it now. Jim's got your bill. Jim! Hi. Stephen? I'll tell you what. We were up and lucky that wee man was on duty today, so we were. He had the whole thing diagnosed in 15 minutes. God. Cheers, mate. No problem. Any time. So what was up with it, then? Fan belt. Can I go and get me dinner now? Well, we were just going to get ours, weren't we, Rita? Oh. Only you were late in starting. You've said. Sharon's been here since the crack of dawn. All right, point taken. Hiya. How's the hangover? Oh, that bad, eh? How about hair of the dog? What time's the lunch? We will be back in half an hour. Then you can go and get something to eat. Which will probably do you more good than something to drink. Driving me mad in here. What's up with them two? I overslept and I haven't been allowed to forget it. <laughs> I know what you need. A night out with Vikram Desai. Forget all your worries, let your hair down and have a laugh. And pay for it in the morning. No thanks, I better have a quiet night in. Another time, yeah? Promise? OK, I'll hold you to it. Bye. <laughs> well, Stephen seat happy enough, so we did. But did you give Tyrone any money? Or did Tyrone ask for any money? Tyrone never even hinted about money. He was happy as a pig in muck, so he was. He'd had the whole cylinder head off, you know, so he wouldn't mess I'd stopped him. I'll say one thing for that wee fella. He's not afraid of hard work. Yeah, but is he any good? <laughs> Do you need any help? Uh, no, thanks. I told Mrs Webster we'd be removing the vehicle. My wife? Well, ex-wife nearly. So, do you think you're going to get any clues? Well, I doubt it. But we'll try our best. So, you don't live at number 13, then? No. Three doors down, number seven. You haven't seen anyone lurking about? I was just on my way to bed when I heard the windows smash. Next minute, it was up in flames. Didn't hear anyone running away. Why? Do you think it was arson? Well, don't quote me, but what else could it be? Something to eat. Go ahead. I'll come in. It's just scrambled egg. I'm surprised you can eat anything after last night. Do you want a brew? Constitution of an ox. Thought you'd have been home hour ago. Oh, don't ask. I'm up to here. Fed up. <sighs> Never mind. I'm doing us a roast for later. Top side with trimmings. All right. What time would you like it? I don't mind. We're going out. Well, no, I think I'll have a quiet night in. Oh, great, me and all. Tell you what, we could get a video. I'll give you some money and you choose something nice. Yeah. Ta. You're making me dead jealous. Well, you come round if you want. Oh, no, I'd only be in the way. What? I told you. He does, you know. 
Hey, come in. Hey, uh, have you got that claim form? I better get it filled in. Yeah, come in. Hi. Bad news, I'm afraid, though. You're only covered for the first £150 worth. Are you sure? I worked it out. It was worth more than a thousand. What about my house insurance? Well, your windows and your paintwork's covered, but not your stock. That comes under your business. But why? I don't understand. Because you didn't pay for your extra premium. <sighs> if I find out who did this, I'm gonna murder him. Yeah. Thanks for seeing to the police for me, by the way. It's okay. What are you gonna do now? Start all over again. What else can I do? Look, I'll have a, have a look around, find another van for you if you want, see what's about. Would you? Yeah. Anything else? Are you working tomorrow? No, both got the day off, haven't we? You wouldn't have the girls for me, would you, Kev? Just so I can get myself sorted out. Yeah, no problem. Cheers. Right, I'll leave you to it. Right. See, See ya. ya. It was all very cosy. What? Well, you could have asked me about the girls tomorrow. Why, well, it's not a problem, is it? No. Just wish you asked, that's all. Sorry. Mm. Hiya. Hey. Have you got any of them big bags of crisps? Yeah, they're on offer. What flavour would you like? Uh, plain time. Okay. You want a proper meal, not those things. I already had one. Roast beef, Yorkshire pudding, three veg and gravy. And very nice it was too. And you're still hungry? No, I'll there for later. Watching a video. Oh, and a bottle of bitter lemon as well. Okay. Seen it. No good. Oh, thanks. Mm. Take no notice of him. But there's a better one on at the multiplex. It's probably half a dozen. So you choose, and we'll go for a drink afterwards. No, I think I need a quiet night in. You might change your mind. And I might not. Well, if you do, I'll be in the Rovers at eight. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Let's hope she's got more sense. What do you mean? Watch out, that's all. She's on the rebound. She's a nice-looking girl. I like her. That's not what I said. I'll get these, then. Are you sure? Yes. Jack, yes. over here. Yes. She's got some good news. Oh, I? Yeah, I got through to Tricia. She's going to Rill tomorrow with kids. Oh, she's asking me to go with her. Do you know, it's ages since I've been to Rill. Well, it's ages since I saw our Brad. Oh, it's nice to keep in touch. Yeah. It's a shame he can't come and all. I mean, fancy work on a bank holiday. Oh, don't worry. I'll get his tea. Will you? Yeah. Hey, I better form a taxi for the morning. Right. I told you it was good news. So, tea for two. How do you fancy a nice juicy steak and trifle for afters? So you've seen Tyrone? Yeah. Should we go back to yours? Uh, yeah, I'll just finish this. Did he say where he was stopping? No, look, unless you fancy one in the fine arts. Look, I'll get myself a refill. Is it always going to be like this? Oh, Curly. Sally, you do seem to put her first. Look, I can divorce her, but I can't change the fact she's the mother of my kids. Yeah, I understand. And what's more, I can't turn my back on her if she's in trouble. That's just the way I am. It doesn't mean anything. But if you're going to be funny about that, then I think we've got problems. Me and Sally's getting a divorce. That's it, you know, it doesn't doesn't mean I want to get back in there. But I can't change you, I am. I need to talk to you. I'm glad someone does. Listen, you've got extensive knowledge of the female psyche, right? <laughs> Who says? Well, what I heard. I said you don't confuse knowledge with their success. Right, well, you know Nita who works in a corner shop, right? She's well aware that I fancy her. So I'm looking out for the signals. You know, body language, that sort of thing. Well, yesterday, we're like brother and sister, you know, close, but don't touch. And then today, she gives me this enormous smacker on the lips. Well, what should I do? Give her the elbow. You what? Didn't you hear what I said? Give her the elbow. She's playing games with you. I've seen the signs. Get out while you still can. It's too late. I think I love her. I'll not sleep tonight. I think I'll leave the downstairs lights on. Oh. Do you want me to stop here with you? No, I can cope on my own. Besides, I don't want it to get through to the girls. They can sense when you're worried. Mm. Hey, you don't think it could be that fella off the market, do you? You know, 
The one that was giving you all that hassle. Phil Sutton? Mm. No, I wouldn't know where I lived. Hmm. I dare say it's just a couple of daft lads. Daft or drunk. <laughs> Probably both. Maybe. It were deliberate, though, whoever it was. Mm. Best try to forget about it, eh? All I can do. Else I'll be wondering if next time it'll be through my letterbox. Is it hot in here? What? Well, you've gone and got James. You've thrown a turp radiator down. I will anyway. No, it's all right. Don't do it on my account. You're supposed to go this video you've got. Look, Ashley, I've um, changed my mind about stopping in. Oh. Yeah, I feel more wide awake and raring to go, so uh, going out. Right. With Vikram? Well, yeah, actually, why? Well, nothing. I just noticed she was with him last night. Well, I was with you as well. Ah, uh, but not in the same way. Just don't do something you might regret. I'll not say any more. <sighs> oh, you know, we ought to do that sort of thing more often. What, the meal or the walk? Both. It's good for you, is walking. Yeah. <sighs> Well, can we go somewhere flat next time? I mean, the lakes are all right, but there are too many hills. Oh, I don't care where we go. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. Do you know what? It does you good to get out. There you go. Cheers. I owe you an apology, you know. I've been very selfish. <laughs> no, you haven't. I've been so wrapped up with my own troubles, I didn't have time for you. Do you know what? You're too good for me, you are. Oh, don't be daft. I don't know what's been going on this last couple of weeks, but... I wish you'd tell me what it is. It's over. It's in the past. I mean, I know why you didn't tell me. I mean, you didn't want me to worry. But are you sure everything's OK now? I've just told you. I mean, you've not gone bankrupt or anything. No. Well, I've been no use whatsoever. But I do love you, you know. And you will never know how much I love you. Millions? Yeah, if I had them. <laughs> Can you do your seatbelt, Sophie? Right, good girl. So where are you thinking of going? Uh, Kevin says they like the zoo. Yeah, they do. Hey, uh, Kev, I've given them three pound each spending money. Oh, right. We all set then? Yeah! Yay! Yay! Bye, Let's girls. Go. Have a good day and I'll see you later on. Bye. Let's go to the zoo. I've had a right job finding you. It's foreign parts to me round here. What brings you down this way? Well, the market super told me why you went around on Saturday about your van and that, and I just thought, well, I'm not doing anything today. I wondered if you needed a hand with anything. Oh, that's nice of yeah? you. Come in, have a cup of tea. Oh. Well, so? Oh, I feel awful. Have we got any painkillers? You might have some aspirin in the kitchen cupboard. I heard you come in last night, or I should have said this morning. It was nearly three o'clock. Good job you've got day off. Oh, Ashley. What? Pig, pig, nag, nag. You sound like someone's old grandma or something. Give over moaning. Oh, sorry. Anyway, did you have a good time last night with Vikram? Where'd you finish up? Why don't you just shine a light in my face or pull out my fingernails? Are you jealous or something? No, I'm just taking an interest. Well, it doesn't seem like that to me. Every time I go out with somebody, you go all huffy. Look, we're mates, you and me, do you know what I mean? Mates. That's all there is to it. You're not my type. I'm not a type, thanks very much, and me. And I'm not jealous, neither. I just try to be a friend to you, that's all. Oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to bite your head off. Oh, I feel awful. I'm going back to bed. Do you fancy another cup? No, I'm fine, thanks. Where are your kids? You got what, two girls, into it? Yeah, that's right. The dad's taking them out for the day. Oh, right. I... I thought you were on your own, that was all. I am. No, we're separated. Well, we'll be divorced soon. But I've got the girls and Kevin still sees them and so on. But no, I'm a free woman. I'm sorry to hear about your van. What was it, faulty wiring? Somebody deliberately set fire to it. That's what the police think. 
So do I. Who'd do that? Police say kids or hooligans, but I don't know. You know that Phil down at the market? What? Phil Sutton, you mean? He wouldn't do anything like that, would he? <laughs> no. No, no, he's... He's a miserable so-and-so, but he's all mouth and no muscle. How are you going to manage without a van? I'll have to get another. As quick as I can. But the thing is, Danny, all my stock was in the back of that van when it went up. Everything, the lot. So now I'm going to have to look for a fresh supply. I mean, there's nowhere open on a bank holiday Monday, is there? Unless... That's a thought. Could you spare me five minutes? Of course. How often do we get the chance to be together? And you want to go off working? If you think about it, it makes sense. People don't want the window cleaner coming round on a bank holiday. Well, that's the point. I'm trying to build up my round. When I call round Monday to Friday, hardly anybody answers because we're all out at work. Well, people don't go out working on a bank holiday. Well, that's the point. When I call round today, they'll answer the door and I'll be able to say, do you want your windows cleaning regularly? You see? Yes, I know. I appreciate you trying to build up your round, but I like us spending time together. Just have to make more of the time that we've got, won't we? I think you want it. William, I can tell that yell anywhere. See you later. You will. You were here, I saw your car outside. So? This is a friend of mine, Danny. Danny, this is Mr Baldwin. Hiya. I hope this isn't a social visit, cos if it is, I'm busy. No, well, I don't know if you've heard, but... my van was set on fire with all my stock in it. Yeah, I've got problems of my own I'm trying to sort out. This is business, Mr Baldwin. I need to replace that stock, and... I was just hoping you'd sell to me. I'll sell to anyone if they've got the money. I'm not looking at the top end of your price range, but settings, they'd be best. I've got plenty of those, but I haven't got time to sort it out today. Can you come back tomorrow? Yeah. I take it you've got transport, you won't want me to dispatch this to somewhere or other? She'll have transport, yeah. Thanks, Mr Baldwin. I appreciate it. Any time, as long as it's business. I'm glad you're home today. Yeah, uh, we're open every day. Oh, yeah, the family empire in which the sun never sets, we never close. It's getting like that at my end of the game now. Your end of the game? Oh, that's right, yeah, you work at Freshco's, don't you? Well, yeah, I suppose you could put it like that. Open seven days, all hours, even the big boys are at it now. Have you got any, uh, Rioca? Everything we've got is up there. Yeah, I like a wine that wipes the boots on the old palate, you know. Do you drink wine at all? Well, oh, now and then. Mm. Oh, this will do. Yeah, the old red. Coat de Rhone. Earthy. Virile. A beaker full of the warm south. Mm. Five ninety nine, please. Right. Oh, we're there. Thank you. Ah, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be in here till this afternoon. I know, I know. There you go. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. you look like something the cat dragged in. Okay, what do you want? Give us an advance on wages, Nate. Here I'm stony. <laughs> Typical. Twenty? Make it 40. I'll make it 20. <laughs> listen, uh, do a swap with me tonight. You do my shift tonight. No. I'll... Listen, I'll do your shift tomorrow night. No, it's your turn. What's up with you? You went out with Leanne last night, didn't you? Yeah, I know, but there's a special night on at this cafe bar tonight. I've told you no. You're just being awkward now. Mm. Right, fine. OK, well, I might just be ill tonight, the flu. I can feel it coming on. All right, that's it. I'm phoning my father. Oh, there's no need for that, Neat. Yes, there is. Where are you going now? For a drink. Real? It's years since I was over that way. There was an army camp there, as I recall. Well, it's just a day out with our little Brad and his mum, you know. Is he the one from Blackpool? No, oh, that's our Tommy. No, this oh. is our Brad. It's a bit complicated, you know. Jack, is that my taxi? Yes, that is your taxi, my little love book. Right, well, I'll be off then. Uh... See you when I see mm. you. I've got a key, so don't oh. wait up. Right, my little bladder rack. Uh, don't forget to give Brad a big kiss from his granddad. I will do. All right. <laughs> do you know I might bring his dicker out back? You could do with one. On. Oh. 
Right now, I my life out with them. Glad I can turn you on. So then, Jack, here we are. Aye. There is a way for the day. What shall we do? How do you mean? Well, you're supposed to have fun on a holiday, aren't you? Fun and games. Oh, yeah, well, it's all right for them people who are not working, but I've got to get back to Rome. Well, I'll ring them up. I'll tell them you can't come in. I'll tell them you've had to go to bed. It needn't be a lie. <laughs> it's a good job, I know, when you're kidding. <laughs> Jack! <laughs> oh, that'll be our Vera. She'll have forgot something. Hey, Gary, lad! Have I come at a good time? As I say, you have, yes. This, this is my mate Gary, the lad I was telling you about. Uh, oh, yes, I remember you. Yeah. I was wondering if he could use my services. He's a window cleaner. Oh. I do a good job. I won't let you down. I tell you what, why don't you try me out? And if you're not satisfied, well, fair enough. What? You mean like now? Well, I... I just need my bucket filling first. You just will fill your bucket with a bit of luck. She might bring your chamois out to, uh, I'll see you. Jack! Right. Where would you like me to start? <sighs> Do you fancy eating out tonight? Oh, no, not tonight. It's bank holiday. I mean, everywhere will be full in a bit now. We'll eat at home. I've got fillet steak. Ah, now you're talking. You know, it's wonderful having that worry lifted off us. Ah, oh, Mike, I'm glad I've seen you. Hi, Alma. Hi. I meant to mention this on Saturday morning, but I missed you. Oh, yeah, what do you want? Well, there's an invoice from Mercury, an enormous amount of fabric. Yeah, I know about that, yeah. Oh, it's far more than we usually are. It's about £10,000. Yes, all right, leave it to me. It's not even as if we've taken delivery of the stuff. Deirdre, yet. it's a day off. Leave it until we get back to work, all right? Sorry, I'm sure. That was a bit rough. Just call her back. No. Mike, what's all this about, anyway? Oh, now, don't you start. Come on, let's go. All right, please, Jack. All right. What happened? How do you mean? At Eunice's, at the Dings. Oh, I cleaned the windows. There are a few of them, isn't there? It's a big place. So? Oh, no. Ah. Afterwards, yes, she uh, she made me a cup of tea, and uh, she said I could clean them every fortnight. <laughs> Are you pulling that pine to what? You're not pulling your weight in this enterprise, and you know it. Oh, she's been moaning about me again. It's not just sister I'm talking about. I'm talking about you, and it is I who is saying this to you, not Nita. You're not earning your corn. I do my fair share. Not enough. But from now on, you will. Starting right this moment by working the evening shift. I've already made arrangements for tonight. So unmake them. I'm taking Leanne out. Well, that was the girl that you were having a drink with. But she's far too young to be in a public house. Mm, and she's married. No, she's not. Oh. What? All right, she is. But her husband's left her. It's finished. So young and already a broken marriage, Vikram. What the hell are you doing? What are you getting involved with a girl like that for? She's a nice girl. I'm sure she is, Vikram, my boy. Now, you've got brains. Start using them. From now on, you work. You didn't have to bring the old man in. Yes, I did, because I've tried everything else. I'm not carrying you anymore, Vic. OK. Hiya. All right. Just the man I want. Oh. That's the sound of that. The electric's gone in the flat. Would you mind having a look at it for me, please? Sure. Thanks. Come on up, then. And you, you're in charge. In charge? Mm. Yeah, I'm a bonded labourer. Jack! Oh! Just back from work at the Rovers, are you? Yeah, it's been one hell of a session, and I'm absolutely jiggered. Jiggered. So I was thinking I might, I might go up and, and have a lie down upstairs, you see, because I've got to get that with it. Do you there know, the she's session exploiting tonight. exploiting you, that, Natalie. It's not fair to mm. you. No, no, no. Well, there's no peace for the wicked, is there? You see. Yeah, before you go and lie down, mm. let me ask you this. Have you had your tea? No. Good. Cos I've got something special cooking for you. It's your favourite. 
liver and onions. Oh, brilliant. Well, I know a man likes something hot in front of him. Well, yeah, yeah, it's true enough, is that huh? Now, you sit down and I'll be your serving wench. Here, now get that down, you. It's full of iron. Oh, you spoil me, Eunice. <laughs> liver and onions, eh? <laughs> Wait till you see what you're getting for afters. <laughs> See? Nothing. Mm. Well, have you checked the bulb? Oh, Steve, I'm not stupid. Everything's off. Where's your fuse box? Um, fuse box. Ah, oh, so, see it. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's tripped out, you see. It's no problem. All you do is uh, switch it back on. Oh, oh, great. Just like that. Now, you see, most people would charge you 40 quid for that. Plus VAT, but I'm oh. doing a special free service to a select group of friends. Uh, how select? You're the only one on it. <laughs> well, I'm thrilled. Now, how would you like a nice cup of tea? Oh, that'd be great. To be getting on with. I'm afraid that's all I can offer you. Yeah. And now, hold on. There is something else. Yeah. Could manage a piece of cake. Those last two bags will go with possibles. They weren't bad for the price they were asking, were they? Yeah. I'll check with Kevin in the morning, cos he said he might buy me something first. But if not, I think I'm gonna go for that last one we looked at. Thanks, Danny. I'm really grateful to you. It's all right. It's my pleasure. Chance you drink in my local? No, I bet you're in to get home, aren't you? No, drink would be great. Right. Come on, then. And it's on me. Hi, Nita. Oh, hi, Spider. Oh, just pop round, you know, say hello, have a chat. Yeah. Can we make it another time, Spider? It's just I'm up to my eyeballs at the moment. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. You work too hard. Yeah, tell me about it. See ya. <laughs> See ya. Hey, Spider. Yeah? I haven't forgotten about that vegetarian banquet you promised me, you know. Yeah? Great. See ya. See ya. See ya. Where were we? Um, was that, um, Spider Nugent's voice I heard at the door there? Yes, it was. Uh, uh, you, uh, you did well to get shot of him. I mean, uh, he makes me smile. You know, the way he walks around fronting himself like he's some uh, street smart, where it's that kind of guy when, uh, what is he really? Uh, some kind of woolly jumper who lives with his auntie. Oh, come on, Steve. Be fair, he's a nice bloke. You know, nice guys always finish last. That's even when they can make it to the race, which he won't. <laughs> which is uh, why you got rid of him. Maybe, but now I'm getting rid of you. Oh, neat. What? I've got to get back to work. You want to live a little, you know what I mean? Mm, only too well. See yourself out, Steve. Ashley! Well? Somebody at the door. Talk there for you, it's always this. I'm doing my nails. I'm like a flaming butler, I am. Is Leanne here? Yeah. Told you, Hiya. Hiya. Hey, do you like this colour? Yeah, terrific. Uh, I'm sorry, Leanne, there's a problem. I can't take you out tonight. Oh, why not? The old man's making me work. What, on a bank holiday? That's what he's like. He does it himself, so the rest of the family have to. You know what it is? I can't just tell him to get knotted. Yeah, I've noticed. I'll take you out tomorrow night, or later this week. I'm sorry, Leanne. So am I. I've got to get back to the shop. I'll see you later. Maybe. It'll do you good, have a good night, and you know. There's a good film on teller. I like a man who enjoys his food. It shows he knows how to indulge himself. A man who makes a good tea. He's a man who can make a woman happy. Well, I do enjoy my grub, Eunice. I'll tell you something else. You're quite a dish yourself. <laughs> oh, get back into the knife box, Mr. Sharp. <laughs> and this here wine's growing on me and all. Oh. Well, do you see, Jack? Yeah. You're a mature man. I mean, a young man, he's like a bull at a gate. But I bet you know how to take your time. 
Time, time. It turns out the time I've got to be getting back to Rovers now. Jean, I don't uh, think it's fair you having to work while the rest of the world's playing. Uh, well, what do you see? I mean, look at our Vera. I mean, she's away pleasuring herself in real. I'd like to have gone on that trip myself. Well, well I'm glad you didn't. Hey, but can we forget about Vera? It's not easy. I've been trying for years. I'll help you. Now, you come and have a rest on the sofa. No, 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 I should, no, no, I should no, no, be making no, no, tracks. No, 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 you sit down no, no. And, let, oh. and let your tea settle, because it's nature's way. And I'm a great believer in nature's way, me. <laughs> there you go. Ciao, love, cheers. Where's our Jan? Well, that's what I'd like to know. He's not showing up yet. Anyway, what are you doing here? I thought you'd gone out for a day, not back till midnight. Well, I went to Rill, you know, with uh, Ray and Trisha and Jamie and our little Brad. But as soon as we got there, our Brad took poorly, so we had to turn around and come back. Why, well, what's up with him? Well, he's all right now. You know what kiddies are like. But, you know, well, it was too late. We'd got home and oh, I wonder what's keeping our Jack. <laughs> <laughs> so how about it? Are you game, then? Yeah, I'm always game for a night out. Okay, well, why don't we go and grab something to eat now? Pizza suit you? Yeah, fine by me. And we'll go into town and hit the clubs about 11. Brilliant. All right. See you in the morning, Audrey. Capable of doing someone's hair without cutting their ear off, I hope. Hey. She likes a good time, not we, girl, eh, Audrey? Well, well, that's the polite way of putting it, Jim. I mean, she's got three lads on the go to mine, I would. Three? Well, the bloke in the corner shop. Uh, Vic Ram. Ram by name, Ram by nature, I don't know. Oh, here. Then Tom. I mean, I'm sorry to see he's taken in. Jim, don't cut yourself on, Audrey. Taken in is that what you call it, eh? Behave yourself. Who's the third one? Well, young Ashley, her housemate. I mean, he may not be taking her out, but uh, he's letting her back in every night, oh, isn't he? Oh, Do you know she's a right little trolloper, I think? No wonder our Nick had had enough of her. So kind of you, Danny, running me about looking at vans. Hey, it's nothing. Listen, tomorrow when I finish on the market, I thought I could come up here and we could go load up that stuff from what's his name? Baldwin. Are you sure? I told you we'd have transport, remember? Until you have got yourself a van, I thought I could maybe call around in the morning and run you to the pitch. <gasps> what can I say? Just say you'd do the same for me if I'm ever stopped. It's a promise. Hiya. Uh, I thought I'd find you there. Oh, are you? Just been to your house. Look, um, the kids are waiting in the car. Alison's minding them until you get there. Right. Hey, did you have a good day with them? Yeah, yeah, great, thanks. Uh, Judy, can I have a pint and a white wine? Judy, yeah, sure. Jenny, when you're... I'll be with you in a minute. Right, I'd better go and get the girls. Thanks again, Danny. Right, I'll be off myself in a minute. I'll just finish this net for home. Yeah, OK, right, well, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Cheers. There you go, Kevin. So cheers, thanks, Judy. Judy. Yeah, hang on. Oh, hold on a minute, Jim. I've only got one pair of hands. Where the hell is Jack? You know, you're making me ill, don't you? Hey. Frustration, all bottled up inside. Yeah. It's making me poorly. No, no, I feel so well myself. Uh, I've got this pain down my arm. Oh, well, put it round me, no, Jack. No. That'll make it better. Do you know what I think? I think this uh, liver several is exactly uh, a bit heavy, I think. I know. I, mean, I know you've got uh, feelings for me, Jack. I can tell. No, 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 I don't feel right. I don't feel no, well. Don't I fight do, it, don't, don't fight it. No. I knew from the minute you set foot in this house we were fated, you and me. No, and don't. Not, let me go, let me go. Uh, no, don't. Oh, no, let me fly down. Oh, yes, 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 Who is this? It's Julia. Remember me, your bosom friend. What do you want? I've got another consignment of fabric for you. Very exciting patterns. Very revealing patterns. I forgot to include them in your last order. A bargain of 10,000. You can go to hell. I'm not interested. You're not getting another penny out of me. And I don't want to hear from you again. Do you understand? Who was that? Hey, oh, a double glazing salesman. Careful! Shouldn't let them get to you. He hung up. I told you he wouldn't like it. Of course he doesn't like it. That's the old point. He 
He'll pay, don't worry. He's got no choice. Come on, girls! Stop messing about or we're going to be late. I'll get it. No, you won't. Hey, look, the pair of you. Just get yourselves ready, OK? Feeling. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm fine, Vera. You look it. You look well, Jack. Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, pull up a chair, sit down. All right. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's a cannula. Don't worry, everybody has one of these in here. Just in case they want to bang any drugs into you. So, what have they said? Well, not a lot, as a matter of fact. The big boss is on holiday. The only person I've spoken to is a, the little girl who was on night duty. Well, what are they doing? I mean, if you've had a heart attack... They don't know whether I've had a heart attack, Vera. Oh, they must still. They don't. Why do you think they're doing all these tests? Oh, well, they have been doing some of it, then. Oh, of course they have. Every time I drop off, somebody wants half a gallon of blood or hoop me up into some flaming machine or something. But they haven't told you out yet? Because they don't know how to be. Well, I'm going to go have a word of it. Leave it, Vera, leave it. These little girls have run off the feet as it is. When they find something out, they will tell me. Well, I hope they do, because I've been worried sick all night, Jack. Oh, well, there's no need, is there? Well, if it was something bad, then I'd be in coronary care next door, wouldn't I? Yeah. It's just that... Oh, God, Jack, I, I, I thought I was going to lose you. I did. <sighs> In fact, if it hadn't been for you, Nissi, opening your shirt, I don't know what would have happened. Oh, it, it was nothing, Vera. Just common sense. No, it were more than that, love. You were a lifesaver. Thank God you were trained in emergency procedures. Look, I'm sorry I let you down, OK? No problem. My dad keeps banging on about the shop. I said, it's no problem. So, if I asked you to come to a party with me tonight? I'd say, yeah. Great. I'll pick you up about nine. I'll be ready. What's he mean? How's business going? Don't forget Love Greg. So you think he's responsible for the van? Well, it's obvious, isn't it, Rita? He hates me. He wants me to know it was him who did it. Surely he wouldn't be that stupid. <sighs> he's capable of anything. Then you must go to the police, Sally. And I mean straight away. Oh, I'm going, don't worry. If he thinks he can put me through all this again, he's very much mistaken. So, was it the distributor? Yeah. Thought so. Look, have you had nothing better to do? No. Gonna test drive it now? Yeah. Problem? Left the keys up here. Hey, no, they're still in the dashboard. Are you joking, aren't you? No, it's easy done. It's head on. No, that thought it. Oh, yeah, he's, he's got a market stall. Sells lampshades and all that. He's got all the old rabbit off. Hey, he's got the women eating out of his hands, he has. Ta-da! How'd you manage that? Don't ask. <laughs> Electric's OK. Yes, thanks. Why, would you like to come and fix them again? I was just checking. Mm. It's all part of the service. Thank you. Rita, um, I, I was looking for some fresh yeast, if that's possible. Mm, you're baking some bread, Mrs Bishop. Well, I thought I might give Geoffrey a treat. Mind, it's years since I made any. Yeah. Just got dried, I'm afraid. Oh, I'm sure that'll do. Um, oh, and um, a bag of strong flour. OK. Though you're a hard act to follow, I must say. Jeffrey's been raving about your cooking. Mm. Not sure that my vegetable casserole quite matches up. Oh, it was nothing, really. <laughs> oh, well, he said he had a wonderful evening. Oh, well, it was very nice, yes, but I'm sure that was much more to do with the company than the food. <laughs> Hiya. <laughs> Excuse me a sec, would you? Nita, look, be a doll and uh, swap shifts with me this evening. Only I've got a date, OK? Sorry. 
Oh, this is important to me, this. Yes, well, so is my evening at the gym. Thank you, Mrs nice, Bishop. Thank you. Bye. 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 I'm taking Leanne out. I can't let her down again. Oh, well, that's your problem, isn't it? You shouldn't make arrangements with people when you know you've got to work. Look, be reasonable. I am being reasonable, Vikram. I work hard, I earn my time off, and I'm taking it. Mr Duckworth. Uh, How are you feeling now? Well, I feel a lot better when I know what's what. Yes. Well, we have a few more tests we'd like to do yet. Uh, but the good news is there's no evidence of a heart attack from your blood samples. Oh, so you don't rightly have had one, then? We don't think so. But there are one or two tests we'd like to do before we let you go home. Like what? Well, a stress test, for a start. You don't mean you're bringing our Vera back in, do you? Vera? The wife, aye. A bit more scientific than that. Listen, any stress test that you lot can dream up is not half as bad as living with our Vera. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. Yeah, I did. I had a great time. How about a repeat performance, then? OK. Tonight? Can't tonight. Already spoken for. Oh, someone I know. Maybe. OK, well, you let me know when you're free and we'll take it from there. OK. See ya. You're enjoying your little self, aren't you? And why not, eh? Getting desperate trying to pick up my rejects. <laughs> I'd hardly call him one of your rejects, Toya. More mine, if anybody's. How'd you work that out? He took me out for a pizza last night, didn't he? So what do I care? Mind you, he's nice. But then again, so is the one who's taking me out tonight. Oh, yeah. Great to be in demand, isn't it? Hi, Deirdre. What's Mike about? Oh, he is somewhere, yeah. This is a friend of mine, Danny, from the market. Danny, this is Deirdre. Hello, Deirdre. Mike was supposed to have left an order for us to pick up. Oh, right. Well, uh, I'll see if I can find him then. He hasn't said anything to me about it. Well, before you do, you've not heard anything on the great man about Greg Kelly, have you? No. Why should I have? I just wondered if he'd been in contact with Mike about anything. I wouldn't have thought he'd be in any hurry to get in touch with Mike. Who wouldn't be in any hurry to get in touch with me? Greg Kelly. Sally was just asking if he'd been in touch. As far as I'm concerned, Greg Kelly's history. And your gear's ready to be picked up. Yeah, right. I've got the money on me now if you want it. We'll invoice you. I don't like my business being discussed by my admin assistant and my ex-employees. We weren't discussing business, Mike. Sally just asked me if I'd heard anything about Greg Kelly, and I told her I hadn't. I heard what you said, and in future where this company's concerned, you keep shtum, all right? Don't answer that. Check they pick up the right stuff. Janice knows where it is. <laughs> worn a pair of these since I turned out for Weatherfield Rovers and the Salford Sunday Cup, love. Going back a bit there, Mr Duckworth. Right, hey, now then. David Beckham had doubt on me in them days, you know, darting Jack Duckworth, he used to call me, you know. Oh, I... There were a few clubs had their eye on me. Mind you then again, so did our Vera. And Vera won, eh? Aye, ah, yes, she did, aye. Uh, what, how I have, like, grease lightning, how I have, like, a well-oiled whippet in them days. Well, in a minute, you'll have a chance to relive your glory days. We'll get you on the treadmill. Mm. You'll grip the bar here. Mm. Janet will start the machine, and all you have to do is walk. We'll record on this screen exactly how your heart responds to the exercise, OK? Mm. Yeah, yeah. We'll gradually speed the machine up, put it in an incline, like you're walking uphill. If at any time you feel pain or discomfort or you want to rest, just step off the machine by placing your feet on either side. Right. OK. Yeah. All right, Janet, wire him up. Good. Yeah? Listen, uh, I was just wondering whether you'd be, uh, whether you'd be needing me tomorrow. Uh, no, but I'll, I'll give you the bell if you change my mind, all right? Oh, well, fair play. Hey, he does not get stuck in that wee lad, eh? Mm, it's all right. It's strange, like, what is a quick learner? <laughs> Tyrone, get cleaned up now, mate. Oh, I've just got a couple of nuts to tighten up. I'll see this job off, OK? OK. <laughs> He's no clock watcher anyway, is he? Oh, full of surprises. 
Right, I'll get away on that. Uh, hey, Jim, listen. I will need you, but not just at the moment, OK? All right, fair enough. Cheerio, all night. Yeah, see, see you, for own. <laughs> right. Job done. Want to check it? Yeah, I'll keep it till tomorrow. Hey, not that it needs checking. Sound job is that? Yeah, uh, have I thought of doing this for a living? <laughs> you kidding? People get nervous when they see me round cars. Yeah, well, I don't. No, you're pretty cool, I've got to admit. So, how do you fancy spending your days oxidising grease? Be great. Eh? So if I was to offer you a job as an apprentice? Are you serious? I mean, I don't want no messing about and the money's rubbish. Hey, it's better than what I'm getting now, innit? So? Oh, fab. Thanks, Kev. <laughs> you're the cracker. Hey, and don't worry, I won't let you down. Yeah. You better not. Hi, Judy. Hiya, I'll be with you in a minute. Okay. <coughs> you know, you don't have to ignore me just because I blew you out. Sorry? You can't always have everything you want, Steve. Well, all I want right now is, uh, his pint. Pint, please. Can't he leave her alone for five minutes? She's got more sense than to get involved with that one. I think so. She is no fool. Take more than good looks to impress Nita. Well, you think I'm still in with a chance, then? Every chance. In fact, she was only saying this morning how much she enjoyed your company. Really? Really. Oh. There you go, Steve. Thank you. Have one yourself. Oh, cheers. You know you'll put weight on drinking that. It's all right, I get plenty of exercise. So do I. Yeah, but uh, I don't have to go to the gym to keep in shape. You want to watch that one? Mm. Don't worry, I intend to. So they agreed. It could have been him that set fire to your van. They were very sympathetic. They even said they'd pick him up if they knew where he was. Well, that might prove a bit difficult, because he won't be showing his face around here for a bit, I dare say. So. Yeah, well, if he does, he knows what he's going to get. Mm. Pint a bit of Judy, love. Right, sir. I don't want me to fire. Have you seen this? I haven't got my glasses with me. It's from your son. Oh, I. It came right after my van burned out. So? So, it asked me how my business is doing. Yeah, well, he always was a thoughtful bloke, our Greg. He was an animal. And if you see him, you tell him from me I've been to the police. Hang on. I hope you're not trying to say he talks to your van. Because if you are a girl, you better have proof. You can get into a lot of trouble for defamation of character. Yeah, and you can get into a lot of trouble for arson as well. So you tell him if he shows his face round here one more time, I'll have him. If the police don't get him first. Sorry, closed. Says open. No, it says closed. Well, I just want a pint of milk. That won't take a few seconds. Sorry, done the till. Cashed up. Well, OK, give me a pint of milk and I'll come back tomorrow and pay you. Don't give credit. <laughs> Are you telling me you're not going to serve me sums, at it? Try around the corner in Rosman Street. Mm hmm Thanks very much for your help. Without the elephants, sooner or later, Africa will lose its unique wildlife. Sorry to interrupt your viewing, Mr. Docker. No, that's all right, love it. Feeling better now? You weren't kidding when you said stress test, were you? Well, it is designed to see how far you can go under physical pressure. Aye, oh, well, in my case, not very far. I half expected that. Yeah, well, I didn't. I mean, I spend half my time picking up crates and running up and down stairs. Yeah, well, that's something you're going to have to knock on the head. What? I had a word with the boss, showed him your test results. The good news is you can go home as soon as you can arrange a lift. Oh, thank God for that. But the bad news is the test confirmed pretty much what we suspected. What? You have a few problems with your coronary arteries, Mr. Duckworth. Coronary arteries? It's a common complaint. If that's your heart, you've blood being pumped through it all the time. But blood also goes to the arteries on the surface of the heart like this. It's this blood that keeps the heart muscle alive and fit. In your case, these arteries have narrowed, 
So the blood flow to the heart muscles restricted, which is why you've been suffering from the pain, the angina. So in other words, you're saying I've got angina? Yes, but angina only describes the pain. What we need to do now is find out how narrow those arteries are. We can give you drugs to expand the arteries a bit, and we can give you drugs to thin the blood down so it's easier for it to pass through. But what we need to do is fix an appointment for you to come in and have an angiogram. An angiogram? We'll get you in for the day. Insert a fine tube or catheter into an artery at the top of your leg and feed it up into your heart. Oh, shh. Don't worry, it's painless. And it does mean we can pass some dye into your arteries and see exactly what state they're in. So when's this going to happen, then? We'll let you know. Meanwhile, just get on with your life. Take your pills and don't do any sudden exercise. Oh, and you'll need this. If you have any more pain, just spray that onto your tongue. It works very quickly. OK. I'll leave you to ring your wife and uh, sister will explain anything else you need to know before you go. Do you want another? Yeah, nice one. Good party. Glad you're enjoying it. You've got a lot of friends, haven't you? Mm. A few. Heard from Nick. Why? Just wondered. Yeah, we'll save your energy. Is he gonna come back? I doubt it. And even if he did, I wouldn't be interested. That's positive enough. So, interrogation over. Time to dance. <laughs> I'm sick to death of him having a go at me. I can't do anything right. Well, you know what he's like. But he's not been like that with me. Well, not till lately, anyway. Well, like you say, he's worried about Alma. Alma's in the clear now, and he's still jumping down my throat. I don't even have to do anything anymore. I'll have a word if you think he's doing any good. I don't think that's a very good idea, but thanks for offering anyway. Oh, all right. Yeah, well, OK. Let me know what happens. Bye. See you in a bit. Judy, my darling, my usual yeah. mort. Right, sir. Ah, Mr. MacDonald, and how are you this evening? I'll tell you the truth, I'm a wee bit confused, so I must really say. Confused? But confusion, they say, is not very good for the digestion. No, not at all. Tell you the truth, there's a few things I'm finding hard to swallow right enough, one of which is your son refusing to serve me the night. Vikram refused to serve you? He did indeed. The shop said it was open, but he said he was closed. What time was this? Eight o'clock. We were open till nine, nine-thirty. Not tonight, you're not, mucker. Oh, I see. Well, I'll get to the bottom of this. What is it that you wanted? Just a pint of milk. Well, you stay here. I'll personally fetch you a pint of milk. Hey, don't worry your head, Ravi. I went across the road to the garage and I got one there. Mind you, that was on your son's advice, so it was. Judy, my darling, I'll be back in a minute. It's real night. Mike, can I have a word? Yeah, sure. Do you want a drink? No, just a word and not at the bar. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Fire away. Are you unhappy with the way I've been doing my job? No. Well, then why have you been jumping down my throat every time you walk in the office? Have I? Yes. And don't say it's because you've been worried about Alma, because that won't wash anymore. Oh, well, uh, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I know this business gets you down from time to time. I, that's natural. But if you're unhappy with what I'm doing... No, I'm not. I'm not unhappy at all. If you don't trust me... Of course I trust you. Well, then... What's all this business with the safe? Why have you been taking responsibility away from me? Ah, oh, yeah, I can uh, see how that must look. Good, because I don't think I can go on like this much longer, Mike. Oh, I'm sorry, Deirdre. It's... Well, it's got nothing to do with you at all. It's just that... Well, to tell you the truth, I'm in a bit of a mess. And I just don't know what to do. <laughs> oh. oh, yes, that's what I like. A man with strong arms. <laughs> I think it might be about time I took you home. No, it's only early and things are just getting interesting. Hello there! <laughs> I'm sure things would be just as interesting back at yours. Yeah, but there's no party back at mine. Oh, I don't know. I'm sure we could soon get one going. I know what you're doing, Vikram, at Desai, and you're a very, very pretty boy. That's how you like me. 
Who says I like you? I do. Yeah, well, you're right. Let's go. <sighs> I don't know what to say, Mike. But you can have a go at me if you want. You've got the right. I don't think getting all moralistic is going to solve anything. Well, it's not that I've just made a complete fool of myself. I've put me and Alma in jeopardy, and I don't want to hurt her. You've already hurt her, but she doesn't know. Well, there's no way that paying up's going to help. You don't honestly think this woman's going to let you escape until she's cleaned you out, do you? I don't know. She might. She won't. She'll take everything you've got, and then when you have nothing left, she'll just tell Alma anyway. Oh, I don't want to lose Alma. The first time you made a move with this woman, you risked that. It makes no difference what happens now. But paying up is just going to prolong the agony. I'm not sure I can pay anymore. Well, then, do the honest thing. Go to the police, tell them what's happened, and then... Sit down with Alma. <laughs> I'm turning lights on, I can't see. I don't need light. <laughs> what are you doing? Use your imagination. Hold on, let me take my jacket off. <laughs> don't think so. Ashley, what are you doing up? I think you better get in bed. Oh, do you? Yeah, I do. And I think you better get off home. Just ignore him. I'm seriously, Anne. You didn't know fit state do out. Who do you think you are, my dad or something? I don't want you doing something you'll regret. Hang on, Ashley, cool it. This is our party, it's got nothing to do with you. It's my house, it's got everything to do with me. Oh, Ashley, don't be such an old woman, Hey, We've been to a smashing party. Look, she can't even stand up straight. Come on, let's get you upstairs. If she's going anywhere, I'll take her. Look, I think you better go. You regret this. As much as you will, it's morning. Oh, where are you going? Yeah, it is. Stephanie. You're saving it for yourself, are you? I didn't know she had a bodyguard. I don't think she knows. That's all right, Sharon. Hey, lads. One and Amy later. Oh, right. Well, you're on a wee bit behind, are you? Well, I'm not, no, because I shouldn't even be here. It should be Leanne, and she should have been doing it an hour ago. Morning, right. morning, I don't seem to have got a paper right. this morning. Yeah. morning. Well, I shouldn't worry your head. Nobody else has got one either. Oh. Just take one, Ken. Mm -hmm. Don't go blaming Sharon. It's more than your life's worth, let me tell you. All right, well, thanks for the tip. All right. right, where did we get up to? Well, I'm just starting Stuart's, if you could do Liam's. Yeah, I can. Uh, what do you two gentlemen want? Oh, nothing we haven't already got, Rita, don't you worry. <laughs> no, we'll just leave you to it. Okay. Right. Cheerio now. Bye. See ya. Bye-bye. See you, boys. Oh, do you know what? I'm not having this. If she can't be trusted to come in when it's her turn for papers, then she can just forget about it. Have you tried ringing her? No, and I shan't be doing. As far as I'm concerned, she's not turned up, so therefore she's sacked herself. <coughs> No hangover, have you? How did you guess? Because you was very drunk when you brought Vikram back last night. You do remember that? Just about, yeah. Right, well, I'd best be off anyway. A good frap usually helps. Puts a lining back on stomach. I was thinking, but, well, I probably left it too late now. I should have thought sooner. What? We should have gone away this weekend. You know, maybe to that same place where you had your rag trade do. Because we liked it there, didn't we? Well, it was all right, yeah. And if we've uh, left it too late for that, well, um, will you buy me a drink at dinner time? Um, I might do, yeah. And Mike? What? No more worrying. No more worrying? From now on, we're just going to be happy. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> See ya. So, I get a lecture from Mr. McDonald on how I'm not running my business properly. And what do I find when I get down here? He is right. 
The shop is closed. Not my fault. No? And who keeps telling me that she is in charge of the shop? Being in charge doesn't mean I'm the only one working here. But there was nobody working here last night. Oh, anyway, this gentleman needs serving. Well, cheers. That's for me and Kev down at the garage. I'm on the books there now. Are you really? Yeah, proper job and all. I just wouldn't have all this gear on, would I? Ah, probably not. 2.45, please. Thank Thanks. you. There you go. All right, see you. Bye. Ah, the playboy of Weatherfield, the man about town. Good morning. Good morning, son. And how are you this morning? Yeah, fine, thanks. Mm. Why was this shop not open last night? It was. <laughs> no, and I'm witness to the fact that when Mr MacDonald came here looking for milk, it was decidedly not open. Oh, no, it wasn't open all night, no. No. Because it was dead quiet. There were no customers. Oh, yes, it would be, <laughs> because it was not open. Anyway, the point is that you are paid to be here whether there are customers or not. Now, that's just stupid. You see how he is? No, no, no. What I see is that I have invested in these premises and in stock, and now I see my investment sitting here losing money because the two of you cannot organise it between yourselves as to who should be behind the counter. I had organised it. And then I reorganised it. I don't yeah. want to know. Sort it out between yourselves. All I ask is, please, when I'm out having a peaceful drink, I don't want to be disturbed by people asking me why they can't get milk. It'll be all right. Enjoy your coffee. No. Stay cool, Nita. It's only a shop. Now, are you sure you don't mind me leaving him? Don't worry. I'll keep my eye on him. How long are you going to be? I'll be as quick as I can. I've got my work to do, haven't I? Of course you have. Look, don't worry. I know what I'm doing. I nursed my dad right through to the bitter end. Oh, it's nice to know. Now, look, think on what they said you have to do all strenuous. And I'll tell that Natalie she'll have to manage till you're back on your feet. Ah, uh, that'll be next week, yeah. Well, we'll see. Never mind, we'll see. Tell her next week, otherwise she's going to think there's something seriously wrong. Have you heard him? He's been at death's door and he still don't think it were out serious. Well, you see, they won't face their own mortality. That's what it is. Do you know, my dad were placing bets on the horses an hour before his heart stopped. I had to go and collect the winnings myself. Oh. Right, I'm going. Now, think on you. Take it easy. Bye, All right, Vera. Right, so long. Bye. Now, if there's anything I can do for you, you've only got to ask. Nothing, no. Right, well, uh, I'll leave you to get your rest. But I think you're right. A couple of days and you'll be back on your feet and raring to go. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I sometimes get these spells when I'm not right well, and this morning we're one of them. What brings them on? What? Were you out last night? Yeah. Boozing? Well, excuse me, but I think that's my business, don't you? And it can stop that way. I'm just trying to help, that's all. OK, yeah. I had a little bit to drink, so? So you can't go boozing and do early morning papers. I never could, as nobody can. Which you've just gone and proved by not turning up. So what happens now, then? Sacked, am I? I'd say you were on the verge. I bet I am. Look, do you want the job or not? I need it. Needing and wanting's different. Do you want it? I suppose so. Right, well, I suggest you get straight down that street and tell Sharon how sorry you are and that it will never, ever happen again. Only you better mean it. Otherwise, don't do it. I haven't told her yet, you know. I just can't get myself to do it. She'd be devastated. Especially after this cancer scare she's just been through. But surely it's better that she hears it from you than get some nasty pictures through the post. Well, maybe this Julia woman, we won't see her again. Maybe she'll get run over by a bus. Maybe she'll uh, try it on someone else and they'll bash her over the head. Maybe... anything. And maybe she'll ring up and ask for more money. Oh, well... Maybe I'll just have to pay. You wouldn't. Well, I'm going to have to pay one way or the other, aren't I? Either in cash or endless grief when Alma finds out. So who says that cash isn't the easiest? Oh, I know. I know I can't go on paying forever, but I don't think she'll be coming back forever. She's not stupid. She's a very intelligent woman. Well, you know. I mean, you met her. 
Yeah, briefly. Well, then she's got to realise that there's a limit. She just has to be satisfied with what she's got. And if she isn't? Oh. Well, then, in that case, I'll just have to tell Alma. I slept right through the alarm. I, I didn't hear a thing. Yeah, well, it's not just this once, though, is it, Leanne? You've had all them other lates and days off and God knows what else. Oh, come on, be fair. I have just lost a baby and an husband on top of it. Oh, and that makes it OK, does no, it? No, I'm not saying I that. I mean, if you're just going to waltz in here with a string of excuses, I don't know why you're bothered. Oh, no, neither do I. Hiya. Two what? packets of those mints and two of them chewing gum as well, please. That's for me and Kev. I'm working over there now. One pound thirty. And you can tell your sister as well, if you like. I can. Yeah? It's a proper job and all that. Look. And if you don't believe me, she can ask me boss, can't you? There you go. See ya. Bye. Look, I'm sorry. What else can I say? I don't want you to say out else. I just want to know it's not going to happen again. Oh, I didn't do it on purpose. Oh, forget it. I'll go. I need a job, don't I? I can't live on fresh air. <sighs> Look. OK, this is your absolute last chance, Leanne. Absolute last. Next time you sleep in, you might as well stop there for the day. Thanks. So, uh, who were you out with? Was it a lad? Might have been. Oh, come on, Leanne. Hey, I've just given you your job back. Come on, tell us who it was. You know them that were just taken over a corner shop? Ooh, him. Well, the contracts are there on the table. They want me in on it. All I need now is the finance. So what can I do? Could try calling Baldwin again. Another ten grand off him and come in handy. What, you think he'll come up with it? Why, don't you? Well, I don't think he likes being told what to do. He likes his cosy little marriage, doesn't he? Do a lot to save that. Might. What? You're going to tell me you know more about men than I do? Learned that in your previous profession, did you? I'd like to forget about my previous profession, if you think we ever can. What I did with Baldwin, I did for you because you asked me to. Yeah, I know. You think I enjoyed it? You think I enjoyed one single minute of it? No, and I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. I've been under a lot of pressure, that's all. I did it for you. I know. And anything else you want, I'll do that as well. Do you want me to ring him now and ask for another ten grand? Well, not now. I'm going out. We'll do it tonight, yeah? Be something to look forward to. Hearing Baldwin begging and pleading. Don't know what I like better, actually. That or the thought of the money. Right, please, Judy. Oh, right, oh. What about your feet? Where's that husband of yours? Is he up and running yet? Well, he won't be running very far. I'll have him sat in the chair, feeling sorry for his soul. <laughs> Oh, it's bound to take him a bit to get over it, being rushed into hospital like yeah. that. Well, what are the doctors telling him? Well, they've told him to take it easy, but it's like telling fish to swim. He's never done out else. <laughs> well, he's got visitors this afternoon, cos Gary's taking twins round. Oh, well, that'll keep him on his toes, eh? Oh, put him back in hospital, more like. <laughs> Sorry, Vera, it was just a joke. You're all right, love. Here's a joke. He's been making me laugh at last 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, sit down. I'll get you a drink. Right. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not interrupting anything important, am I? No, of course not. Mike said he'd be in. So, um, how is he? Well, I know you think that I should know, but, um, you know, how does he seem to you? Do you think he's worried, like he's got something on his mind? <laughs> well, when else, isn't he? I mean, there's nothing going on at work that might be weighing on him. I'm not letting you say that. Nothing I can think of, Alma. And yours is one sugar, is that right? Uh, thank you. 
Um, the babies, they're all right, are they? They don't need anything. Oh, no, no, they're fine, thanks, Dan. Uh, not my strong point, babies. See, a uh, lot of the fellas, I think, I think have fell on their feet. I mean, being looked after and, and, and over, the, but you can see what she's like, can you? <laughs> I can. I mean, I mean, ten years ago, I'd have lapped it up, wouldn't I? But not now, eh? Oh, being taken in that hospital, it frightened me. I do not mind admitting so. Well, it doesn't scare anybody, that. No, oh, it makes you weigh up what's important, what matters, like, like your health. And your marriage? What? Not your marriage? No. no I thought you were going to no, say your marriage. No, 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 your health. You know, your, your health, you've got to think about. And what's the best way of keeping it? And the answer is me getting out of here. And away from temptation, eh? Well, the doc said I, I've not got to have any stress or agitation. Under no circumstances must I try anything too strenuous. Well, I mean, come on. Well, and the sooner you get out of here, the better then, eh? Just got to convince Alvira. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Is it nice to see some better weather? Because lately it's... Hey, been... uh, no, sorry. Get out. I don't want you in here. You what? Oh, you think you can throw me out of your house, do you? OK, fine. Well, I can throw you out of my shop. Why I did that was for a good reason. Oh, yeah? And what was that? Remind me. Because of the state you got Leanne in. She didn't know what she was doing. Oh, no, I didn't do that. I bet you'd like to, wouldn't you? It's what you dream about. And what do you mean by that? Well, let's calm down, shall we? I mean, you fancy her, even though she can't stand you. You want to watch what you're saying, you? I'm saying get out of my shop. What's the matter? What's going on? What's going on is he wants to learn how to treat young women. Get out! Vikram, no, stop that! Come on! You want to count yourself lucky you've got your sister here? Right, outside. No! Hey, you're not going anywhere. What's this, eh? My bag's at ten paces. You want to watch yourself, yeah? Yeah, any time, just say. Will you please stop that stupid behaviour and get back to serving Mrs Bishop? Right, but he doesn't come back in this shop again. I'll decide that. You just work here. Oh, do I? Do you say, Emily? Do you fancy a go? Eh? Not really, no. See <clears throat> yourself. I'm so sorry, Mrs Bishop, and I'm sure Vikram is too. Oh, it must be something to do with the coming of spring. What's all that about? Buy me a drink tonight and I'll tell you. Oh, I'll turn up for the books when they come in for a loaf of bread. Well, don't then. It's all right, no. I'll buy you a drink. Right, I'm off. Did uh, Alma say anything at dinner time? She said you seemed to have something on your mind. She got that right. You didn't... Uh... I didn't say a word, no. Mike, I know how fond you are of Alma. So, why? I mean, what made you... Get involved with another woman? I know it's none of my business. Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, it wasn't that I was unhappy with Alma or looking for somebody else. No? No, no. I suppose I was a bit flattered. I thought wouldn't do anyone any harm. <laughs> a bit on the side, you know. I suppose this uh, Julia Stone hadn't been out to blackmail you. I suppose she'd been on the level. Yeah. Would you have seen her again? Yeah, probably, yeah. And again after that? <laughs> I see what you're getting at. It wouldn't have stayed a bit on the side. <sighs> oh, I can only tell you what I was thinking at the time, you know, I mean... I've been stupid, I know that. And I'll do anything I can so that Alma doesn't get hurt. But what I can't do is turn the clock back. Yeah. Lying in the hospital bed had me thinking, you know. Well, yeah, it would. Uh, thinking about how much time you've got left and what you're going to do with it. Yeah, there were a lot of people asking about you, you know, saying, giving our best wishes. Yeah, that's very nice, yes. Are you listening? Yes, you were in your hospital bed thinking. Thinking about how much time I've got left and what I'm going to do with it, and I've come to the conclusion, Viv. I've come to the conclusion I don't want to spend it here, in a flaming lodging house. I want my own home. Me and you. I mean, not worrying about some Tom, Dick and Harry wandering in every time they flaming want to. Yeah, that'd be nice. Right. Well, let's do it, then. Let's get the money, go and find the house and buy it. What's got into you all of a sudden? I flaming told you. Being rushed into a flaming hospital, not knowing whether I'm going to get out or not. Yeah, 
You haven't had a fallout with your have you? You haven't been misbehaved. I have not. Oh, Vera, you're back. You see, I've looked after him. You have, love. <laughs> Look, we've, we've just been talking, and what we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to set about looking for an house. I mean, it's what we always intended, and, and summer coming up, it it would be a good time to move. Oh. Well, I'll be sorry to lose you. I hope you've been happy here. Oh, we have, yes. I it's still right. am. It's him that's got itchy feet. And you want your own hearth to put them on? I suppose I do, yeah, yeah. You see, I've always been the only sort, deep down. You stopping in tonight? I've not got the energy for our else. I'm like that after a late night. Not that they have many these days, but when they do... You stop there, I'll get that. What do you want? See me, Anne. She in. Hiya, come in. Excuse me. Thought you were working. That's what my sister thinks. But no, from now on, I work as and when I choose. And how are you? Yeah, fine. I wondered if you'd like to come out for a drink. That is, if you don't have to ask permission. No, of course I don't. What made you ask that? Just an impression I got. No, that'd be great. But you're going to have to give me ten minutes to get ready. Thank you, darling Judy. So, I laid down the law. Mm -hmm. I told them straight that it is their job to run the shop, not mine. Mm. If I'm having a quiet drink, I don't want some customer coming up to me and asking why it's not open. Well, I don't know about your son, but I thought your daughter was keen as mustard. Well, she's all right. My daughter I can rely upon. We have it. Mm. Dry white, please. Oh, hi, Dad. Good evening. No need to look like that. Vikram's in charge of the shop. So long as one of you is. Cheers. So, um, why is it one minute you were... Uh... I can't stand the sight of me. And uh, the next day, so yeah, yeah, we'll uh, we'll have a drink. I mean, what kind of a game is this? It's no game, Steve. I just don't like being chatted up by the guy I'm paying to fix my flat. All right. I suppose sometimes my pride might get in the way a little bit, and that makes me a bit difficult to be with. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll remember. Mm. Yeah, but we don't have to go out. I can always get us something at home. No, let's go out. Like you said, we've got to start doing more together. Oh, I wasn't complaining. I oh, know you weren't, darling. Judy, when you got a minute, love? Your employer's at the bar. She's still giving you a hard time, said he was throwing his weight around. No, no, that was, um... <laughs> well, I don't know what it was, really. But, no, he's all right now. Tell you what I think. He didn't like it when he heard we were back together. Well... No, he did a lot for you when you were in jail, and I'm not complaining about that, but... Uh, I think he likes to think of himself as your protector. And now I'm on the scene, he doesn't like that. I think you're wrong. No, believe me, he's not only a small man, he's a very small-minded small man. And he can't bear the thought of us being happy together. Oh, no. Hiya, sis. You know Leanne, don't you? Yeah. Hiya. All right, we'll get a drink and come and join you. Yeah, I do, though. Vikram, what do you think you're playing at? You can see Dad's over there. He's going to go mad. Why should he? He's having a drink, so are we. Oh. Hiya, Dad. All right. Yes, I'm very well, thank you. But tell me, if you're here and your sister's also here, who is running the shop? Pass. <laughs> oh, Rita, my dear, where have I gone wrong? Tell me. I don't think you've gone far wrong anywhere. You have a lovely family, even though they're not right keen on standing behind the counter. I suppose you're right. Just so long as Mr. McDonald gets his pint of milk and doesn't cut me harassing me again. That's just four pounds, thank you. Thank you, sweetheart, and yourself. Cheers. Oh, I thought I left this thing in the factory. I'll just get rid of whoever it is. Oh, no, that's all right. <clears throat> Hello, Baldwin here. And it's Julia here. That was too inconvenient. Uh, can you hang on a minute? Someone I've got to speak to, I won't be a sick. Okay. What's happening? Sounds like he's in a pub. Oh, we're upsetting in his evening, are we? <laughs> what a shame. What do you want? Like I said, I've been thinking. I don't think 10,000's enough. Look, you're not getting any more money. Another 10,000 should cover it. <laughs> no way, no chance. Well, then your wife's going to receive copies of all the photographs. It's too late. Um, I've, I've already told her. Is 
as he's told her. He's lying. No. It's got to be another 10,000. Or you... I've told you no. You hung up. OK, then. Let's do it. Oh. Morning. How are you? Thought you were in till 10 o'clock. Yeah, well, I just thought I'd tell you were managing. You mean you thought you'd come and see if I'd turned up? Uh, yeah. I suppose that is what I mean, yeah. Yeah, well, no need to worry. I've got everything under control. Been here since half five, so you can go back to bed for an hour if you want. No! Might as well stop now I'm here. Papers go out all right? Uh, yeah, apart from Jason Watkins not showing up. Honestly? Yeah, his mum rang up. She's been up half the night with him. Suspected appendicitis. <sighs> What have you done about his round? Well, I shared it between Liam and Stuart. He's always back here half an hour before anybody else anyway. Yeah. I know what your game is. You've not been home, have you? Been here since half five. You've come straight from clubbing. No! One of them all-night jobs, I suppose. Full of the joys now, but come half ten, your eyes will be out on stalks. Uh, for your information, I was in bed by half past nine last night. And before yeah. you ask, it was me on bed and I was the only one in it. Oh. I'll see. Early to bed, early to rise. You are so ball. Hey, up. It's the dynamic duo. <laughs> what can I get you, lads? Uh, I'll have a pint, please, Bessie. What do you want? Uh, I'll have the same, please. Really? He'll have a lemonade and uh, two pies, please. Meat potato, all right? Fine. OK. I don't know, Kev. First of all, you close the garage for six weeks, then you open up on a Sunday. It's just all or nothing with you, isn't it? Well, you've got to try and build the business back up, haven't I? I mean, you want to see a decent return on your investment, don't you? Taking on extra staff as well, I see. I'm his new apprentice. Yes, I had guessed. I'll tell you what, he knows more about cars than I did at his age. Well, he's probably been driving for years. Hey, anything with wheels, I'm mad keen. I've been since I was a little lad. You still are a little lad. Oh. What do with another crate of mixers bringing up love? Betty, I've just hey. this minute been down that cellar. Look, we couldn't half use a hefty lad round here. When's Jack coming back? Anyone know? To be honest with you, we could do with another pair of hands as well as Jack. Right. You can say that again. <laughs> OK. Cheers. Thanks, Thank Bob. you. Hello. Hey, you on your own? I've been banished from the flat. Oh. Only for a couple of hours. Alma's got a sorting head on and she wants me out the way. Oh, I thought you were going to say that you'd told her what's been going on and she'd thrown you out. Well, after what happened Friday, I was very tempted. Why? What happened on Friday? Had another phone. No. A demand for more money. What are you going to do? I mean, what's she going to do? I told her she could whistle for it. Is that wise? I mean, what if she decides to tell Alma? It's a risk I've got to take. It's a pretty big risk, Mike. Yeah, but if I don't put my foot down now, where's it going to end? I think we both know the answer to that. At least it made me feel better. What, bringing things to a head, you mean? At least I felt I stood up for her, instead of her calling all the shots. Mike, don't you think you should tell Alma? Well, maybe now I won't have to. Maybe now I refuse to cough up any more money, she'll get cold feet. Do you think that's just wishful thinking? There's no post, it's Sunday. I won't risk seizing the post. Anyway, I haven't decided what our next move is yet. If he, um, if he has told his wife... Which he hasn't. Yeah, but if he has, there's no point sending the photos. Apart from the pleasure it'll give me. Yeah, but... If he has told he's had an affair and he's being blackmailed, the photos are just going to back up his story. He's bluffing. I know he is. He didn't sound like it to me. Look, I know him. I know his mind works. And don't forget, he thinks he's only dealing with a woman. He's the sort who believes he can't be outwitted by the likes of you. But what if him and his wife send the photos to the police? No, you're really letting your imagination run away with you. I can be identified from those pictures. That's debatable. Look, he hasn't told his wife and he won't go to the police. Trust me. Why can't we just quit now? We've already got 10,000 of him. What are you talking about? You're playing right into his hands. Because I'm worried. Don't be. Everything's going to be fine. We just need to turn the heat up a little. He'll soon cave in. Well, should I call him again? No. No, I'll just dig his heels in now. Well, what then? We need to spring a surprise on him. Something will really freak him out. 
like? I've got an idea. Get dressed. Well, I, yeah, but I thought we were just going to laze around today. We just can laze around off. all afternoon. I want you to run an errand first. It's Sunday. I know. That's why it won't wait. Mmm. Aries, you say? That's amazing. Yeah, go on, read it out. You have a tendency to judge work colleagues unfairly. <laughs> it does not say that. One in particular could prove to be a great asset if only you would give her a chance. She could be a great asset if she'd bothered to come in on time. Does it say that? No, actually, it says you're heading for a romance. Mm. Does it? Let's have a look. Oh, I've not read mine yet. Oh, well, I'm glad to see you two have patched things up. Yeah, it's amazing the difference it makes when you both pull your weight. Right then, well, if I'm not having to play Henry Kissinger between the pair of you, I shall take my paper and go back up to the flat. See you later. See ya. Hey, uh, can you just hold the fort for a couple of minutes? I've just got to nip out. Yeah, of course I Hello. Yeah. Hi. <coughs> Hiya. Hello, uh, paper bill. Oh, right, yo. Four weeks, I think it is, I owe you. Okie dokie, baby fellow. Mm. Oh, there we go. £19.96, uh, please. There you go. Thanks. Oh, come on, open. <sighs> Does this sometimes. Look, uh, I've got a dash. We'll sort out the 4p next time. Are you sure? Yeah, sure. Bye. All right, see you later. Oh, come on. In the spring, a livelier Irish changes on the burnished door. Very good, Fred. Did you make that up? In the spring... It's Tennyson. In the spring, a young man's fancy likely turns to love. I may not be a young man, but my sap is definitely rising. I say my Yes, sap... yes, yes, I heard you the first time. Can I ask you something in confidence? Yes. Only it's a very delicate matter. Well, come on, then. Spit it out if you go into. You see, in the eyes of the law, I'm still a married man. But wheels are in motion to make me a free man again. You're getting a divorce? So what I'm thinking is, what with you being bereaved not long since, how long is it for you to become amenable to the advances of another man? <laughs> you trying to be funny? No. No, I don't mean you. No, no, no. What I mean is, there's a certain lady hairdresser not a million miles away from here whose husband passed away last New Year's Eve. Oh, now I get you. So, would it be seen as indecent taste if I were to ask her out? Oh, I, mean, I don't want to say folks don't swag it. Well, I'd say it was down to Audrey, you know, though she strikes me as the woman who could uh, work through her grief quite quickly. You mean if I don't get in there quick, somebody else will? Got it in one. Thank you. You only got it opening tells this one's stuck. Uh, unplug it and plug it back in. Tried that. Oh, move over. Mm. Mm. Can you do that with safe? I've never tried. I just think we could run off together like Bonnie and Clyde. You're what, robbing paper shops, you mean? No, banks. <laughs> Don't you ever fancy just taking off? Doing something mad and dangerous. Uh, how about this for starters? Hey, don't! Sharon might come in! Yeah, you're right, in the back. No way! <laughs> well, come on, just one kiss, I've been missing you! No, you'll get me into trouble! Stop it! <laughs> hey! What are you doing? Shouldn't you be behind your own counter? He was just helping me open the till it was stuck. Yeah, I could see what he was doing. Well, this is an unexpected surprise. And a pleasant one, I hope. Oh, but to be honest, I've hardly been up long. I thought you might fancy a run out somewhere. Oh, I haven't got my face on yet, Fred. Where were you thinking of going? The shipping bottle. What, down the Wilmsaw Road? No, it's a bit of a dive, that, isn't it? Hey, it's been done out, oh. and they do a very respectable car for a lunch. Eat as much as you like. Oh, right. Actually, sleep as much as you like, I could do with... Oh, come on. You'll have a grand time. Oh, Fred, I've got 101 jobs to do. Let them wait. It's a Sabbath. Yeah, and that's the only day I can do them. No, Fred, thank you. It was really nice of you to invite me, though. And I'll not take no for an answer. Oh. You deserve a break, I'm sure. I've for wanted to get out now and again. Go on, lay your hair down. Oh. Well, I could do the ironing tonight, I suppose, and I've got to eat summer, haven't I? Go on. <laughs> You've twisted me out. <laughs> Here we go. Thanks. 
I know exactly what you mean. I hate throwing away old clothes. Well, I am determined. Anything over ten years old is going straight to the charity shop. Mm. Oh, there he is now. I told you it wouldn't be long. Hello, Mike. What the hell are you doing here? Oh, you're annoyed, I can tell. I knew I shouldn't disturb you at home, especially on a Sunday. Ah, uh, but I said it'd be OK with it being an emergency. It's just what you said on the phone the other day. I told my boss he did these nuts. Did he now? Well, I still think we can avert a disaster. It's just that he's off to Bruges tonight. He wants to know one way or the other before he goes, OK? So I've got my paperwork with me. I just need you for five minutes. Uh, look, I'll uh, leave you two to it. If that's all right, I've got another couple of wardrobes to go through. Oh, I don't want to keep you. And thanks for the tea. Oh, no, you're welcome. <laughs> Should we get down to business? This your idea of a sick joke? I felt our negotiations the other night were a little inconclusive. I thought I made myself absolutely clear. I got the impression that you just weren't being totally honest with me. I've told you. You're not going to get another penny out of me. I like your wife. Very friendly. In a very good mood as well, for somebody who's just found out her husband's been cheating on her. How did you find out where I live? The phone book. I was going to give you a ring first, and then I thought, nah, just turn up, surprise you. <laughs> you like tormenting me, do you? Eh? Torturing me? Because that's what this is. Mental torture. If you did what you were told, it wouldn't be necessary. Well, keep on paying again and again, till I'm left with nothing. This is the final instalment. Yeah, that's what you said first time. I give you my word. Why are you doing this to me, eh? I mean, why? You've got 24 hours to come up with the money, or else. Am I the first bloke you've done this to? Or am I the latest in the line? I mean, why are you picking on me? And if you don't come up with a payment, I'll pull the trigger. Well, why don't you go on? She's in there. Go and tell her. Do your worst. I don't think you really want me to do that, do you? Don't I? I'd rather she knew every gory detail than go through another day like I've been through today. I think you need to just calm down and think things over. I'll tell you something. You wreck my marriage, and I'll come looking for you, and I'll find you. And I'll pay 10,000, 20,000 pounds. But I'll make sure you never pull another stroke like this again. Do you understand? Oh, excuse me. That's all right. Julia was just going. Thanks for the tea. And uh, I'm sorry we couldn't come to any arrangement. And I have to say, I think you're going to regret it. Well, that's a chance I just have to take. Thanks. It'll break again. Honestly, I turned me back for two minutes. And you've got a lad round. We were just mocking about. Oh, I should have known it was too good to be true. He was helping me fix the till. Oh, pull the other one, Leanne. Oh, you obviously don't believe a word I say, so I'll save me breath. <sighs> Look, apart from anything else, you're demeaning yourself. You should have more pride. And what's that supposed to mean? <sighs> Chucking yourself a fig like that in public. Oh, we were just mucking about. OK, yes, yeah, sorry, we shouldn't have been doing it. You're getting yourself quite a reputation, you know. I beg your pardon? Well, huh, he's not the only lad you're knocking about with, is he? I don't think he's got anything to do with you who I knock about with. Well, it is if you're doing it in my shop. <sighs> How can I help you? I'll just take this, please. All right, that's uh, 150, please. How much does it cost to put one of those cards in the window? Oh, uh, I'll leave Leanne to sort that out for you. How much, then? Uh, it's a pound for the first week and then 50p every week after that. Right, so what do I do? Just write what you want in there, bring it back and we'll stick it in the window for you. Fine. Thank you. See ya. I know what it is. You're just jealous because I've got a love life. You gave that Julia Stone short shrift, I must say. Well, I can do without Sal's reps hassling me on a Sunday. Well, she must be very dedicated. You're desperate. 
Or, um, did she come round here for some other reason? What? Well, as soon as she said her name, I recognised her. Did you? Oh, don't be so coy. She was the one who was chatting you up, wasn't she? When? Oh, oh, then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that was a long time ago, that was. Oh, well, you must have been tempted. Oh, you've got to be joking. Oh, she was very attractive. Yeah, superficially. Well, I thought she was very charming and bubbly. Well, sales reps are like that, aren't they? They're after your money. If you say so. I don't think he's going to pay. What do you mean he's not going to pay? He's got to. Julia, talk to me. He said he's not going to hand over another penny, and to tell the truth, it got a bit unpleasant. In what way? He threatened to call the police. He's just having you on because you're a woman. Yeah, and then he threatened me personally. How? He said that if anything happened to his marriage, he was going to come and find me and make me pay. He's making it up. He hasn't got the guts. You weren't there, Greg. You didn't see the look on his face. He's just trying to psych you out. You know, he's, he's just a normal guy, sat at home, having a normal day with his wife. I turn up... What are you talking about? You don't know him. You don't know what he did to me. I do. You've told me a thousand times. Well, how come you're feeling sorry for him, then? Well, I didn't until today. You know, you had a score to settle, so you blackmailed him. You won. Why do you have to keep going back for more? Because I need more. We're torturing him. Well, that's an added bonus, I admit. Enough is enough, Greg. Please. Shouldn't you be working? Yeah, it's big shift. Anyway, I could ask you the same question. Oh, no, no, no. I try to avoid working on Sundays, if at all possible. Ah, I see. So you're one of these executives that only does a four-day week, are you? No, time management, prioritisation. Plus, it does help if you do the staff rotors. <laughs> are you supervisor at Fresco, sir? No, I'm the manager. Ah. Technically speaking, I'm on the board of directors. Don't get me a line on Sundays, though. The downside of being your own boss, I suppose. Mm, don't I know it. Well, if it isn't Mr. and Mrs. Crocker, <laughs> when did you get back? Oh, well, we'd have been back ages ago. We got delayed outside Hebden Bridge. Engineering works. <laughs> and how was York? Did you have a nice time? It was wonderful, Gail, wasn't oh. it? Was? <laughs> it was, was, was incredible. <laughs> well, hang on a minute. Just let me get you a drink and you can tell me all about it. Ah. Just think we should go back to London as soon as possible. But the job isn't finished. It is, as far as I'm concerned. You see, if I thought you were going to just chicken out at the first sign of trouble, I wouldn't have got you involved in the first place. I'll tell you the truth. I wish you hadn't. A bit late in the day to start talking like that. Look, I'm sorry, Greg, but you can only continue with a job like this for so long and it starts to get to you. Okay. I appreciate that. I know it's not easy. How about if we just let it cool off for a few days? A few days? And then go into the final stage? No, Greg. A bit more heat and he's gonna crack. Ten grand. We've only just skimmed the surface. The guy is loaded. No! And then when we've got the money, we can go on a nice long holiday anywhere you want. Will you listen to me? I'm not gonna make any more calls or any other visits. You said we'd stop after the first payment. We're going too far! You're going to go through with this, whether you like it or not. Get your hands off me. Stop behaving like a frightened little kid. Just get off me! What do you think you're playing at? That you can force me to do what you want, is that it? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Stay away from me. Where are you going? I'm out of here. These are very good pictures. Right on most of them. It's got a very good eye, hasn't it? Oh, well, it's all down to the camera, really. We, we bought it while we was in York. Roy wanted one with a timer on it so that we won't keep having to ask people to take our picture for us. <laughs> it's a very good model, actually. It's an SLR. That's a oh, single uh, lens. Not another reflex. picture of the tea room. Oh, it's where we spent most of our time. <laughs> Kate's were wonderful. I'm sure I'll put about a stall on. <laughs> Talk about Bossman's holiday, Roy. So go on. Well, I walked in and there's Vikram Desai behind the counter. And they were mauling each other. They were. 
She made up some cock and bull story about the till being jammed. She would just wait until me back were turned. She'll have been egging him on. Well, he's just a daft lad. <sighs> Can I sack a Rita? Oh, not that again. You were going on like house on fire a few hours ago. Yeah, and a few hours later, I'm yelling at her again. <sighs> it just doesn't work, Rita. We clash. Because it needs give and take on both sides. I've given her all I can, Rita. Give her one more chance. For my sake, eh? Do you know that was <coughs> wonderful? Oh, I could just doze off me now. Why don't you, then? No, I've got too much to do. And the salon's book solid, Samara, so I've got to go an early night. I don't know why you don't pack that salon in. I say, I don't know why you don't pack it in. Half left you well provided for. Yes, of course he did. Just, no, I'm not one of those women that can spend their days shopping, meeting girls' friends for lunch. No, I like to keep busy, me. We're two of a kind, thee and me, Audrey. Ah, uh, Fred, you know, thanks for dragging me out. It was lovely. The company of the Nosh? Both. In that case... We must do that again sometime. We will. Are you busy tomorrow night? Uh, Fred, I don't think we should see too much of each other. I mean, we don't want to start the tongues wagging, do we? <laughs> We're two old friends who enjoy each other's company. Surely we can see each other as much as we like. Yeah, well, one of us has been recently bereaved. How many times do I have to tell you? Life has to go on, Audrey. I know, Fred. It's just that I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea. No. I understand. So you are going, then? I've seen a side of you today I don't much care for. I just lost it for a minute, that's all. Hmm. I don't want you to be around when you lose it again. Besides, it's not just that that bothers me. It's your whole obsession with Baldwin, and that's what it is. An obsession. You don't know what you're talking about. Doesn't matter how much he coughs up, how much you make him sweat, you've always got to go back for more. Just go if you're going. I don't need a lecture. I think we've got a bit of business to sort out first, haven't we? Have we? Hmm. I did everything you've asked me to do. I want my share of the money. What? 50% at 5,000. You're having a laugh. It's only right that I should be paid for what I've earned. No. If you want out, go. But if I'm taking all the risks, I'm keeping all the money. Right then. If that's how you want to play it. Mike? Mike, are you all right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, I'm just a bit tired, that's all. I didn't get very much sleep last night. Oh, I'm not surprised. Rep's turning up on the doorstep all weekend. It's wonder you're not worn out. Well, that's what business is like these days. Well, do you know, I wish I'd never let her in now, but she said it was an emergency, so what could I do? Well, I wish you'd show a bit of common sense sometimes. Sorry? You're a bit snappy, aren't you? I mean, is it because you're working too hard? Because I don't want you killing yourself with work, you know. Yeah, I'm just under a bit of pressure at the moment, but uh, don't worry, it'll pass. Come on, then. Oh, we'll be late. Um, yeah, it's called Eco Walker. It comes out monthly. Are you sure? I've never heard of it. Yeah, of course I'm sure. I once spent two months underground with nothing but a copy of Eco Walker. Oh, and a few worms. Ooh, I hope it was a good read. Don't know, the bulb went after ten minutes. Are you joking? Of course I have. <laughs> You will be able to get it, mate. I'll see what I can do. Cheers. Hi, Ken. Hi, Friday. Morning, Ken. What can Morning. I do for you? Uh, is Rita about? No, she's gone to Manchester all day doing a bit of retail therapy. What? She's shopping. Oh. Can I help? Uh, got this from my paper this morning, I think. There must be some mistake. Oh, yeah. I'll be overcharged you. Uh, well, you could say that. Yes, I paid my paper bill in full yesterday. Did you? Yes, I did. And then I got that demand from you to pay it again. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, him. Um, let's have a look. Well, there's nothing in here to say you've paid. Beg your pardon? Oh, no, all I mean is, um, it must be a mistake. Who served you? Leanne. Gave her a £20 note. <sighs> well, I'm afraid she's a bit late in this morning. But, um, you leave it with me and I'll see, uh, what I can do for you. Right, thanks. Bye. Bye. There you go, Mr Elliot. That's 21 pence exactly. Thank you, Nita. And may I say it's a pleasure to see my standards of exactitude being maintained. <laughs> 
Portrait. Portrait. Oh, can I say again what a pleasure it was to have your sweet company yesterday? I can't wait until the opportunity presents itself that we can do the same again. Oh, Fred, thanks. Well, I'll let you know, eh? Then I shall say adieu. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just have that later, thanks. So, uh, did you have a nice lunch with Mr Elliot yesterday, then? How did you know? Well, he just told me. He said it was a very nice place. Uh, yes, well, Fred and I are very old friends, you know, so people don't need to read anything into that. Well, I'm sure they won't. Morning. Hi, Curly. Well, I've got a lot of ladies overheating under the hairdryer for the lack of a cup of tea, so I'll be off. No, hang on a minute, Audrey. I'm glad I've caught you together. Uh, what do you reckon to what? I suffered with them, Curly. Mm. You want a chemist, Curly? No, not warts, warts. Warts in capital letters. Weatherfield Association of Retail Traders. Oh, that bunch of old duffers. Now, things have changed since Alf's day. They want more people like me. If you're in business, you've got warts. Catchy. Well, if you're looking for new members, Curly, love, don't look at me, please. I've had my fill of grumbling old gas bags at the town hall. <laughs> See ya. What about you, Nita? We're after young people with ambition, with good ideas. Yeah, I don't know. What would I get out of it? I'll tell you what, why don't you meet me at the uh, Rovers at lunchtime and I'll put you in the picture? Mm. OK. I'm not saying I'll join, though. OK. Half one. See okay. ya. Bye. Bye. Oh, I am glad you could make it. Hope it was now life-threatening. Look, I'm sorry. I'll work through my lunch break, all right? You're really taking the mick, Leanne. Oh, my alarm clock never went off. Yeah, only because you never set it. Look, I've already said I'm sorry. Oh, you're going to be if you carry on like this, lady. I can promise you that. All right. Oh, I'm shaking in my boots. OK, well, while you're at it, maybe you'd like to tell me what's happened to Ken Barlow's paper money. What do you mean? Well, he was in earlier, and he reckons he paid his paper bill yesterday with a £20 note. Yeah, so? <laughs> well, the trouble is, there's an outwritten imp book. So, would you like to tell me what's happened to it? Two coffees, sir. Uh, Thanks, Roy. Right. Thank Hello. you very much. Uh, and uh, may I ask, Mr Duckworth, how are you feeling? Right as an eyebrow sort of. In fact, I'll ask it. Must make you view the world in quite a different way at a scale like that. Oh, it does, yes. Oh, yes, it does. It does. By heck, Roy. You could grow hundred weight of spuds in that furrowed brow of yours. Oh, I, I was just thinking about Mr Duckworth's illness. Oh, his attack? Well, yeah, because it, it must have been a, a, a near-death experience. And, and they do say, don't they, that sometimes people see things, a glimpse of the other side. Roy, if Jack had had a glimpse of the other side and it had been lying around on clouds all day, I doubt he'd have bothered to come back. Roy's right, you know, Jack. What you've had is a glimpse of what's ahead of us all. Vera, do us a favour. Don't you think it's bad enough the doctor's putting the willies up me? Hey. Look, Jack, what you've had is a warning. You're not as fit as you used to be. And all them fags and bulls, it's bound to take its toll. Now, Luke, if they'd have been out seriously up with me, they'd give me that angiogram thing right away, wouldn't they? Whereas I've got to wait a couple of weeks for it. Yeah, well, I still think you should be careful. Well, I am being. I'm throwing them pills down my neck, aren't I? Yeah, but sometimes bulls aren't enough. Now, Luke, Luke, I've got my little spray here, haven't I? Hey, in case I feel a bit dicky. There you are. Hey, wonders of modern science, Vera. Don't worry. Yeah, but I do worry. And what about Natalie? What about Natalie? Well, you're not going to be at work anymore. Don't talk soft. Look, Jack, you're a cellar man. And you know what the doctor said? You have to go picking any heavy weights up. Now, look, let's get one thing straight right now. I am not letting whatever happened to me turn me into some kind of flaming invalid. Julia came round to the flat. Yeah, she's got some front. I'll give her that. Yeah, well, I don't suppose blackmailers tend to be short on nerve. I was a bit lucky there, though, because Julia told us she was here on business, and Alma swallowed it. Yeah, she could have said anything to Alma. Oh, don't I know it? I thought I'd put the kibosh on her by telling her that Alma knew, but she doesn't seem to be getting the message. Well, then maybe it's time you did tell Alma. Oh, no. No, I, I couldn't do that. Mike, you might not have any choice. The more desperate this woman gets, the bigger the odds are against you. Alma's gonna find out sooner or later. 
I'm not saying she's going to take it well, but at least you stand a chance of salvaging your marriage if you tell her what happened, rather than she hears it down the phone from that poisonous little minx. No, I can't. Not where there's a chance of sorting this lot out. How? Of paying her money until she bankrupts you? No! Well, the only other thing you can do is tell the police. And then it won't get back to Alma. Wake up, Deirdre. Well then, Mike, she's got you right where she wants you. Cornered and scared. Well? Well, I've looked everywhere now. Oh, it must have been abducted by aliens, short on cash. Yeah? And maybe you didn't add up the till properly yesterday. <laughs> well, no, that's not very likely, is it, Leanne? Especially as you never put out in paper book to say Ken had paid. Oh, come on then, spit it out. What do you think I've done with these flaming 20 quid? Stuck it in my own pocket? Well, from what I've heard, you've got right family for it. You cow. I've, um, brought me job ad in for the window. Well, if you have to, barmaid, Natalie, save your money. I can smile. I can take the top off a bottle. I'm honest. <laughs> and I've had it with this place. done yet, Roy? Dreams may come, Gail. Sorry? To die, to sleep, a chance to dream. Aye, there's the rule. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come? Shakespeare. You're not still going on about Jack Duckworth's heart attack, are you? Well, as you know, I'm not a particular religious person, but that doesn't preclude me from speculating about the possibilities of an afterlife. No, I suppose not. As, as Charles Froman said, why fear death? It is the most beautiful adventure in life. Did he? Yeah. Just before he drowned on the Lusitania. Well, adventure it may be, Roy, but if you don't want your customers keeling over from starvation, I suggest you start feeding them. Oh. Hi, ma'am. Hello. Come for your lunch. I can't promise you anything as flash as Fred yesterday, but I'll do my best. Mind you, don't get me started, lady. Oh, dear. What have I said? The F word. Fred? I thought you and he were getting on like a house on fire. Well, if it was house on fire, how come there were nobody around to rescue me when I needed it, huh? What are you on about, ma'am? Oh, I don't care. I mean, I know Fred and me were always game for an odd round of innocent flirting, but Alfie were there then. I mean, that's all it was, just a game. And now Alf's gone? <sighs> yeah. Do you know, and maybe I think Fred's got himself a new set of rules. To the fair lady councillor, Audrey Robinson. Are you sure about this, Uncle Fred? About what? Getting hots over the Audrey Roberts. Firstly, I am not, as you put it, Ashley, getting the hots over Mrs. Roberts. Secondly, if you mean wooing the fair lady with charm and discretion, yes, I am. But she's not been widowed for more than a couple of months. I think you'll find, if you consult your British meat calendar, what hangs behind counter, it's been close on half a year. All the same. All the same, you're not out about it, Ashley. Me and Audrey have history behind us. Counts for a great deal, does history, where romance is concerned. Especially when you get to our age and you've more history than future. Can I have a scotch when you've got a chance, Natalie? Yeah, sure. That's it. Well done. There you go. My first pint. I pulled like a real expert, too. Do you reckon I should get the job, then? I reckon you have everything it takes to be a prize-winning barmaid, if I may say so. Did you hear that? Yes, Leanne, but it's not Spider's name above the door over there, it's mine. Oh, go on, Natalie. I reckon we'd be great working together. Oh, do you? Well, you don't realise what a responsibility it's going to be having you work here. I mean, I'm not exactly on Rita and Sharon's Christmas card list, am I? Oh, don't worry about them. I belong here. I can feel it. I've got booze running through my veins, me. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. Well, Les Battersby is your dad. Go on, then. We'll give it a try. You can start tomorrow. Oh, thank you. Good. Now we've got that sorted out. Any chance of a drink? Yes, all right. Get me one, too. What the hell are you doing here? I've told you. You're getting no more cash out of me. Not a penny. Not even if I was to tell you who it is who's really blackmailing you. Shall 
she reckons she's never been anything else than a gopher. And you believe her? Well, yeah, it'd make more sense, wouldn't it? How do you mean? Well, she says this bloke, whoever he is, has got something against me. And that's what kept going through my head. Why me? I mean, all right, I got a few quid, but there are blokes out there that she could have taken for a head of a sight more than she'd ever get off me. So who is it, then? Find out tonight when the factory's shut, won't I? So you're going to hand her two grand just for a name? It could be a trick, Mike. No, I don't think so. If she's doing the dirty on her partner, she must be pretty scared. And that's how she struck me in the rovers. Well, I think you're mad, Mike. This woman set you up before. You've got absolutely no reason to trust her. You should ring the police now. No! This is the last chance I've got. And if it is a trick, I'd better be ready, didn't I? What's your Hi. Um, do you fancy a drink? Mm, I'd love one. Uh, an orange juice, please. Right, I could have an orange juice, please, Natalie, and a bottle of lager. Yeah, coming up. Ah, so Vic's doing his turn behind the counter, is he? Mm, you'd think it was a turn behind bars to him, go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good job he's there, though, or you'd never get out. And, uh, right in this place, I know it. Oh, you flatter it. <laughs> Nita, you made it. Good. There you go, a bottle of lager and an orange juice. All right, you're getting them in, mate. You may as well have this one. Oh, thanks very much. I'll see. Mm. Yes. Another bottle, Spider. Yeah. Why not? Smell that, Vera. Hey, pop, son of pop. That smell alone is enough to sustain a man, you know. Good, cos state yarring should be cutting down on the grub and knocking the bulls on the head. Look, Vera, I've told you, I've learnt my lesson on taking things easy, but I am damned if I'm coming to a full stop. Ah, oh, <laughs> jammy old friend. Good to see you back in Mount Living. Are you planning on staying? What do you mean? Of course he's planning on staying. He'll outlive like so you, he will. You are? No, no, staying on here at Rovers only. It's a physical job is yours, isn't it? Crate jumping. Don't worry about me, Fred, lad. I've got plenty of crates left inside here. Ah, uh, well, take care, eh? No, I'm seeing you. I don't have it. See, even Fred Elliott's got his doubts. Mind you, it were his fatty steaks that got you into this mess. Oh, shut up, Fred. Jack! Uh -huh. Great to see you back on your feet again. You had us all worried. Uh, no need to worry about me, Natalie. Tough as a bag of old pork scratchings in that right, Vera. <laughs> Aye. So, what did the doctor say? Uh, He's got to have more tests. Aye, uh, did precautions. I mean, you know the routine, don't you? Crossing the T's, dotting the I's sort of but thing. But you're feeling fine. Champion. Can't wait to get back to work. Well, that makes a change. I shall be back behind there in a blink of an eye. Well, that's great, Jack, but only when you're ready. <laughs> Oh, it were bedlam in Manchester. Do you know, every time I go, I think to myself, I must be mad. <laughs> Why do I do it, Sharon? Because there's more to spend your money on than down Weatherfield Market. <laughs> Aye, maybe that's it. <laughs> Is Leanne putting kettle on? I can murder a brew. Uh, no, she's not here. Don't tell me she's gone off on another sickie. No, um, she's gone. What do you mean, gone? She's left. Well... Stormed out, I suppose, to be accurate. Over what, for goodness sake? Well, Ken Barlow reckons that he paid Leanne yesterday for his papers. But there's no sign of the money. A 20. What does Leanne say? She reckons she doesn't know what's happened to it. You think she stole it? Oh, come on, Rita. It's not as if her mum and dad live in a vicarage, is it? She's probably been nicking from you for years. Don't you think I wouldn't have noticed? Well, all right, then. Maybe it was the first time, but... It still doesn't alter the fact that she served Ken and the money never went in till. Well, have you looked? Of course I've looked. Oh, well, I don't understand you, Rita. I mean, what's all the fuss about? She's nothing but a waste of space anyway. She could have swung lead for flaming Olympic. Well, it's a good job you don't represent us in hide and seek, isn't it? This is the first place you should have looked. Well, Leanne were looking as well. I'm not interested in your excuses, Sharon. Leanne works here because I trust her. Like I trust you. Yes, she has her faults, but then again, so do you. And going off at half cocked is obviously one of them. I told uh, Eunice I'd pick up a few things yes, for her, you know. Vera, oh, hello, hello. 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 Hi. Are you feeling better now, Mr. Duckworth? Fit as a farm boy, love. Oh, good. Yeah. Be fit for a scarecrow if you're not careful. Vera, Vera. Did the doctor say or not say that I had to get back to living a normal life? Yes, but, Jack... No buts, Vera, then all as I am doing is following the doctor's orders, aren't oh. I? Oh, look, Jack... 
Do you know, I'm oh. all fingers and thumbs worrying about you. Look, for the last time, Vera, there is nothing. Blimey, I don't know what Roy's putting in them pies of his. Are you, are you all right, Jack? Mm. Yeah, yeah, just a bit of indigestion, that's all. Well, why are you rubbing your shoulder? Hey. You're having an attack, Jack. You're having an attack. Get what? your spray. Uh, Happy. Is everything all right? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I heard what happened. They can't call me a thief. I know you're not a thief. We found Ken's money. Oh, well, that makes it all right, then. You found his flaming 20 quid. Look, I know you're not a thief anyway. Look, Leanne, it would have made no difference if a mouse had run off with Ken's 20 and shoved it down its mouse hole. I'd still trust you. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter now anyway, because I got myself another job. That were fast work. Yeah, in Rovers. I reckon it's more me. I see. So, thanks for coming round. But I won't be going back to the cabin. In fact, I doubt I'll ever set foot in the place ever again as long as she's there. Oh, Leah. No, forget it, Rita. Nobody had the right to talk to me the way she did. Look, I'm sure Sharon's sorry for jumping to conclusions. Yeah, well, she should try jumping under a bus next time, as far as I'm concerned. Please, Leanne. Look, you've got to remember, Sharon was my foster daughter. She was the closest thing I got in the world to a family. <laughs> well, then that just shows you, doesn't it? Even when you get the chance to choose your family, you can still get it wrong. Yeah, what time you no, no, you have to hurry up. Yeah, quick. So you're here then? Did you think I wouldn't come? I don't know what to think as far as you're concerned, for example. This bloke that's pulling in your strings for so long. Why have you suddenly decided to shop him? If you're not going to believe me, let's forget about it now. I know I'd feel safer with that. But you want the money, do you? Have you got it? <laughs> How do I know I can trust you? I trusted you once and look where that got me. Mike, you're hurting me. And what's to say you won't give me the first name that comes into your head? You'll know. Oh, yeah? Well, you just try me. Greg Kelly. Hi, right, mate. What are you having? Getting one back for lunchtime. Enjoy it, did you? Your drink with Nita? Yeah, yeah. She's a nice girl. And attractive. Yeah, she's bright as well, full of good ideas. Just the sort I'm after. Oh, well, I hope you two will be very happy together. You all right, Spider? Look, I'd like to be able to tell you to keep your hands off her. She isn't mine. I'm not getting anywhere with her. So, I guess the least I can do is... Wish you the best of luck. No, no, no. When I said I was after her, I didn't mean I was after her. Well, I am after her, but I'm after her for warts. Weatherfield Association of Retail Traders. Oh, sorry, mate. Oh, you have got it bad, haven't you? Yeah. Look, don't let her put you off. I mean, if she wants to be mates, then you've got to be friends, haven't you? Yeah, I suppose. Well, the, the rest you just work on. All right. say how long he was going to be? Ah, uh, no, no, he didn't tell me. He just said there was uh, some problem that he needed to sort out today with this rep, and the only time they could get together was after the factory is shut. Oh, Charlie, that's typical, isn't it? Wait, those reps think everybody's life revolves around them. Do you know, one of them even turned up at the flat on Sunday. Chicken, madam. Yeah, well, it's all these American training videos they're showing him these days, you know. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Well, if you ask me, Mike's feeling every pound per square inch of it at the moment. Yeah, I've got a good mind to go over there and tell him enough's enough. No, Alma, um, this meeting's quite important, actually. I don't think Mike would thank you for it. Come on, let me sit down. Finish your drink, anyway. Now, I've got to go in a minute, but uh, I'll get you both another one. What, what are you having? Oh, uh, G&T, thanks, Audrey. G&T, no. Mm -hmm. He says you put him out of business. That's a load of rubbish. He put himself out of business by being too clever for himself. That doesn't surprise me. Still, he thinks he's got a score to settle. Where do you come in all this? He met me. He had an idea. I, I needed money. Uh, you are sick. Look, are you going to give me the money or not? Of course I am, when you've taken me to Kelly. I've told you where he is. 
I gave you his address. Yeah, but since we first met, I've learned to be extra careful, so you're coming with me. Come on. No! You can't. You don't know what he's like. Uh, if he sees me with you, I don't know what he's going to do. And do you think that bothers me? Oh, hi, Mike. I was waiting for you. Hey! Oh, what's going on? Why don't you mind your own business? Them seconds I'd have you selling well. I won't mind some more. Yes, yeah, sure, any time. Sally, can I ask you something? Have you got any idea where Greg Kelly's living these days? No, I haven't got a clue. Sally, this is important. If you know, tell me. I don't know, and believe me, I don't want to know. I just hope it's miles away from here. Well, I heard he had a flat a few miles from here, over Swinton Way. Oh, no, are you sure? No, I'm not. That's what I'm asking you. It's news to me he's back. I hope it's wrong, because I don't want to see Greg Kelly again as long as I live. Well, I do. I can't wait. Hi, Spider. Hi, Lita. Hey, you know that bread's yesterday's? The delivery man's not been yet. Oh, that's all right. Now I was, uh, just wanting it for toast. All oh, right. I'm making myself some breakfast. Mm. Um, Lita, do you remember we were talking about me cooking you dinner? You know, a really good vegan meal. Yeah, I do, yeah. Well, you know, I'm sort of semi-vegan myself. How can you be semi-vegan? You either are or you aren't. You can't be semi-detached about it, can yeah, you? All right, Spider, spare me the lecture. It's a bit early on in the day. Oh, yeah. yeah, sorry. Well, anyway, I was just wondering whether you were free for dinner tonight. Or, mm. or, or later in the week. What about next week, if that's more convenient? Well, I'm really sorry, Spider. I'm very busy at the moment. Oh, right. OK. <laughs> no problem. See ya. Bye. She says she doesn't know where he lives, and I believe her. She's no friend of his. If she knew where he was, she'd have told me. Well, surely the first thing to do is check out this address that Julia gave you. What, do you think I'm thick or something? I was around there like smoke last night. Well, what happened? Well, no one was in. Block of flats. Hung around for almost three hours. In the end, I questioned the neighbours. The woman next door said there's definitely a bloke living there. She's heard him, hasn't seen him, doesn't know his name. Well, you know what flats are like. Maybe Julia's lying to you. Just picked an address off the top of her head just so she could squeeze a final payment out of you. I must say that thought had crossed my mind. She might even be lying about Greg being behind the blackmailing. No, no, I'm sure it's him. Whole thing stinks of Kelly. The whole sordid nightmare. You should have taken Julia with you last night. Well, that's what I was doing. Then this Audrey Roberts walks past and she takes a great interest in it. She did. Oh, I could tell what was going on in her little mind. Who's that bird with Mike Baldwin? Then Julia legs it. Well, I couldn't run after her, could I? Not with Audrey's beady little eyes on me. Come on, man. You jump into conclusions. I am not. He had this woman by the arm, and then when he saw me, he let her go. She dashed off like a scalded hen. There was definitely something going on between him and her. You can't be sure of that. Oh. Men like my Baldwin, they always have a girlfriend on the go. Just hang on a minute. Oh, go on, Curly, be a pal. She's not going to go for it. You can still ask her, though. Go on, that's a favour for me. Look, ma'am, Mike Baldwin would not have the nerve to parade his girlfriend down Coronation Street. For heaven's sake, girl, they get all cocky with it, don't they, men like that? They think they can get away with anything. It's amazing. I'm just wondering, though, if I were to say something to Alma. Don't you dare! Listen, she's my girlfriend. I think I should warn her. You don't know that you've got anything to warn her about. Just keep out of it. Yeah. Well, I'll think about it. But I'll definitely be watching very, very closely. All your underwear, top quality, rock bottom prices. Come on, girls, see yourselves in black. Someone who's new to this game will make a market granny of you, yeah? It's one of them. There's a couple on this market already. They wear, like, long overcoats and the man's black cap. And at night, they don't sleep. They just stand in a cupboard. <laughs> That'll be you in about 40 years. Yeah, I'm going to have a chain of shops by them. I wouldn't bet against you. You hungry? I'm a bit peckish, yeah. I was just off to the cafe. 
a coffee and a chicken sandwich? Oh, yes, please, Danny. Right. Oh, uh, watch my stall for me, won't you? Might even sell a few lampshades for you. <laughs> Come on, girls, get some new undies. Give your old fella a treat. See yourselves in black and look gorgeous. Look, Jack, are you ready to come back to work? Cos if you're not... No, I am. I am. I've, they said I've got to get back to normal. And, and, and they give me this spray here that if I get any pain, I just... Well, as long as you're sure. Mm. I still think you should be careful. Don't worry. I'll be careful. I won't be doing that much anyway, will I? No danger of that, in my opinion. Hiya. Hiya. We're not open yet. Yeah, I know. So what do you want? It's all right, Vera. Leanne is joining the team. She's our new barmaid. Hey, hey. Welcome aboard, love it. How you want to know? You ask, ask me. <laughs> hey. I mean, she can give us a lift in cello. Doesn't sound like there's too much wrong with him, V. No. Oh, and a jar of tomato, uh, what's it? I don't cook that much, you know, only the odd meal for myself. I quite like the chance to cook for a few people. Special occasion, is it? No, nah, nothing special, just a dinner party, you know. Mm, dinner parties, eh? You must be really upwardly mobile. People from Freshco's? Oh, no, no, just a few mates, you know, Kevin, Alison, sort of. One or two uh, others. Mm. Nita, why don't you come along? Would this little group happen to include Spider Nugent, by any chance, Curly? Spider? Mm. Well, it, it might do. Yeah. Well, yeah, in fact, it does. Mm. And was it his idea, getting you to set this little get-together up? Oh, no. 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 Well, yeah, sort of. Mm. I thought as much. You know, Curly, it's not going to work, and you shouldn't be helping him indulge in these little schemes. I'm not interested in Spider, not like that, anyway. I think you better tell him, don't you? Oh, come on, Nita, I can't tell him that. <sighs> well, I'll tell you what you can do. You can let me take you out to dinner. No, not dinner, I'll take you to lunch. It's on me this time. You want to take me for lunch? Mm. Don't worry, I don't want my wicked way with you. It's business. I want to pick your brains. Ah. Oh. So how's about it, then? Yeah, OK. Good. Uh, Betty, love, oh, can you get me an hot pot? Well, there's a bit of a queue. Could be a few minutes. Well, I don't mind. I mean, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> OK. You have time for another drink, or do my love? Fred, no, you'll have me tiddler. Anyway, my salon needs me. You know best. Any road. I'll collect you at your house at about half past seven, OK? That's fine. Maxine, come on, we've got clients in five minutes. Bye-bye. See you later, Liam. See ya. Bye. She's an handsome woman, is Councillor Mrs Roberts. Yes, indeed she is. I'm taking her out winding and dining tonight. That new place in town. Delphine, they call it. Damn silly names they pick these days. Why can't they call it the old copper kettle? Copper kettles are out of fashion. I know this Delphine. My son Vikram told me about it. It's where the jet set mingles. Did you have trouble getting a table? Booking, you mean? Well, no, I'm not bothered. Oh, dear. I wouldn't count on just walking in. Natalie! What? Oh. Have you got a phone book? Over there. Help yourself. You were a long time in that cellar. We're going to come down. I thought something had happened to you. Vera, will you give it a rest? Every time I manage to get it out of my mind, you won't remind me. Why don't you go home? What do you mean, go home? Look, I'll go home and you'll go. If that happens to you, I want to be there. Right. Hiya. Hiya. Hiya, please, Natalie. Why are you working here now, eh? I am. Is this instead of the cabin or what? Yeah. Hey, Dad's pleased, isn't he? But he's always what the barmaid in the family. Hey, the only person who gives free drinks away in here is the landlady. Oh, don't you worry. I've already told him I won't do him any favours. Oh, that's a coincidence. I've told him the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot's the name. I want a nice table for two this evening. What do you mean, your book's solid? Now, see. If the Queen were coming, you'd find her a table. I say you'd find her a table. Hey? I didn't say she was coming. I said if. Now, see, are you being square with me? I say, are you dealing squarely with me? No, I can tell you don't know what I mean. Well, when can you fit us in? Right, well, put us down for that, then. And I'm telling you this. Your portions had better be of a decent size after all this palaver. So, Fred, are you in? Oh, yes, we're in all right. Not for tonight, though. Oh, dear, oh, dear. The delightful counsellor, Mrs Roberts, 
will not be best pleased, I fancy. No, I suppose not. Julia, at last, where the hell have you been? What do you mean? Oh, don't be stupid. Look, you better tell me where... I don't believe it. Hold on. Don't hang up. How come Baldwin knows where I live? You cow. Well, it's not going to do him any good. And just you wait till I catch up with you, darling. I calls to make. I've been busy. Yeah, well, like I said to Deirdre, my husband's a law on to himself. Anyway, you're too late to get me lunch now, because I've got to get back to Fresco's. I'm on a late turn. Do you want a lift? No, no, no. I've got the car. I'll see you later, and I do mean later, because I won't be finished till 9 o'clock tonight. Bye, Alma. What the hell was the idea of asking Alma where I was? I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking. You've had loads of calls this morning. Shipley's have been on about... Yeah, all right, I'll sort that out this afternoon. I've been hanging around Greg Kelly's. No luck? Nah, not in. Unless he's dead, and that's too much to ask for. I'll go back later tonight. And by later, I mean midnight. Mike, be careful. What are you going to do if you find him? He's nasty. He bashes people. I'm not Sally Webster. He's half your age, and he's bigger than you. Yeah, you've got yourself a date, Fred. Audrey tells me you're taking her to some glamorous new restaurant. Ah, the Delphine. The feeding trough of the stars, they call it, only there's been a snag. We can't get in. Really? Oh, she will be disappointed. Apparently she's bought a new frock, especially. Does she know? <laughs> Mind you, I often think disappointment's good for women. Gets them in touch with reality, doesn't it? Well, I suppose I'd better go and break the news. It is a far, far better thing I do. Tell me again, what did she say exactly? Just that she doesn't like dinner parties much. Uh, Leanne, can I have a pint for him and a bottle for me, please? Yeah. And you told her I'd be there. What did she say? Well, nothing really. She didn't say anything nasty about you. Do you think I'll be with the chills there? I'll be honest. Yeah, of course you are. I mean, there's always a chance, isn't there? Yeah, love, that's right. Ah. Thanks. Oh, Thanks. Hiya. 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 What are you doing behind the bar? I work here now. I had enough of the cabin. Anyway, what are you drinking? I'll have a pint and a uh, white wine. Yeah, hang on a minute. I thought you had to be 18 to work behind the bar. Shh. Yeah, you do. Well, I'm not that far off, am I? Look, I need this job, girl, so just keep it to yourself, yeah? Hey, then, Audrey. Hello, Fred. My word, you look a picture. Oh, thank you. Now, I'm all ready. I'll just get my handbag, then we can go. Wow, well, about our evening out, there's good news and there's bad news. Oh, dear. The good news is we have a table boot at the Delphine. Yes. The bad news is it's for a week next Thursday. Oh, Fred. Without a word of a lie, they're booked up that far ahead. I tried everything. Lies, bribes, name dropping you as included. Oh. I know it's a letdown for you. Yes, it is. So, we've got two choices. We can sally forth to another restaurant in City. Oh, well, that's not the same thing, is it? Or, alternatively... So, what have you got there? Flowers for you. Oh, Fred, oh, they are lovely. Not Thank as lovely you. as you are. Oh. oh, there's natural, I dare say. <laughs> They've been genetically modified, a cross between a daffodil bulb and a sheep's ear Oh, no. <laughs> also, vintage champagne oh. for vous et moi. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> also, two of the finest fillet steaks, which I am ready, willing and able to grill if you'll point me in the kitchen. 
It's your choice, Audrey. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go around meet this place and tell her what I feel about it. Yeah, you know, you're not your cool old mate. Uh, that's right, mate. I mean, you're not in your best form at the minute, are you? Yeah, you could be right. But why don't you go home, sleep on it, and see how you feel in the morning? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I I'll go home and I'll sleep on it. Well, I'm definitely going to tell her. All right. But tomorrow, OK? Yeah, all right, then. Good night, lads. Good night. Good night, Spider. Thank you. Well, I don't see why we should connive in the Annie's little deceptions. Because she's family. Hardly, with Nick in Canada for good. Well, she's still our daughter-in-law. Well, if you're talking about law, what if it comes out that she's underage? I mean, could Natalie lose a licence? Well, I don't know. Anyway, since when have you been Natalie's very godmother? Just leave her, Gail. She's trying to earn some money like the rest of us. Thanks, love. You look quite at home behind this bar. Yeah, I reckon I'm going to like it here. And you don't have to get off at the crack of dawn to do the flaming papers. Well, you'll be missed at the cabin. By me. Oh, thanks. And thanks for giving me a job there, Rita. There's not many that would have. <laughs> Cheers. OK. What's the urgent? I, I needed to talk to you. Yes, you've told me that twice now, Spider. I'm asking you why. Have you been drinking? Yeah. Oh. Oh, no, no, I needed to pack up the courage to tell you. Look, I think you're going to be very embarrassed about this tomorrow, Spider, so whatever it is you want to I say, I... I think you know what I'm going to say to you, Nita. Ever since you moved in here, ever since I first set eyes on you... Look, come on now, I'm... Spider, please. Uh, no, 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 I'm going to tell you. Nita, I I I'm crazy about you. And I think we'd be really good together if you just gave me a chance. OK, I'm stopping you right there. Why? Why? Because you're embarrassed. <laughs> I don't care. I need to tell you how I feel. <sighs> spider was just leaving, weren't you, Spider? Hang on. Hang on, you've got a set of keys. It's got a set of keys. Well, you've got a problem with that or something, eh? Oh, blimey, Nita. Just go, Spider, will you? Oh, blimey. <laughs> Any step on the way out. Close the door behind you. Bit of a demoted fan there. Um, well, I don't want a fan club. I'd forgotten you still had the keys to this place. Well, now all the work I wanted to do is finished. So I'll have them back now, please. Well, I thought they might come in handy. The for... keys, Steve. Business development programme. And we've recruited um, a number of. Hello? Mike? Oh, hi, Emma. What's up? Uh, the car won't start. Will you come and get me? Yeah, don't worry. I'll be with you as soon as I can. See you in a minute. Bye. Great. <laughs> don't worry. I'm sober enough to drive. I don't care if you're blind drunk. Kelly? Is that you? The one and only. Now listen, you cheap little blackmailer. I... I'm not cheap. And you listen. I know you've been sneaking around my flat. I saw you. Yeah, that's right, Kelly. I know where you live. Not anymore, cos I moved. Wouldn't you like to know where I am now? I'm standing outside Fresh Coast. That's where dear Alma works, right? Well, I was thinking of popping in. Now listen. And having a word with her. I do miss him, though, Fred. I can't tell you how much. Well, you will do, because you were a grandfather. And I'll tell you this, Audrey. You were an happy man because of you. <sighs> I hope so. He was. And no wonder with you by his side. He only had the one regret, you know. They were very fond of Gail and the kiddies and treated him like his own family almost, but he really would have loved children of his own. Aye. He would have loved to have had a son so he could pass the shop on, you know. Still, it's the same with you, I expect, isn't it, Brad? Well, as a matter of fact, 
and nobody around here knows this. Nay, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. No, what? No, I'm Fred, sorry. I'm, not, I'm sorry. I best keep this to myself. Oh, come on. You can tell me, Fred. Come on. Well, just between us, I have got a son. Aye. And he's a fine lad. Well, he's. He's not a lad anymore, he's grown up, but... I... My son... My own flesh and blood. Thought that'd bring you running. You've had it, Kelly. Do you know that? Oh, yeah, and why's that then? Because I'm going to tell the police about you, the lot. They'll lock you up. Seven years, in it, for blackmail? Blackmail? Me? Have I ever asked you for a penny? No, you've got your friend Julia to do the dirty work for you. Who? You've got nothing on me, Baldwin, and you know that. I've been too clever for you all down the line. Not clever enough to stop getting a damn good hiding. Oh, yeah? Who's going to give me that then? You? I don't think so. Go on, then. Have a go. I'll enjoy giving you the beating of your life. <laughs> I thought your speciality was beating up women. That crack will cost you. You've just put the price up. You've got to be joking. You're not going to get another penny off me. I've told Alma everything. She knows a lot. Oh, yeah? Is that why you got here so soon after I said I'd talk to her? Well, well. Here comes the lady herself. Well, soon as she knows it all, I'll, uh... I'll give her these photos. Be a nice little memento for her. Remind her what her husband does on the side. All right, OK. You win. Alma knows nothing about this. Let's leave it that way. Now you're being sensible. All right, then. I'll be in touch. I don't know, Alma, but I promise you this. Whatever it is he wanted, he's not going to get it. Come on, let's go home. Seems like a nice day out there. Oh, is it? Hmm. Shame to miss it. Do you uh, fancy a day off? Well, I beg your pardon? Well, we could go for a spin somewhere. Are you feeling all right? You're always saying we should do more things together. Yeah, I know, but not taking time off work. Oh, well, just this once won't hurt. Well, I couldn't even if I wanted to. We're busy right now. Well, say you're sick. I am in the right house, aren't I? This is the man who would bring back hanging for absenteeism. Well, yeah, if you did it all the time, but you're not like that. Anyway, I can't. I've got to get the car fixed. Hey, it was funny, wasn't it? Greg Kelly turning up like that. Was it? You don't think he was looking for Sally, do you? I don't know. Why? Well, maybe we should tell her just in case. Yeah, well, that's all right. I can do that. I'll be seeing her later. Oh. Listen, uh, if you don't want a day off, why don't you attack the shops? You'll probably be needing a few outfits for the summer, won't you? Oh, I get it. You're trying to keep me away from frescoes, aren't you? Why would I want to do that? Because you don't like the idea of me working. Well, I have told you a hundred times and not giving it up to please you. No, it wasn't that at all. Well, what then? Well, it, it, it was just that I, uh, I, I wanted to cheer you up, that's all. Oh, I'm off. You're in a funny mood, I'll see you tonight. Well, I'll have to drive you in. You haven't got a car, remember? What, get depressed? You're telling me to try and cheer up all the time? No, thank you. I'd rather walk. I don't look like that. It might never happen. <laughs> Eventually, them minicab drivers couldn't find their way to a bar in a booth, oh, some of them. I know. He took me down Canal Side Road three times. I said, three times. I said to him, I said, what are you trying to do? Get done for curb crawling. Oh, no. We'll be driving round now if I'm done navigating. Anyway, you got back eventually. Yes. Oh, and I've just popped in to ask if you want a lift. What, to work? It's on my way. 
Well, I don't know about that, Fred. I mean, leaving the house at this time of the morning with a strange man, what are the neighbours going to think? Well, if they're that nosy, they'll have seen me arriving. <laughs> you better move quick or they'll think I've done sight more. Oh, I don't think I'll bother, but thank you very much. Listen, that was a very sweet thought. <laughs> All right. Um, by the way, that little confidence I entrusted you with last night. Oh, yes. I'm sure I can rely on your discretion. Fred, I won't breathe a word, you can rest assured. Good. But when did all this happen? I mean, you never said. Oh, let's say it was in the far mists of time. And the, who was the mother? Did you still see her? Happen I do, happen I do. No, sorry, sorry, didn't mean to pry. But you were a fine woman. You can rest assured in that. You just fell out. Well, we went our own separate ways, is how I'd describe it. Does he know that you're the father, the lad? All that matters now, Audrey, is that he's well provided for and always will be. I've not stinted in that respect. I'm sure you have. No, that, 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 that's all I'm going to say. Okay. Now, uh, if you don't want that lift, I'll be off. Our neighbours' tongues will start wagging. There's your cheque. I've written your invoice number on the back. Oh, thanks, love. How's your stall going? It's doing really well, thanks. Hey, that new line, it's selling like hotcakes. Oh, good. People keep asking me about different colours, though. Any chance of red? Or, wait for it, turquoise? Oh, the discreet look comes to Weatherfield. Well? Yeah, what is it? Turquoise underwear. What about it? Don't ask him, love. He's only the boss. You seem a bit distracted. You're not worried about Greg Kelly, are you? No. Why, should I be? It's just that you said he was living nearby. Oh, that's just a rumour. I've got better things to do than worry about him. I feel exactly the same. I've lived in fear of him for long enough. I'm blown if I'm going to do it again. See you, Deirdre. Bye, love. Bye. Yeah, bye. Not much, you're not worried. <laughs> You don't know the half of it. Why? What's happened now? Saw him yesterday in Fresco's car park. He was going to tell Alma. Oh, no. What did you do? Bluffed him out of it. Briefly. Did you give him the money? No. He's going to contact me. Are you going to pay? Hope not. So, what are you going to do? Well, that's it, Deirdre. I haven't got a clue. Toast girls. Oh, thank you. Okay, let's clear your plates away then. Hey, what's going on here? Uh, Sally's picking something up at night, so I'm giving them the breakfast. Oh, and how often does she do this? Only now and then. Yeah. Hey, you never told me you found my kids off for breakfast. Oh, don't start, Kevin. Well, why didn't you tell me? I could have had them. It's only once in a blue moon. And it's a treat for them, isn't it, girls? Great. Well, I suppose it is a bit tricky with me staying at Curly's. Well, it suits us all then, doesn't it? Come on, girls, let's get you to school. Yeah, come on. Thanks, Have a girl. good day, oh, OK? Oh, time, sir. See you, kids. Bye, Daddy. Uh, can I have a egg bussy, please, girl? Look, I uh, didn't bark at you, did I? Only a bit. Sorry. Just got the wrong end of the stick. I'll forgive you. This time. Come on, Spider. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear, oh, dear. You didn't take my advice, did you? I did try to warn you. At least now I know for sure. Nothing doing. Oh, worse than actually seeing Steve McDonald. Oh, really? Well, you can't win them all. I don't expect to. Just like to know this, not all. Listen, you should be grateful she knows what she wants. I married someone that didn't even love me. At least you know where this leaves you. Yeah, looking like a right dork. Mm. Have a nice time last night, then. Mm. Sorry? The Delphines. He gave his credit card some welly. Uh, well, no, um, actually, we decided against it in the end. What? Well, I mean, these pretentious French restaurants, you pay more for the tassel on the menu than you are for the food half the time. Oh, really? So what do you do instead, then? Uh, we had a quiet night in. Fred cooked. Really? Mm. It's quite a gourmet, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's only a short walk from the table to the sofa. No long taxi drive for the passion to wear off. <laughs> now, enough of that, you cheeky <laughs> madam. <laughs> no, I know what you mean about his cooking. He used to cook for me and Ash when we were together. Oh, yes, of course. Um, does Ashley have a big family? 
Not especially, eh? I mean, any cousins, anything like that? He's got one or two. We never really talked about them. Oh, right. Why? Why are you so interested? Um, we were just talking about families, you know, like you do. Well, sounds like you had a wild evening. You'd be surprised. Hey, you sure you're all right, Jack? Never better off. You just seem a bit out of breath. <coughs> I've just been stacking some of these crates and doing a bit of tidying up down there. Right, you well, know. I don't want to overwork you. Oh, you're no chance of that, Lily. No chance of that. Do you think it's dangerous for you? He's been to hospital, hasn't he? Yeah. Well, they just told him what he can and can't do. And anyway, if an old Jack, without a doubt, will be using it to skive. That's a point. Mm -hmm. Right then, Jack. Right. As you're feeling so athletic, I need a couple more of those Mexican beer crates bringing up. No problem, love. I'll do it as soon as I can. Right. What's it where? You look as white as a sheet. Natalie's piling that on a bit. Look, why don't you tell her what the doctor said? Oh, that'd be good. I want to lose my job, eh? Look, we've been through this before, haven't we? She just asked me to get two crates from down there. What so... now? All right. That flaming Mexican ale. I'll tell you it'd be the death of me, that stuff. Well, you can't go up in heavy crates. I I'll just have to help you. Oh, and what if she sees you? Well, we do it behind the back, won't we? Come on. Hello. Afternoon, Mike. There's Trix. Where are you? Me? Oh, I'm in my car, just listening to some nice music on the radio. I don't know which is sweeter, actually. That or the sound of you sweating. You enjoy it while you can, because it won't last forever. Oh, fighting talk. Hey, hang on, you're scaring me. I'd better pop into fresh... You keep away from my wife. Do what I say, and I will. Six o'clock tonight, I'll be in the lay-by and spade more. Be there, and we'll fix up our unfinished business, eh? <laughs> in your dreams. If you want your money, you come here. Actually, I think I'm the one holding the cards, Mike. Don't you think so? Six o'clock, sharpish, or the penalty clause kicks in. I think we both know what that means. You don't mind, do you, Massey? No. Oh. So, how are you keeping? I'm all right. Oh, your family well? Family? Yeah, you know, your brothers and sisters and that. I haven't got any brothers or sisters. Oh, no, of course you haven't. I forgot. I have a couple of cousins. Oh, right. So, um, where do they live, then? Uh, well, there's our Barry that lives in Stoke. And there's our Jenny from Doncaster. Mind you, I don't see much of her. How old's your Barry? Oh, he must be, what, 30 old. Oh, is that right? So what does his dad do? He hasn't got a dad. He died when he was a little baby. Oh, oh is that right? Oh, no, no, hang on. That was Jane's dad. Barry's dad's a plumber. Oh, I see. I mean, why? What's so interesting? You never asked me about my family before. No, I just wondered, you know. I mean, I think other people's families are very interesting, don't you? I suppose they are, yeah. Nick told me you've got a son in Canada. Stephen, that's right. And did he come home for Alf's funeral? Er, uh, no. Alf wasn't his father. Oh, I see. So, Gail was his stepsister then? No, uh, that's right. But Alf was Gail's dad? Um, no. <laughs> Her dad was someone else. Oh, so you married three men and had children be two of them? Um, just excuse me a minute, Ash. I must just <coughs> get some food. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wonder my Uncle Fred likes to talk to Mrs Roberts. She had an interesting life, hasn't she? So are you going to meet him up there? Well, in some lay-by so his heavies can beat the living daylights out of me. <laughs> no way. Well, if he's got heavies, he's only going to bring them here, isn't he? At least I'll be on my own patch. And then what will you do? Mm, I don't know. I haven't thought about that yet. You better let the girls out early, just in case. Mike, 
You have got to tell the police. What? Let Alma find out. But where's it all going to end? He's just going to go on asking for more money. I haven't got it to give him. Well, when he finds that out, he'll tell her. He's going to tell her anyway, if you ask me. You've got to ring the police. And that way, at least you won't be lying in his pockets anymore. There must be some way to get one over on him. Get yeah, but what? You say you want to protect Alma. Well, that's the last thing you're doing right now. What do you mean? He tried to kill Sally in Rita's flat, remember? And you saw how he frightened Julia. You've got to get her away from here. What? Alma! Meet her from work and take her somewhere away from here. <laughs> Won't you think that's a bit odd? No. Uh, pretend to bump into her. Make an excuse. Anything. Oh. All right. I'll try. But that still doesn't solve your problem, does it? I mean, he might turn violent with you as well when he finds out there's no money. Had you thought of that? Thank you. Um, Nita, I just wanted to apologise for last night. It's all right. No, I was out of order. Hey, well, it doesn't matter now, OK? Yeah, but barging on you like that drunk. No, it doesn't matter just... now, OK? Yeah, but, I mean, droning on with myself... No, you, just... Spider, oh. droning on? No. <laughs> we'll leave it at that, then, eh? Mm. Oh, I was, uh... I was just sorting out last night. Yeah. Well, we all make mistakes, mate. Yeah. I'd like to see. It's a humility. It's a rare commodity these days, isn't it, Steve? Oh, Steve! Oh. <laughs> yeah, the muck, the muck down there. I've just been checking. I, I don't think it's been cleaned, you know, since Annie Walker's day. Just wait when I see her, do you? Yeah, well, don't be too hard on him, V's a bit under the weather, remember? Oh, yeah. Right, I'm going to go and head Alma off. I appreciate this, Deirdre. I still think it's a crazy idea. I mean, what if she won't come out with me? Well, you'll have to make her. Take her as far away from the street as you can. What time's Greg coming? Oh, he said he'd be here in half an hour. And then what will you do? Have to try and bluff him out of it. Let him see I just can't pay. And if that doesn't work? Well, then maybe I'll just have to go to the police like you said. Oh, well, I am relieved to hear you say that. What, and, and tell Alma? I'll have to bite the bullet. You see, once she knows, he's got no hold on me. Mike, you do not know what a weight that is off my mind. I may be stubborn, but I'm not a complete idiot. <sighs> right. I'll leave you to it, then. Good luck. Thanks. Bernie, Mike Baldwin. I'm sorry to phone you up so late in the day, but uh, you know that favour you owe me? Well, I'm calling it in. Tonight. Alma! Oh, hi! Hi! Fancy uh, seeing you here. Oh, yeah, it's funny that, isn't it? <laughs> um, you don't fancy a drink, do you? A drink? I've, I've just checked off. Well, all the more reason. What, do you, I've just off to drag my husband away from work. Oh, you'll be lucky. He was getting to grips with a huge pile of invoices when I left. Oh, so uh, what are you doing around here anyway? Oh, just doing a bit of window shopping, you know. While the shops are shut, <laughs> that way I won't be tempted to buy anything. Oh, come and have a quick one. What, you know, I'm not sure I've got time. It's ages since we had a real natter. Oh, go on, but just, you know, quick one, mind. <laughs> I, I tell you what, there's a new wine bar in the precinct I've been meaning to try. In what I'm wearing? You must be joking, I'm only fit for the Rovers. <laughs> you look fine. Come on. No, you know, I don't want to go too far tonight. Mike was in a funny mood this morning. I'll come to the Rovers, but I don't want to leave him for too long tonight, and I don't care how snowed under he is. Hello? 
You're more stupid than I thought. Then you've got nothing to worry about, have you? You're not even on your way? I've told you, Kelly. If you want your money, you come and get it. You'll regret this. Bernie sent you. My Baldwin. Yeah. What's your name? No, I'd rather not know. Um, did he tell you what I wanted? He didn't go into detail. There's a bloke called Kelly. He wants money for some photographs, but I don't want to pay him. I'm with you. I want the photographs, but I don't want him bothering me again. Ever. He's on his own. Yeah, he should be. He's cocky. He thinks he's got me all wrapped up. Big bloke. He's tall, skinny, specialises in beating up women. Leave him to me. 161. Really? Not bad, that, is it? So how would you like to pay? Pay? Yeah. This is quite a little custom we have in here. I've already lost one job, Vic. I don't want to lose another. You weren't sacked, though, were you? Jumped before I was pushed, though, didn't I? So does this new job mean that you uh, won't be available in the evenings? Only before 11 o'clock. Night's my own after that. And now I don't have to get up at 5 o'clock to do the papers. Right. I'm going to the loo and then I'm off. I have another. Oh, no, Mac could be wondering where I got to. Alma, I'm telling you, he had a, a mountain of work to get through. Well, ask Dio, always. It's my job in life to drag him away from all that. Will you put him on the cup Yes, yeah, sure. Oh. Ah, secret boozing, eh? Oh, hi. <laughs> now, I'm uh, just having a drink with Alma. Oh, are you ready for another? Yeah, same again, please. Oh, and uh, what's Alma having? A uh, gin and tonic. Uh, a large one. All oh, right. And you never went to any family functions with Ashley or anything like that? Look, what's this obsession with Ashley's family? It is not something? an obsession. Yes, it is. You've talked about nothing else all day. Something to do with Fred? No. <laughs> it is, isn't it? He's asked you to marry him and you're worried about his family. Don't be ridiculous. All right, then. There's a disease that they carry in your wood. You might catch it. Obviously, my scene. OK, well, there's some skeleton that you don't know about. D I do know about it, actually. And I just want to know more. All right, what? Nothing. Oh, come on. No, no. I shouldn't have said anything. Well, if it is and it's something to do with Ashley, I think I should know in case I've caught it. Oh, but it's not a disease. Well, what is it, then? Maxine, now, promise. You won't tell anybody. I won't breathe a word. He's got a son. Oh, how's Ashley? Fred. Oh. What, is that it? What do you mean, is that it? I mean, nobody knows. Well, not even Ashley. Uh, especially not Ashley. Why do you think I were quizzing him this dinner time? Mm. That's a big secret. Well, it's the biggest secret you'll ever get from me, madam. Now, listen, you must keep it under your hand. Please, Maxine, oh. otherwise there will be hell to pay. Hi. All oh, right, Alma. Got you a drink. Hey, are you trying to get me sozzled? <laughs> now, listen, where does Mike head for when he finishes work on a Friday? Well, here, usually. Right, so sit down and enjoy yourself. He'll be here when he's ready. <sighs> All right, I will. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Good girl, Sophie. Come on, Rosie, it's time for bed. Just let me finish this. I won't tell you again, young lady. Hello, Sophie. it for old time's sake it's not a good time greg well i won't be a minute excuse me let me just have sophie then no she's fine here aren't you sophie you used to like having a cuddle off your uncle greg didn't you i think you should go don't worry i'm not staying i just need to make a quick call all right if you use your phone
That'll be him. Hello? Almost with you, Mike. I'm just over the road visiting an old friend. What? You didn't think I'd be stupid enough to just walk straight in there, did you? Where are you, Kelly? I told you, with a friend. Now, what about this money? Old friend? What do you mean, old friend? You really thought I'd come over there? If you want your money, yes. I don't think so. I don't fancy being worked over by your heavy mob. Heavy mob? Don't try and tell me you're on your own. Yes, I'm completely on my own. You think I'm stupid? Listen, you want these negatives, you get over here. I'm at number 13. Sally's? Yeah, that's right, Sally's. You want a word with her? Or maybe you'd like to talk to the kids? The deal was to meet over here. No, that was your idea. If you want your money, you come and get it. No chance. You get over here in five minutes, or I'm away. And the negs are in the post to Alma. He's over the road. So what now? I don't know. So I feel if Uncle Greg now and come to me. Ah, she's all right, aren't you, Sophie? Haven't seen her for ages. Or you. Please, Greg, just let Sophie come to me. All in good time. So, if you've got business with Mike, just go over there. It wouldn't work. Look, just wait, OK? I've got what I came for. I'll be out of your hand. I could go over. Persuade him, maybe. With a couple of kids in the house. Kids? You never said anything to me about kids. Well, I didn't know, did I? He was supposed to come here. Yeah, he's not going to do that now, is he? Look, if you want to go, go. Listen, Bull. You're no use to me anymore. You might as well go. And he used the back door. I don't want him to see you leave. He does. This has nothing to do with us. Don't kid yourself. Until I get my money, this has everything to do with you. What is it, this money? Let's just say he owes me. For what? I've got something he wants. It must be something he wants very badly. <laughs> oh, it is. A few photographs, negatives. He's been a naughty boy, as I, Mr. Baldwin. You're blackmailing him. Just getting back what's mine. You touched my van, didn't you? Why would I do that? Revenge. You're not important to me, Sally. It's Baldwin's money I'm after. So go over there and get it and leave us alone. We can't help you. Maybe you can. Maybe you're just the one to go over there and collect it for me. Not leaving the girls. Doesn't look like you've got a lot of choice. My car's out back. Could always take little Sophie for a ride somewhere. You'd like that, wouldn't you, Sophie? Yeah? Change of plan. Yeah? I'm sending Sally over for the money. With the negatives? Money first. Negative second. No way. <laughs> Look, Mike, I don't want anyone getting hurt over here. Hurt? Up to you. <sighs> OK? You did touch my van, didn't you? I always get a new van. A bit more difficult to replace one of these, though.
Ellie? There's the kids. In the house. On their own? Just for a minute. You left them this morning. With Gail. Kevin. Look, I don't want my kids being left on their own, especially with the front door being open. I'm just going across the street. For what? To see Baldwin at Underworlds. OK, so go. Well, no, maybe I'll leave it. It's now. all right. I'll sit with the kids. Not them in bed. Yeah, well, no problem then, is it? I'll just leave it, OK? Look, I'm just trying to make a point here. Make a point somewhere else, will you? What the hell's going on? It was Kevin. What's he doing here? I don't know. You saw what happened. Sally? Sally, it's Kevin. Get rid of him. Look, Alice and right. I don't want to talk to you. I'm sorry, OK? Yeah, OK. Just leave me alone, will you? You wet the girls. Yeah, well, I don't want to do that. It's just I don't want them being left on their own. Okay, okay. Especially when they're in bed. We're not in bed. Rosa? Dad, I'm frightened. Rosa! Shut her up! Sally! Sally, what's going on? Go away, leave us alone. Rosa! Rosa, you in there? Dad! Rosa! Uncle Greg's here. You what? Sally! You what? Sally! Sally, what's going on? Sally, open this door, will you? Rosa, Sophie, you OK? Sally, get this door open now! Stop back. Sally, get this door open! Is Kelly in there? No, Kevin, just go away. Is there Kelly in there with my kids? Get it open! Get his door open now! Come on, Kevin! Kevin! He's got me kids! Well, leave it up, Kevin! That's not the way! Come on, Kevin, you're scared! Kevin, stop over. it! Who's got him, kids? Hey, Kelly, he's inside! Oh, come, come on, Kelly! Open oh. this door! Hey. Get off me! Oh, no, I want the kids! You're you having oh, kids! No. Just calm down and back away! Come on! Look what she's done. Get him, Kevin. Look what she's done! Don't you touch her! It's all her fault. We didn't ask you to come here! Go in the living room. No! Go in the living room! Don't you frighten my children. Don't you dare frighten my children. You failed up. I didn't know Kevin was outside. I want that money. Forget it, Greg. Kevin's bound to go to the police. You better not. For your sake. He doesn't care about me, Greg. Cares about his little girls, though, doesn't he? He wouldn't. No? Look, just get out there, will you? No way! I said get out there and do your steal. There's no way I'm leaving without his money. You should have helped me kick the door in. But with him in there with your kids... He's still in there with my kids! Well, there's no sense riling him, Kev. You know what a sort of a bloke he is? Yeah. Well, if he hurts my kids, I tell you, I'll kill him. Oh, look, take it easy, will you? We can get him round the back. Don't be stupid! Ring the police! Yeah, that's a good idea. Mike, you've got a mobile there, haven't you? Hello? You better not have called the police. No. No, no, I haven't. Because I'm running out of patience over here. Now you listen. No, you listen, right? You bring the money now, OK? You bring it over now! That was him? Yeah. He called you? Yeah. Hang on, what's he doing calling you? Because he thinks I owe him some money from when he worked for me. Oh. Yeah, well, give it him. Just ring the police. No, no, my kids are in there. You owe him money. You get over there and you give it him. I've told you, Kevin. I don't owe him a penny. Just ring the police. Do it now. Let the children go in the other room. Just shut up and get in here. They're frightened. They ought to be. Look, your argument's with me. It's not with them. They stay inside. Please, Greg. I said they stay in here, OK? I ain't known you'd have so much to do with it. What the hell are you talking about? Oh, where's the police anyway? Calm down, they'll be here. They're on the way, aren't they? It's quick. Do you a visit then? <laughs> Wish it was as simple as that. Why? What's going on? It's all your fault, this. He's crazy and it's my fault. He wouldn't be here if you didn't owe him money. I don't owe him any money. 
I'm a reasonable bloke. I said I'd see him in Underworld and try and sort something out. Yeah, and any thorn from Sully's. And I was as surprised as anyone. He was supposed to send Sully out for the cash while he was holding the kiddies, but then you arrived. Oh, so it's all my fault? No, it's not your fault. It's his. He's the nutter. Where's the police? Give us your phone. Oh, look, they'll be here in a minute. Give them time. It's not coming, Greg. It'll come. Mum, I want the toilet. No. Don't be stupid. I've got to take her. Well, she can take her then. You stay here. Rosie, you come stay with Sophie, OK? And come straight back down again, understand? Yeah. Kids. Oh, God. Oh, God. You two, back down here now! What is it? What's the matter? It's the cops. That's who it is. It's the cops. I told him no police. I told him. That's really blown it now. That's really blown it now. To leave. Get out while you can. How do I know they're not out the back? Just open the door, Greg. We'll all go with you. I'll say you were visiting. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's better to believe that. I will, honest. As soon as we get out there, you'll shot me. I wouldn't. You've been to the police before, remember? It's all your fault. All you needed to do was just go along with it, and I'd have the money, and I'd be out of here. But not my fault Kevin's outside. Your family were always bad news. The whole lot of you. I wish I'd never set eyes on you. Oh, yeah, and the same goes for us and all. You might just regret you said that. Give it up, Greg. Let us go. No way. You're all I've got left now. It might not be what I want, and I know it's not what you want, but you're in it right up to your necks. And if that lot out there make any sudden moves, you might all regret it. <laughs> It's a violent man! It's got my kids in there! What are you doing stood here talking to me? Get over there and get him out! I understand your concerns, Mr Webster, but rushing him won't help. Especially if he's as volatile as you say he is. We don't want to make matters worse, do we? He's deranged. Get over there and get him out! I'm just about to try, Mr Webster. If you promise to calm down and stay on this side of the road and leave it up to me. Just get me girls, will you? I'll try my best. He won't talk to you if that's what you think. We'll see. You've been better breaking the door in. Well, give the man a chance, Kev. Mrs Webster, this is Sergeant Perryman from Weatherfield Police Station. Could you open the door, please? Mrs Webster, could you please answer me? I know you're in there. Will you open the door? What should I do? Just keep it quiet. Mrs Webster? Mrs. Webster, can you talk to me? <laughs> Mr. Kelly, then, maybe you'd like to tell me what's going on, sir. Mr. Kelly, open the door and let's discuss this, shall we? Please help us! He's got my children! Rosie! Help us! Sophie! Calm down, sir, just calm down. Yeah, well, do something for God's sake, do something! Let's get back over the road where he can see us. That's it. So we don't want to alarm him. All right, all right. All right. All right. Get on for some backup, will you, Kenny? We do with a few more bodies around here. Hey, what's happening? Kelly's got Sally and the girls in number 13. Are they all right? I don't know. The police have just sent for reinforcements. <laughs> you shouldn't have screamed. I know, I know. I told you to keep quiet. What difference does it make? They know you're here. You did it on purpose. I couldn't help it. Please, Greg, just let us go. No, too late now. It's not, it's not. Shut up, I'm trying to think. Just open the door and let us out, please. Shut up. Why are you doing this? Why did you have to come back after all this time? I said shut up! Don't you listen to me? Don't you hear anything I say? You ruined me, you and it. You ruined my life. You think I'm going to let you get away with that? I didn't ruin your life. I had a good thing going and you pulled the plug. Gave you nearly all my mother's money. I broke up my marriage for you. Yeah, and just when I was going to get the big one, just when I was going to get it, you whipped the rug away. <sighs> you betrayed me, you and it. I loved you. 
you, Greg. I thought you loved me. I've... I despised you. Greg, the phone. I loathed you. Shall I get it? I've got to teach you a lesson. And that little weasel of Baldwin. I've got to teach you both a lesson. Greg, the phone. Get Don't the phone! Touch it. You can touch it. No reply. Could he be armed? No. Not his scene. Thanks. Hi, right, Dave. How's it going? Not too good. Which house is it? Room 13 at the end. Mrs. Webster and two little girls being held. How long have they been in there? Quite some time. What's Baldwin doing with the police? Well, we don't really know. I think I do. What's going on? Greg Kelly's holding Sally hostage. What about the girls? Never know. Oh my God, I don't believe it. Are they all right? Well, we don't know. I don't think they do either. That could have been me, then. What? In there. Could have been me. Yeah, well, think yourself lucky it isn't, then. How's your arm? It's fine, love. Don't worry about that. Why don't we put that bit there, eh? Sophie, why don't you cut this out for me? That's a good girl. Where's Greg? It's in the front room. Why don't we stick this bit on there? Why don't the police come? They will when they're ready. I wish they'd come now. Shh. Why don't we just run out? It's best to wait. I want my dad. I know you do love. But why don't you two stay here and I'll go and talk to Greg? He won't hit you again, will he? No, of course he won't. But you do this and I'll be back in a minute. I thought I told you to stay in there. Let the girls go, Greg. They're terrified. Oh, yeah, and have the police crawling all over me the moment they're clear. I'd stay. You're all staying. He's Greg. I said, you're all staying. Now shut up and get back in there. It's a delicate situation. We've got two young girls in there, so we don't want anyone getting hurt. Dave, you take these two around the back, all right? Okay. Wait for my signal. We've got to go in at one. How long have you known? About a week. So this has got nothing to do with Greg and Sally? It has now. Yeah, it wasn't to start with, was it? It was all bald and any sleazy deal. I don't think this is exactly the time to start a slanging match, Ken. OK, but I think you'd better tell the police what you've just told me. I'm sure Mike's already done that. <laughs> you think he'll come clean? What, with Sally and the kids in there? Of course he will. So just stay out of it and keep it to yourself, OK? Yeah, but surely... I mean it, Ken. What I've told you is strictly confidential, and that's the way it's got to stay. Why don't they do something? Well, they've sent some men around the back. Never mind going round the back. They should be going through that front door now. Yeah, well, they won't want to frighten him, will they? Mm. I mean, they don't want him doing anything stupid. Oh, God forbid. I mean, she's had enough trouble in the last few years without any of this. Uh, they say that Greg turned up at the factory and tried to kill Mike. Who says? Well, somebody. They said he only turned on Sally when Mike escaped. Sounds like gossip to me, that. I am only saying what I've heard. Yeah, well, best keep it to yourself, then. That sort of talk's no help to anybody. Be in position, Dave. We're in the back. Don't move till I give the signal. Understood. OK. Nobody does anything until I say so, all right? Do you want to try him again? Don't answer that. I wasn't going to. You better have something good for me if you want to see this lot again. Greg, this is DS Reynolds. Are you going to talk to me? 
Craig, are you still there? Why should I? Because they tell me you were a pretty clued up bloke. Nobody's fool. So how about doing yourself a favor? Let Mrs. Webster and the kids go before anyone gets hurt. Is that a threat? I hope it's good advice. Yeah, well, when I want your advice, I'll ask for it. Greg, let them go. Nobody's going anywhere until I get what's owed me. What are you looking at? Dave, he's not answering the phone. What now, then? Do we go in? Yeah! Go in! Go in! Oh, disregard that, Dave. I say again, disregard that. Understood. Standing by. Mr Webster, if you're not going to let me do my job, I'll have you taken to the station. Look, he's obviously not going to let him go. You've got to get in there. You've got the gear. Yeah, well, let the man do his job. Yeah? Sorry about that, Dave. You OK? Yeah. Look, I think we've a problem in here. He's not answering the phone. I think he might be losing it. Answer the phone. Greg, answer the phone. Apparently, she hit him with a chair. What Sally had? <laughs> Wallop right over the head. <laughs> so they had to patch him up before they took him to the nick. Been up to me, he could have bled to death. But what was he trying to do? Scare Sally, try and get some money out of me. Who knows? Anyway, the bloke's crazy. Let's just be glad that they're locking him up for a few years. When you say, uh, trying to get money out of Yeah, you... well, it's money that he thinks I owed him from when we worked for, together, but, I mean, that's a load of baloney. The man's crazy. Well, I still don't see what he was doing round at Sally's. <laughs> Alma, Alma, my love, where a madman's involved, you're not expected to know everything. Hello, Baldwin. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'll be here. Well, what, what sort of time are you thinking of? Yeah, yeah, that'll be all right. See you then, then. Bye. That was the police. They want to come and see me. Will you be out? You mean you want me to be? Probably best. All right, well, I will be then. In that case, I'll have to get Deirdre to open up the factory. When you saw Greg Kelly at Fresco's, uh -huh. well, was he asking you about money then? <clears throat> sort of. He was uh, saying how I cheated him. Well, why didn't you tell me? Because I didn't want to upset you. Oh, hi, Deirdre. It's Mike. Well, I'm just glad it ended without anybody being hurt. Well, apart from that guy who got hit over the head. Oh, well, he deserved it. And I know some people might think that's harsh, but uh, I find I'm getting more and more Old Testament as I get older. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Bye. Hello, Norman. Hello, Emily. You all right? Yes, thanks. Bye. Good. So, uh, when are we going to go out for that lunch we talked about? I want you serious. Yeah, I was serious. Any time. Good. Today, then? Y yeah. <laughs> you sound as if you wish you hadn't come in here. No. Oh. Anyway, it's too late now. You do your shopping and I'll get Vikram to come over. All right. Oh, uh, will you be in the Robbers at dinner time? Mm, shouldn't think so. I'll probably stop here. Oh, well, I suppose Deirdre will be in with somebody, won't they? Yeah, she probably will, or someone else, yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll go then, shall I? Uh, yeah. Bye. Bye, Mrs. Baldwin. Goodbye. I'm sorry about that. No problem. I uh, sometimes have trouble getting rid of her. <laughs> 
Now then, what was it you, um... We just wanted to be sure we've got the full picture before we decide what charges to bring against Mr Kelly. Oh, I'd have thought you'd been spoilt for choice where he was concerned. I mean, threatening a young woman like that and terrorising her children. Well, yeah. I gather you know the lady in question, Mrs Webster. Sally? Oh, yeah, she used to work for me. He did as well. I mean, that's how they first met. She says the reason Kelly was there in the first place was he was supposed to collect some money from you. Money you'd agreed to pay him. Well, not agreed. It's money that he thought I owed him. He thought I owed him some sort of redundancy from before we parted. She says he was threatening you. <laughs> People tend to do that, don't they? Especially when you've just sacked them. <laughs> she said he was threatening to reveal things about you. What? But a terrible boss I was. Now I cheated him. She didn't say. I'm not sure he did. Does it matter? No, it doesn't have to. We've plenty to go on. It's just that if he was threatening you, we could throw that at him as well. Oh, no, no, don't worry about me, no, no. It's what he was threatening to do to that young woman and those two little kiddies. I mean, that really turned my stomach. That's what I hope you're going to nail him on. Anyway, help yourself to some salad. Thanks, Mum. Hello? Hi, Sally, Mike Baldwin. Oh, hi. I was just wondering how you and your family were after last night. We're OK, I think. Well, listen, let me ask you. I understand that uh, Kelly told you it was due to collect some money off me. Well, yeah. In fact, he was sending me across to collect it at one stage. Well, he's took it out of his hat. Do you know what I mean? I mean, the man's crazy. But I don't want any stories going around. Do you know what I mean? Mike, I'm not interested in your private life. No, but lots of people are. And I don't want Alma hearing something and getting upset. Yeah, well, she won't hear anything from me. It's none of my business and I don't want to talk about it. Me neither. Let me ask you this. Did Kelly have any photographs with him? Or they could have been negatives, anything like that? If he did, I didn't see him. So if he'd left anything around the house, you'd have noticed? I'm sure I would, yes. Now, was there anything else? Or somebody at the door? No. No, nothing else. Uh, see you around. Probably, yeah. I'll get that. Hey, hey, kids. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Hey, that looks good. Can I have some? It's not from a mine. Hey, <laughs> only kidding. You carry on eating it. <gasps> What's going on? Have you heard anything? Well, we've got Greg locked up and they're going to charge him. So you're going to be a witness? I suppose so, yeah. For the murder, please. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, come on, Sal. He must have came round here to see you. He must have let him in. Only because I couldn't keep him out. I thought you'd seen the last of him. I thought he used to knock you about. He did. So how come he ends up here, then? I mean, it wasn't by accident he ends up in this house. Well, whatever his reasons, it wasn't because he came to see me. Look, Sal, you can do whatever you want. You might enjoy being knocked about. It don't matter to me. What does matter is when Rosie and Sophie's involved. Don't you think I know that? Doesn't look like it. Have you got any idea what we went through in here last night? Whatever it was, you brought it on yourself. This is your boyfriend we're talking about. Oh. The man you chose to leave your marriage for. Not all this again. Yeah, I thought not all this again. And then last night... All right, do you want to know why he was here? Yeah, I do. Because he was blackmailing Mike Baldwin. He was going to hold on to the kids while I went over and collected money that Baldwin had ready for him. Blackmailing? Mike had been seeing some other woman and Greg had photographs of them. Something like that. I don't know. I was hardly listening. I just wanted him out of here. Give me a I don't know why we put up with it. He just wants to see how the girls are. That's not what that daft lad said. He said he's gone to see his wife. It's the same thing. He's bound to be concerned after everything that's happened. But concerned for who? That's what I'm saying. I'd let Law down. I'd say, if you're going with me, you don't set foot in that house. Well, he didn't normally. Never mind normally, Alison. Never. Can I have a gin and tonic, please, Natalie? And, um, hi. hi. What do you want? Pint? Uh, thought with Baldwin's not joining us. No, yeah. he's not. He's working from home today. So that's a pint and a gin and tonic. Please. Uh, you mean he's in hiding, which wouldn't surprise me after what you told me. Which I wasn't supposed to. Yeah, but, you know, it's amazing, isn't it? He's not only a philander and a liar, he managed to get other people to lie on his behalf as well. I'm not lying, Ken, and I'm not asking you to. No, but we're neither of us going to be saying anything to Alma, are we? Well, I hope not. Now the police have taken off that chap who's blackmailing him, I presume he's in the clear. I mean, 
It makes me wonder if he hasn't sold his soul to the devil. It's made some sort of Faustian pact that nothing in this life can touch you. Have you been sitting there all morning thinking about this? Yeah. Sounds like it. Hey, uh, uh, pipe, please. Hi. Hiya. Sally must have kicked him out, then. I'll be back in a minute. You don't have to keep on at her. I'm just trying to get her to stick up for herself, that's all. Tyrone said you'd gone to see Sally. I want to check up on my kids. Oh, they were all right this morning. Well, give us a break, will you? You're trying to tell me I can't check up on my own daughters after they've been threatened by a madman? It's not just that. You go and talk to Sally and... Well, I don't know what goes on, do I? One party. Do you want a drink? I've got one. Cheers. Thanks. Look, if you really want to know what we were talking about, yeah. Sally was telling me why Greg Kelly really came back last night, what all that business was about. Yeah. What? Baldwin, your boss. Apparently, Greg Kelly's been blackmailing him. He's got some photographs of him and this other woman. Um, I'll get this. Why? Well, no, 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 it's all right. It's on me. Then what I want from you is a future. Well, actually, shall I tell you what I really want? Yeah. I want your job. Right, so that's three hot pots here. I think I'll have a cheese sandwich as well. I asked him what he was talking about with Sally. Oh, and he told you? Yeah, and I believe him as well. So will you when I tell you. Only you've got to promise not to tell anybody else. Got your threat and the party of Bessley on. Right. You know, I can't get used to seeing you behind there. Yeah, well, you're going to have to, aren't you? Oh, I'm not saying you don't look right. You do. You're a perfect barmaid. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean in a way that barmaids should look, but generally don't. Except you do. You know, Ashley, I've never understood why you have problems chatting up young ladies. But after listening to that, I'm beginning to. Yeah. Well, now I have to have a look at that. Right, what, a half? Uh, yes, please, but let yeah, me no, get no, this. No, 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 I'll get it in a gin and tonic. Oh, thanks, Alma. <laughs> Don't say anything, please. Couldn't anyway. Do you think I want to upset Alma? Look, I tell you, he's done a pact with the devil. He's got all of us working to cover his dirty little tracks. Yeah, I wonder if she knows. Can't do if he were willing to hand money over. Same again, is it? I'll get him. Hey, no, Linda. I wonder who knows what. And uh, a gin and tonic. You must be glad that carry on last night's over with. Oh, well, yeah. It's nasty as blackmail. Serve him right if they lock him up and throw the key away. Blackmail? Sorry, should I not have said? Only, well, everybody's talking about it. About what? Well, then, pictures that Greg had of your husband with another woman. Might not be true, mind. I don't know. Time you were going. You'll not sell much meat stood standing here, will you? Well, you're out there. You said come and have a bite. Well, you've had it now. Get back behind that counter. Well, we'll see when you've time to call in, then. Don't get sarky. It doesn't suit you. Bally, I'm... See ya. Hi, Ash. Hiya. Oh, Ash. Yeah? Don't seem to talk anymore, do we? You still work for your uncle, Fred? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I knew you still did. Now. Um, look, um, do you fancy going for a drink sometime one night when we've got some time together? Oh, will be great, yeah. All right, then. See ya. Uh, well, I do a little bit of private tuition, but... Not a lot, no. no. Uh, look, sorry, I've, uh, I've got to be going. Really? Are you all right? Yes, it's just uh, something I forgot. Thanks for the drink. You bought them. Bye. 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 Doesn't seem very happy, does she? Even not knowing. Rita's here. Hello, love. I was just telling her how brave she was last night. It's not brave when you have no choice. Well, I'm not sure I could have done it. 
You'll be glad he's locked up as well. I gather he had it in for Mike. Yeah, I believe so. What a world, eh? You'd think whoever organised it could do a better job. Right, well, I'll get off, love. You know, you don't have to be on your own, don't you? I do, yeah. Right, I think, actually, Sharon's planning on coming to see you, if you could stand there. Well, yeah, tell her to. I will. All right. Ta-da, love. Bye, Rita. Ta-da. Bye, Rita. Uh, sit down, Alma. Would you like a cup of tea? Um, look, I don't know if I should be doing this, but... I need to ask you something, and uh, I want you to give me an honest answer. What? Was Mike being blackmailed? Is that what last night was all about? It was, wasn't it? I can see it in your face. I don't know what last night was all about. Not really. All I was trying to do was make sure my girls were all right. Look, Mike was seeing somebody and Greg found out. Yeah? Honestly, Alma, I don't know what no, was look, going no, it's on. Right. He just burst in. No, no, it's OK. You've, um, you've answered my question. Thanks. Oh, hi. I was just on my way out. Really? Yeah. Got a chance to unload some surplus stock if I'm quick, but don't worry. I won't be back late. I'll be back uh, six half past latest, and then I'm going to take you out for a nice meal, help us forget about last night. Well, what's wrong? Mike, I want you to tell me the truth. About what? About Greg Kelly and why he was after you for money. <laughs> I told you. He was after some compensation. Not that! Well, what? Who is she, Mike? This, um, this woman you've been seeing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what you're talking oh, about. OK, fine. Well, hang on. What are you doing? Well, I'm going. I mean, there's no point staying here if you're not going to talk to me. Well, of course I talk to you, but I just don't know what you're on about. Mike, I know. I know that Greg Kelly was blackmailing you because you were seeing some woman. Now, either you tell me about it or I'm going. Which? I'll phone that bloke and uh, tell him I can't see him. See, I love my father and I love my brother. I just can't stand working with them. It must be difficult. Yeah, it is. Besides, I've had enough of corner shops now. I want to move into the bigger world, working with lots of people. Well, actually, I want them working for me. Lots of people who I'm not related to working for me. I get the picture. So it's a job then, will you, Curly? I mean, it doesn't have to be yours, not straight away anyway. I'd take them for assistant manager. Yeah, well, well what I should tell you is to uh, apply to our personnel department. Yeah, along with 2,000 others. Yeah, well. But what you are going to tell me to do? Put it down on paper, your CV and why you want to work for Fresh Goes. And uh, well, I'll see what I can do. Oh, thanks, Curly. I'm not promising anything. No, 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 I understand that. But there is one thing I'd like to promise me. What's that? Please don't mention this to my family. Right. You know, I told you about the uh, rep who took me out for a meal and uh, more or less put herself on the menu, and I said no, because I wasn't interested. Which you think I didn't say, but I did. Well, she, uh, she didn't go away. She came back and she tried again. And, and eventually, now, not, I'm not proud of this bit, but eventually she... Uh, well, she, she got her own way. Now, it was only the once. Now, I'm only talking about the once. This wasn't some uh, long affair that lasted for weeks. What was her name? Uh, Ju Julia. Julia Stone. That came here? Yeah, yeah, I think she did come here, wasn't she? That I had to chat to her and be all nice and polite because you weren't here. Yeah, well, I'm sorry about that. I mean, what, I, I here, didn't. In this flat? Yeah, but she wasn't coming to see me. 
She was coming because she wanted to get some money out of me. Oh, I, uh, I haven't told you the full story. Um, you see, it was all a plot against me. And uh, the person behind it was Greg Kelly. Come on. Well, um, he, uh, he had these photographs of me and Julia. Now, I don't know where he got them, but he got them from somewhere. And uh, he said that uh, if I didn't pay him the cash, then, uh, well, the photographs would be on their way to you. And did you pay him? Yeah, I, d I did at first. How much? Well, it was um, ten thousand pounds. Oh. oh! I know it was stupid, but I didn't want you to get hurt. You see, it was when you were going through this cancer scare, and I, I couldn't tell you that on top of everything you were going through. Also, oh, you um, you paid him for my sake. Yeah, well, I'm not pretending I'm making myself out to be some sort of saint and all this because I'm not. You see, it was, it was only the once, right? And Julia Stone come after me. I didn't go after her. You see, I'd been the victim in this all along. The victim? Yeah. Yeah. As far as the blackmail's concerned. So uh, what does that make me, then? Well, well, I was trying to protect you because I didn't want you hurt. Oh, oh thank you. Who told you, anyway? It doesn't matter who told me. What does matter is that you didn't tell me. Well, because what was the point? Because I know that you'd only be hurt and upset. Yeah, well, just a bit. Well, that is why I paid all this money, to save you from being hurt and upset. I mean, all right, I'm not saying it wasn't my fault all this happened in the first place, because it was, and I... I apologise, and I, I, it will never happen again. And I just... Well, I just... I hope that you can forgive me. What if it hadn't been a set-up? What? You mean, if it had been genuine and she just fancied me? Yeah. Ah, oh, well, then I'd never have seen her again. Why not? Because I know it would have been wrong. Even before you knew about the photographs? Even before I knew about the photographs, but then it was too late. What, what, what are you thinking? Alma, come on, tell me. What are you thinking? Thanks for telling me. Thank you. Bye. The police. Yep, I guessed it might be. Wanting to ask me if I'd changed my mind about not wanting counselling, which I haven't. <laughs> well, that's because you've got me and your Auntie Rita. Also, wanting to tell me that Greg Kelly was up in court this morning. He's been charged with assault and unlawful imprisonment. Good. And he's been refused bail. He what? You mean, he had the cheek to ask for it? Oh, I don't know. I think the main reason they were ringing was to say, don't worry, we've got him locked up and that's where he's stopping. <laughs> well, that's the best news I've heard in ages. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. What? Well, you think because that Julia Stone were part of a blackmail setup that that makes everything all right? Well, uh... Whereas I'm saying, if she hadn't been, You'd still be seeing her. No! And maybe by now you'd have left me. So the fact that you were being blackmailed is the only thing that's kept you here. Alma, Alma, where are you going? I don't know, but I'm not stopping oh, here. Oh, no, Alma, no, please! No, please don't. I just need to think. I just, I just need to get away. I, I've just got to get out of here. Oh. expect to see you in today. I do own the place. Yeah, no. I just 
thought you might have things to sort out at home. No, not really. Oh? Somebody got to her before I could. Well, I did warn you. It wasn't you, was it? Oh, come on, Mike. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, what did she say? She needed time to think. Oh. But she did understand I was a victim in all this. I said I'd been stupid and the only reason it all came about was because I was trying to protect her and... Don't you think you should be at home with her instead of leaving her to brood on it? She isn't at home. She said she needed space. I can understand that. Well, yeah, so can I. So where's she gone? I don't know. One of her friends, I expect. You don't know? No, but she couldn't have gone far. She's just trying to make me sweat. I'll find her and we'll have a good talk. Yeah, well, I think you ought to. I mean, look what's happened already through her talking to someone else. Oh, thanks, Audrey. I'm awash with the stuff. Oh. So how long you been up, eh? Long enough. How could he do it, Audrey? Which bit? Oh, any of it. Oh. Do you know, there are plenty that think the marriage vows aren't meant for them, but, I mean, only Mike could let the whole world know about it with police and roadblocks. It's the betrayal that gets me. Not, not one, betrayals. One piled on top of another. I mean, the woman, the lies, then more lies. <sighs> then in the end, I've defined it out from somebody else. Look, let me run your bath. You can have a nice long soak in a few hours, Kipper. You know, it's like looking in a mirror that you've used for years. And then suddenly there's a crack in it. And it distorts things. You know, the things are never going to look the same again. Can't be put back the way they were. So, a bath? Oh, no, come on, I'll do it. I can't, I can't put you out anymore. Oh, oh Alma, <laughs> now, no, no. look, don't be silly, lover. You are not putting me out. <sighs> Listen, you can stay here as long as you want. I am certainly not having you go back to that flat because you think you're putting me out. <laughs> right? Hiya, Hiya. Hey, you still not ready then? I'm still not sure they should be going. Well, they've got to go to school, Solomon. What are they going to think if we don't send them? We want to go. There you go. First time for everything. Right, go and get your bags then. You all right? OK. Look, Kevin, I don't want to fight about this. Who's fighting? Well, you seem to think it's my fault somehow. He frightened us witless. I still don't understand why no one phoned the police straight away. He pushed his way in. He was... You know what he's like. How could I ring the police? Even if they'd come in two minutes, two minutes is a long time. Yeah. Baldwin, I... I still don't understand. Oh, he thinks he can control anything. Even Greg Kelly. Yeah, well, I hope he's learned his lesson. Because if anything had happened to those kids, I would have killed him. And then come looking for me. Quite possibly. Right, kids. Hey, Ashley. Yeah. I've done work today. Oh, me dinner. What, you come all the way back here? Have you got any friends at Fresco's? One or two. My Uncle Fred's always on my back, though. See that one shot cheese counter? She'll give you a taste of red Leicester Fred Vass on a bit of rum. Oh, that's a chat of line I've never tried. <laughs> Why do you let you back get the girlfriend all of a sudden? I reckon it's because he wants me wed with kids. Why should he want that? Because married blokes work hard, responsibilities and that. Responsibilities and that. Hey, you take a notice, you couldn't work any harder. See you in a minute. <laughs> you, Maxine. There's not going on, is there? Yeah, just mates. Right. Cheers. Cheers. You know, it sounds as if Alma's doing more than think. Well, you know, in my view, she's better off without him. She has walked out. It's not a lesson it deserves. Oh, Ken, don't be so judgmental. Mike's made a mess of things, I know, but his motives were genuine. Yeah, same motives as always. Protect himself at all costs. We should never even mention his name now. Yeah, well, quite frankly, I'd be happy if it was never mentioned again. Oh, so when you asked me how things went at work? I've been asking you, and you said fine. 
Except you mind that your boss is being blackmailed over some sort of little affair. Oh, he asked me not to say anything. No, I bet he did. Well, then. But if you and me, if it's going to work, we've got to share things. I don't keep any secrets from you. If it had been anything else, I would have told you. But you react badly if I tell you that Mike was wearing a loud tie for work. Yeah, but it was unfair of him to put all this on your shoulders. He has been good to me. Do you think it would please Mike if he thought he could come between us? <laughs> He'd love it. Precisely. So don't let him. Sure. Oh. Bad news. Depends on your opinion. That was my mum on the phone. She's got Alma at her house. Has something happened to Mr Baldwin? Well, she's walked out on Mike. Turned up at my mum's last night in a terrible state. I knew somewhat was going on. Girls at work have been gossiping, you know. <laughs> There's nothing new in that. Oh, they were talking about Sally Webster. No. <laughs> hey, listen to us. We're as bad as they are. Yeah, but Alma's our friend. Absolutely. I don't know about you, but when Mike's having an affair, I'm concerned <laughs> about her. An affair? Ah, with some rep, apparently. Um, Greg Kelly's been blackmailing him about it. Oh, I see. Well, how did Greg know about it? Well, according to me, ma'am, he set the whole thing up. Really? If Linda and them knew about that, they really would have a field day. Not that I'd say I would mind. Can I get you something, Mike? Have you seen Alma? No. She's not at work? Day off. She hasn't been in, then? No. Do you want me to give her a message? Yeah. Tell her I'm looking for her. You know where she is, though. Mike, I'm running a cafe, not an information service. They think they're trying to be clever and all they're doing is getting in the way. Mike, do you want something Judge, up? jury and flipping executioner. And I'm the flaming victim. Well, yeah, that's anyway, you can do it. Right, well, the best be off. My Uncle Fred's got a thing about punctuality. Well, and what's he going to do if you're late? He couldn't cope without you, actually. I don't mind. It's an investment after all. You know, one day and all that. Might not be that long, either. Bloke his size. Smokes, likes his red meat and a drink. That's a girl attack on legs. I don't think you should talk about folk like that, especially ones you don't know properly. It doesn't sound like a treat to her, that's all I'm saying. If there's a good man, a right good man. Just keeps it hidden, that's all. Treats him like a slave. Yeah, well, he does ask for it. Yeah, well, that's no reason for people to take advantage of his good nature. Oh, I hope you're not including me in that. None of my business, is it? No, it's not. Not since you dumped him anyway. Should we sit down for a bit? Yes, you and us, love. What can, what can I get you? A brandy, Jack, and make it a big one. All right, love. Here, yeah, is this something wrong? It's my sister, Dolly. I got this cold shiver right down my side when I was cleaning the second floor lavvy. Well, at first I thought it was my sciatica playing up. Then it hit me. Dolly. Hey, Jack, you better get me one and all. I think I'm gonna need it, looking at Jonas's face. Oh, not my dove. Uh, now, where was I? Um, uh, second floor lavvy. You got this shiver right down your side. At that moment, the phone rang. My heart stopped, I swear. Dolly. How did you know? Oh, don't ask me. I think it's that ES, EC or whatever they call it. Oh, Jack, you better put me another one, a another big one. All right. You are not wrong, Vera. It was Dolly. Well, at first I was so excited to hear her voice, I thought it's just me being ridiculous. Then she said three words that'll live with me till my dying day. It's how I'm Bernard. <laughs> Who's Bernard? A hobby. He was doing that business with the sangria down the throat of this big busty widow from Doncaster when suddenly he was on top of her. Well, our Dolly was out from behind that bar. It, it, I did tell you she ran a bar, didn't I? Yeah, you did mention it. Uh, and he's got roving hands, has he, this Bernard? Not anymore, he hasn't. Well, I tell you what, if our Jack ever did out like that... No, no, it was a brain hemorrhage. His last sight on this earth must have been that woman's chest hurtling towards his face at a rate of knots. You're terrible way to go. Must have been awful for you. It is. So I've got to go out there. Well, of course you will. Mm. So funeral's over there, is there? Uh, yes. But I'll be stopping on. Helping her outline. Well, I've got to, cos they're coming up to their busiest time of the year. Right, of course they are. So I'll be closing the B&B. &B. 
We have to. Mm. When? Next week. Sorry. Well, what are we going to do? Flame it, Nora. I feel sorry for Ashley. Why? He might come across as a bit soft, but he's going to be loaded soon enough. We both had Audrey talking often enough about our rich Freddies. Oh, well, that's the point. I'm not going to go to Ashley. What you said. You know, one day and all that. Yeah, one day, Ashley's going to get a big shock. Fred's told Audrey he's got a secret son, and it's all going to go to him. Oh, bummer. Yeah. Ashley's going to get zilch. Well, he hasn't got a clue. Obviously not. If you were in his position, you'd want somebody to tell you. I'm mm, flipping right, I would. I don't think you should tell him. He's got a right to know. Well, she can tell me that herself. Yeah, I'm telling you, and I, for one, don't blame her. Suit yourself. I'm not going anywhere till I've seen her. It's all right, Audrey. Thank you. <sighs> now, I hope you're not listening to what she's saying. Well, what makes you think she's saying anything? She's a friend. <laughs> and what's that saying? With friends like that, who... Look, what, what do you want? Do I have to tell you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the whole mess, and I want you to come home so that we can sort this out properly. What, so you can tell me more lies? <sighs> I haven't. I've, I've told you everything. I've told you the truth. I mean, what more can I do? Well, nothing. That's the point, isn't it? It's not enough. I mean, whatever words you conjure up, they're not going to make up for the betrayal. <sighs> I made one silly mistake. Oh, and what was that? Letting me know? No! No, he was being vain enough to think that a young bird fancied me. All right, I made a mistake, I'm sorry, but, I mean, none of us are perfect. Yeah, well, you're certainly not. Oh, and you are. Remember Stephen Reed, your best friend's son? Oh, oh, I don't believe that you're bringing him into it. No, no, you'd rather I forgot all about him, wouldn't you? <sighs> But you would have done exactly the same as I did. You'd have gone to bed with him and God knows what. But he turned you down flat. You really are a spiteful little man, aren't you? No, I just want you to realise that you are exactly the same as I am deep down. It doesn't matter how self-righteous you're feeling at the moment. So tell me, Mike, seeing as, seeing as you know it all, tell me that you know that I'd have gone through with it. That I'd have taken the flattery all the way through and thrown seven years of marriage down the drain all for the sake of her pretty face. Because I don't know that I could. Because I loved you. And I'd like to think that I'd have been able to walk away no matter how tempted I might have been. But you, I mean, you didn't walk away, did you? No, you ran. You ran straight into her arms and straight into this sordid, mucky mess. And that's the difference between us. If you ask me, Sally's going to keep him dangling like this for the rest of his life. How the heck do you reckon that? Well, she's got his kids, hasn't she? There'll always be some little drama. Every time things get comfortable between you and Kevin, someone will come up. Well, even you can't believe that she planned to be held hostage by a complete psycho. I'm just saying. Just saying what? How terrible it must have been for your wife. Ex-wife. Oh, you're divorced now, then? Well, it's been sorted. Solicitor said will give us a date soon. Yeah, well, no hurry after all. You got time for another? No, I shouldn't really. I'll give over. Baldwin had shown his face since first thing. I'll have a pint, love. OK, mm. two pints and a... Oh, same again, please. Two pints and a... Uh, same again. Right. So, um, where were you? I've just been round Sally's. I just had to let her know I phone to school, check the kids was OK. And are they? Well, it seemed to me. But, I mean, you never know with kids, do you? You don't know when it's going to listen. Is Sally over it? Still a bit shaky. You know, I know she brought some of this on herself, but you can't help feeling a bit sorry for her. No, I don't suppose you can. Yeah, girls. Oh, thank you. I'll get these. You said you had no money. Well, we'll get these then. Oh, thanks, love. Do you know, I'm so glad you two were looking for a place of your own. It'd have been very hard to close up and put you out on the street. 
Yeah, but what about your other long-termers? Well, you do get attached to them, like pets. But not like friends, not like you and Jack. I mean, nobody holds any secrets from you when you've done round the U-Bend a few times. Mm. So what happens now, then? Well, I suppose I'll sell up. I mean, me and Dolly can run the bar together. But I'd like to think it was in good hands. Someone like you. Well, that'd have been nice. But you were fancying it, weren't you? Ah, oh, just a daft idea, no more. Well, it needn't be an idea, daft or otherwise. I'll get an independent valuer in. Uh, I'll knock it down a bit, seeing it's you two. First refusal, it's yours. What do you say? Eh? Have you calmed down now? You know, after bringing Stephen Reed into the... I don't think I'd be bothered to talk to you anymore. Look, I... I just wanted you to realise that we can all make mistakes. Can't we have a reasonable conversation? And did you have a, a reasonable conversation with her? Or was it just lust? Oh, that is below the line, that is, Alma. Look, I've always been a good husband to you, haven't I? I've provided, give you whatever I could, and I make one silly little mistake. Oh, it was it was just the once, then, was it? Yes, it was. And that's all it was intended to be. Intended? Oh, all there was a plan, was there? What was that? Uh, give her the magnificence of a one-night stand and then kick her out? Yeah, well, I wouldn't exactly put it like that. So it wasn't just a spur-of-the-minute thing? Look, I don't want to talk about it. When? What? When did it happen? I can't remember. Excuse me, you have that many affairs that you can't remember this one? No, it was once, one night. Yeah, yeah, like you said. But which? All right, it was a Friday night, OK? A Friday. But you never got any... Oh. It was the weekend that you went away on that business trip. Yeah, I think it was. Oh, I might have known, and I wanted to come with you, but... Oh, no. But if you remember, I came back on the Saturday morning because I felt guilty, you see. Uh, she wanted me to stay. Hey, hang on. So, for one thing, this wasn't a spontaneous thing. You weren't just swept away in a moment of passion. So we have to go through all this? No, you planned it. I mean, even more lies working over the weekend. I came back. You came back because she kicked you out. Yeah, no, no, no. Mike. Wait, will you stop lying? I mean, you just carried away in your own stories. She was blackmailing you, right? Yeah, well, she... I mean, all she wanted of you was one night and a recordings for posterity. She didn't need a second. She probably couldn't stomach the idea, so she kicked you out. And you, you came crawling back to me, telling me how much you miss me. Oh, just go, Mike. You disgust me. Ain't got business. Well, seven days of passing. You're not going to sit there all night again, are you? I might pop off for one later. Yeah, well, make sure you do. The nicest possible sense, Ash. Get a life, eh? I'll get it. See ya. <coughs> Touch me in. Oh, is this? Come on. Hiya. Hiya. Hi. Thought you might be on your own. Thought you might fancy a bit of company. Well, why not? Corkscrew. We'll go and get it. Any particular reason why you're here? Not that I'm complaining. <laughs> Max's idea. Didn't fancy another night in the pub. All right. <laughs> I'm very glad. I was hoping I'd find you two here. Have you given any more thought to my offer? We've thought about no else. Good. Because if I can get something agreed, I don't even have to close down. Eunice, look, there's something I must tell you. Yeah, we'd have to borrow money. But not much, surely. I mean, you said you were very well set up with the proceeds from this place. Yeah, but with our Jack Sarp, I mean, nobody's going to lend us a brass farthing. But if you put most of the money on... Eunice, love, why do you think we're still working here as a cleaner and sell a man? Well, for something to do. I mean, lots of people do it, even millionaires. Well, Vera's always said... Aye. Oh, Vera always says a lot. Sorry, love. Oh, I'm so disappointed. Well, you ought to be sitting where I am. Look, Eunice, love, don't worry about us. Hey, you go to Majorca, I saw your sister out. We'll manage. We always have. Sparks out a pair of them. Good night's sleep will do them the world of good. Yeah. Do you fancy a glass of wine? Just open this, and I don't like drinking on my own. 
This is um, Danny. He's got the next door to me at the market. Yeah, I've seen you helping her with a van. I'm my husband. Well, we're separated. I know. Look, if I'm intruding. Um, no, just about to have a drink. Everybody's talking about you in the market, you know. Sounded a bit dramatic. I'll thought... leave you to it. Well, there's no need. No, just keep it down, eh? Last thing the girls need is waking up and finding another strange bloke in the house. Yeah, better be off. I've uh, got to be up early in the morning. Yeah, well, thanks for coming. See you, Max. See you, Tom. <laughs> it's been a long time. Eh? Since you and me, you know. Yeah. A lot's happened since then. I didn't think we'd be back here, though. Not like this. This is, uh, this is Tom's idea, you know. Hey. He said it was something I had to do. You need a lad to tell to get back with me. To do what? Well, that is why you're there. You don't need to be awkward about it. Look, there's something I've got to tell you. What? It's about your uncle Fred and Audrey. You think I don't know about him chasing her? Well, he's got his work cut out there, I reckon. There's no telling him. No, it's it's about something he said to Audrey. I just wondered if you knew. Oh, he's not opened another shop. I've only just got used to fresh goals. No, Ashley, look. It's about his son. Fred's got a secret son, Ashley, and he's going to inherit everything. are just getting dressed. They've not even had the breakfast yet. Well, I'm in no rush. I thought you might have wanted to get off a bit earlier today. Well, aren't you going picking up some new stuff? Oh, yeah. Is it OK if I make myself a cup of tea? What? <laughs> Do you want to check under the bed while you're at it? Hey. He didn't stay here last night. Who? Danny. I'm not sleeping with him, Kevin. I'm not even going out with him, so there's no need for you to come checking up on me. I'm not. When do you ever turn up this early? I just thought I was doing you a favour, that's all. Oh, yeah? Yes. But now you come to mention it, I hope you are going to be a bit more careful. I'm not likely to make the same mistake twice. Good. And the last thing I need is you coming round reminding me every time. All right. All right, so how much do you know of this, Danny? I mean, some of those blokes on the market can be quite dodgy. All right, well, I'll finish my job then, shall I? Don't talk daft. Kevin, I'm going to keep fellas at arm's length from now on. Easy to say. Yeah, because it's true. I'm going to have to be 110% sure before I can trust anybody else. Girls, your dad's here! But you're going to have to trust me. Like my lord a little bit. Eh? Any more tea in that pot? I don't know what you'll find to do up there. I waste my time, Vera, that's what. Accommodation. No, don't bother reading, it's the same old story. Yeah, all too dear. All right, oh, you can bet your bottom dollar they're all dumps. Yeah, what about this one? Mm. Long and short term residence welcome. No DSS? Yes, well, look at the price. I mean, look, look, look at the good price. That is what they charge him for a broom cupboard, love. Look, we're going to have to find somewhere quick, you know, even if it's just for a couple of weeks till we get somewhere permanent. Right. Well, if it's a week or so, then why don't we have a word with... Uh... Natalie? Mm. Yes, Vera? Uh, no, sorry, love. <laughs> mm. See, there's plenty of room upstairs, isn't there? Over my dead body. Right, what are we going to do, then? Look, leave it to me. Natalie! Are you sure, Vera? Is it all right if I make a quick phone call? Yeah, as long as you're quick. You're opening up in two minutes. Well, one and a half. See, can you imagine her as his landlady as well as his boss? She'd be timing us for this, charging us for that. You should even charge you for wear and tear on cars, eh? 
would be bankrupt in a week. Hi. Hi, Gail. I'm just on my way to the bank, so I thought I'd leave my order while I'm passing. All right, so you don't want to make it up now? No, no, I'll pick it up later. I don't think Mike's eating at all. He'll waste away. Shame. Oh, Kevin. Hi. Well, I think Alma's with you. Ah, and Kevin and Sally, I bet. And the girls in the factory, probably. OK, OK. How's the coffee going? Thanks, Kevin. I've been wondering, you know, if I ought to pop round and see Alma. Oh, I'm not sure. I just don't want her to think I'm taking sides. Probably as much you can do about that. Yeah, yeah. according to me, ma'am, she's pretty cut up. Oh, I just thought I might be able to help, you know, put things in perspective for her. Well, best leave it. For a couple of days, eh? It'll look like Mike sent you. Not if I explain. Oh, OK, if you say so. 47. Ah, good afternoon, miss. Afternoon. I've been shouting you from bottom at street. You were miles away. Yeah, I must have been. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Afternoon. Listen, I want to ask you something. What you said last night about my Uncle Fred. No, what did he say? I've not asked him yet. Maxine, are you sure you've not got wrong end at stake? Look, I told you it's gospel. How do you know? I did buy him Does anybody know this son of his? Does anybody know where he lives? <gasps> You're not going to say I told you, are you? Can I help you, miss? Sorry? Is there something you want on the shelves? No, I, I don't think so. Okay. Nice one, Dad. They're regulars, both of them. They weren't buying anything. No, but they would have done if you'd given them a minute. You can be too flexible, Nita. God. Huff and puff all you like, but let customers get too comfy and they forget that we're running a business. Yes. And where are you going now? Out. At this time? Well, what's the problem? We hardly rushed off our feet, are we? It's good of you to pop out. Now, look, I know I'm a fool to myself, but seeing as it's you two, I'm willing to drop the price for a quick sale. Oh, no, that's not why I've asked you to come. I thought that's why you rang. No, I've got yeah, a proposition to put to you. You'll do what you've got to do and leave me and our Jack in charge at B&B. <coughs> are, are you all right? <laughs> I think so. Well, it just struck me, you see. What are you going to do with Mr. Eckersley? You know, I'm, I'm poor old Mr. Clegg. And your regulars. You know, like uh, your commercial travellers. But what about our Dolly? I can't leave her stranded in Magaluf. No, but you'd leave Mr. Eckersley stranded down the road at that Carol Dean. Yeah, with that Carol Donnelly. Three years them nets have been up. Never seen the inside of a washing machine. Yeah, well, she'll be getting some new ones now, that, with customers you're sending her. But you and Jack, you've no experience. What? I've been keeping house since I was 13 year old. Look, it's not the cushy number it looks. And what about Jack? What if he has another of his funny do's? Uh, what brought the last one on air? Stress. Uh, homelessness. It's up there with the best of them. Not that I want you to feel guilty, or... Oh, Thanks, Natalie. Hey, Lee. Hey, Lee. What's news? Oh, nothing more. It's, um, we're thinking of going pictures tonight. No, with Baldwin and Alma. What do you mean? Well, you're big buddies, aren't you? What she really wants to know is, is she in with a chance? Hey, don't joke. You can tell he fancies me like mad. How do you work that one out? Well, nobody's as nasty as that by nature. It's a smoke screen. He's trying to disguise his lust. He's doing a flipping good job of it. <laughs> See? He's stuck in my... Shh, shh. Don't you feel just a little bit sorry for him? Sorry? For Baldwin? Oh, bless. It's a big decision, Vera. I can't make my mind up just like that. But you'll give it some thought and let you know. Do you not want to ask how my children are? Well, I presume they're all right. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in here knocking back the lager. Oh, you're amazing. It was your boyfriend that started all this, remember? And nothing to do with you. I'm paying for my part, believe you me. So are my children. So's Kevin. So am I. I'm sorry. You imagined the worst and everything was all right. God. I imagine the worst, and it happened. I'm living my part, so. There you go. 
Oh, cheers, girl. I don't really feel like seeing people right now, but I was climbing the wall at your mother's. <laughs> You're bound to. Well, I suppose I shall have to start thinking about getting back to work soon. And I can't go losing my job now, can I? Not now I'm a single girl. Oh, you don't mean that, surely. Oh, I don't know what I mean. I just think I'd be letting myself down if I forgave him. I mean, what sort of doormat would that make me? Well, it's far too early for that. I'm angry, <laughs> livid, but I miss him. I don't want to be lonely. I don't want to start again. But, well, I suppose we all have to face it at some time. Look at your mother. But it's not something that I would choose to do. I, uh... I suppose I'm the last person you want to see right now. Well, not quite. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say how sorry I am. Yeah, well, you and me both. I tried, Alma. Honestly, I did. But he just wouldn't listen. He was so sure he could sort it all out on his own. When? When did he talk to you about it? Not long ago. How long? Well, it was before he paid oh, God, them... for crying out loud, Deirdre, just give me a straight answer. About a fortnight. I might have known. I didn't know what you to know, do. You know, I could slap you, the pair of you. I could happily <laughs> throttle you for this. Alma, No, 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 don't touch me, because I will slap you, because I won't be able to stop myself. <laughs> Quarter of corned beef, and I'll put you a little bit extra in. You look like the two are building up. Thanks, Fred. You don't change, do you? <laughs> Cat got your tongue? No. So what's the matter with you? You've got a face like a bag of spanners. Oh, yes. Nothing to do with her, I hope. No. Are we, uh, are we going to play charade so I can guess what it is? You know, sometimes I think you're wasted on this job. You've learned now to say now. I have. Now about the social aspect. It's very sensual, is butchery. It's a profession for a passionate man. And you've got milk in your veins. Right. Go and find someone else. Ashley? Go on. Go and find some other mug do your dirty work. I'm joking. You always are. Always at my expense and I'm sick of it. You want to treat me with a bit more respect? I do respect you. You don't. I do? You don't. I most certainly do and I'll prove it. We'll stop by Rovers on the way home and in the interest of staff relations, I'll buy you a pint. You can even have a cherry in it if you like. How's that for respect? Hey, hey. Come to check out the competition, have we? Hardly. Um, Kelly, I was wondering, you know what you're saying about giving you my CV? Yeah. Did you mean it? Of course. OK. Here you go. Yeah. Well, don't read it now. You're not shy, are you? I well, no, but, I mean... Are you scared I'll spot all the lies? What lies? Oh, come on, everyone lies on the CVs. I bet you put your hobbies down as bungee jumping and creative cake decorating, when in reality we all know you're stopping the Rovers every night. What, yeah, talking to losers like you, eh? Mm. Hey, do you want to read it or not? Oh, no, I'm gripped, mm. metaphorically speaking. So, uh, what do we do from now, then, eh? Well, if it's any good, which I'm sure it is, I'll pass it on. I mean, I can't promise anything. I can only do my best. Well, Curly, your best is good enough for me. You've got to stop drinking in here. My life's turning into Grand Dog Day. Oh, will you give over morning, Alison? It's Andy for work. Unpredictable. Well, it's not as if it's the only place we go. If it was the only place I went, I'd commit Arikara. I used to think it was great. If I hadn't seen Kevin all day, I knew I'd bump into him here. Well, that's one of the downsides. Hey, steady on, Tiger. He knows I'm always in here, so he turns up whenever he likes. But it's about time he realised I had a life of my own. Nice speech, doll, but I'll believe it when I see it. Very nice. Oh, I know I'm going to a funeral, but you can't be mourning all the time. <laughs> Jack, avert your eyes unless you've got your spray with you. <laughs> we'll never leave one without it, love. <laughs> I've just come to say, Vera, I think it's a marvellous idea, and I think we should take the plunge. Hey. Yes. Well, she's right. I mean, what's the point of having it standing empty while I'm waiting for a buyer? 
I won't be able to pay you much, but you'll get free bed and board and full use of all the facilities. Hey, that's fantastic! I passed Carol Dean this afternoon. The thought of Mr. Eckersley slumming it over there. Oh, I don't bear thinking about. All right, ladies, <laughs> I think this calls for a drink, doesn't it? Oh, and not for me, Tar. Uh, Mr. Clegg's got a recycle this evening. <coughs> I don't want him fiddling on an empty stomach. Oh, heaven forbid, no. Hey, listen, uh, so when will you show us ropes? Well, why not start with breakfast? Pop down seven-ish tomorrow and bring your notebook with you, because I'm very particular in my ways. Right. That's right, love. Thank Thank you. Oh, yeah. Jack, take it easy while I'm gone. Leave the lion's share of the work to Vera. Jack. <laughs> right, well, as they say, Magaluf, Erkway, Sarah, Sarah. <laughs> right, I'd better be going back. And as they say in Weatherfield, hasta la vista, baby. Ooh, see you, love. Right, right. Yeah. Sit down, you're entitled to your break. No, later. I don't like putting my nose out, do I? Well, I can't wait, me. What? Well, I'm in our time management now. I feel like telling to shove a mop bucket where the sun don't shine. Looking for anyone in particular, Mr Baldwin? You looking for your cards? No. Then keep that out, that shut, you won't get them. See what I mean? Chemist strap. You can't resist me. Just give me five minutes. That's all I need. Just let me set the record straight. Well, you can try. Mike was desperate. He didn't confide in me. I was on his back about the missing money, and in the end, he had no choice. Of course he had a choice. Well, you'd had the cancer thing. You'd been through enough. Oh, well, that was a doddle compared to this. I couldn't sleep when he told me about it. I didn't want to take sides. I kept thinking, should I go to the police? Should I go to Alma? I mean, after all, it's her money as well when all... Hey, hey, hey! Are you implying that I walked out because of the money? No! Oh, I mean, we shelled out thousands and thousands over your defence. I mean, money just, just doesn't come into it with me. And I'll never forget it as long as I live. And that's why, in the end, I kept Sturm. Because he bought you silence? No! Oh, did how could you pretend to be my friend and sneak behind my back? It's not that simple. No, you can't change the facts. You were part of the secret. He even penciled his dates in his diary. Well, I didn't know they were dates. They weren't dates. The Julia thing was a one-off. Oh, just, just go, Deirdre. You're wasting both our time. Go on. I'm just going to get some change, Jack. Right, love. Hey, Vera. Oh. You've not said now to Natalie, have you? Not yet, well, I... Oh, don't, because we're only covering for a couple of weeks. You're going to need that cleaning job when Eunice gets back, aren't you? Black hole in the head. The usual, please, Jack. I'm telling you, Vera, say no for now. <laughs> not bungee jumping tonight, then? It's my night off. Hmm. I made a few phone calls and they're doing a recruitment drive for managerial staff. When? Next week. Oh, great. Do you think I'll get an interview? I know you will. I don't miss that. I say I don't miss it. Which is a job with a nice little earner. I'd soon have the lumps of him back. Come on, then. Let's make some inroads. Well, I've, I've some cans in fridge. Cans? I'm a scotch drinker and you know it. I'll have a bottle of that and all. Fender drinking, that's desperation stakes, is that? No, we want beauty. Gregarious company, the cut and thrust of debate. And as we'll not get it round here, we best may do with the rovers. Take your feet up. I thought you'd gone for lunch. I didn't say that. I presumed you wouldn't be so selfish as to stay out all afternoon. Well, I presumed that Vikram might turn up, earn his wages for once. Here. Thanks. Well, now that you're here, you can make yourself useful. I need to book next Wednesday off. You could have given me longer notice. I'm going for an interview. Management trainee. Freshco. Huh? Why? I need a new challenge. 
But this shop is a challenge. You haven't mastered it yet. Oh, somewhere bigger. Bigger's not always better. I want to see what it's like out there. Somewhere faster. Fairer. Look, Dad, I might not even get the job, but I'll be going in as me. Not Vikram's sister, the sensible, dependable one. Just me. And what are you here? I'm boxed in. You're the manager of the shop. Well, you don't treat me like the manager, neither of you. I want to make a fresh start, be treated like everyone else. You want to join an English corporation, and you think they'll treat you fairer than I do? You could at least make it less obvious. What? That you'd rather be out carousing with your pals. So indulge me, Ashley. At least while I'm buying. This job with Eunice, you know, it could be the beginning of summer. How are these? Do me a favour, Phil. Look, why do you always have to be so negative? Do you need it spelling out? I am lucky to have this job. What happens if I have another funny do when she sacks me? Hey, you've not had a do and not told me. No, 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 no but, but I am dead weight at the moment. I'm lucky that she is carrying me, so we cannot afford to put her nose out of joint bitter. You're not going to believe this. Somebody's thrown up all over the toilets. Vera, can you sort it? No, 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 I'll, I'll go and do it. Later, Jack. No, no, I'll, I'll do it. No problem. No problem. Yeah, she gave it to me with both barrels. Old stuff she'd been saving up for Mike till Muggins here walked in. Oh, God, that's all I need. Oh, Mike pay for that, did he? Audrey, I'm not really in the mood for this. Oh. Perhaps you should have thought of that before you started poking your nose into other people's business. It's called loyalty. Man, leave it. Uh, loyalty to a man who doesn't even know the meaning of the word. Oh, don't try and dress it up, Deirdre, please. I don't have to. Do you know, you're his lapdog, Deirdre. You're a fool. He could torch that flat and you'd say he was just trying to keep Alma warm. Ma'am, come and see you. You asked for that. I'm, uh, I'm going, not coming. Alma, don't you uh, Your little chum came to see me today, Deirdre. Now, before you start, I'm not having an affair with Deirdre. Oh, I know you're not sleeping with her. I mean, a bit of casual sex I could forgive, eventually. I mean, even with Julia Stone. What's Deirdre going to... Now, what you've got with Deirdre is far more important than sex. Hey? If I meant so much to you, why couldn't you trust me? I mean, why did you go straight to Deirdre instead of confiding in me? I didn't go straight to Deirdre. It wasn't like that. Do you know, Mike, I can't be bothered to argue the toss anymore. I'm just, I'm just past caring. Look, this is, uh, this is all I can manage right now. I'll, I'll get a van or something for the rest. Like I said, I'm going. And I'm not coming back. Are you sickening for so much? No. Well, why else would you say the pub are too loud? I said, why else? Thought young folk like noisy pubs. You have to lean in close, don't you? Talking to somebody's lugo, which is marvellous if it's a pretty young girl made of finest alabaster. It's not so marvellous if it's your daft old uncle blathering on about meat and suet all night. Ta very much. Mm. I wanted to ask you something. <sighs> And I didn't want to shout in front of them noisy lot. I'm intrigued. I've been told you've got a son. I say, I've been told you've got a son. You've been... T Who's spouting that load of rubbish? So it's not true, then? Of course it's not true. It's a lot of old guff, slander, stuff and nonsense. Are you sure? <laughs> I think I'd know, Ashley, don't you? Suppose you would, I. Know where he told you? It don't matter. I'd like to know. I mean, who, uh, who could make a mistake like that? Well, perhaps she just got her wires crossed. She? Maxine. Won't she said not to say anything? Maxine? Maxine? It was Audrey Roberts who told her. But like I say, she must have got her wires crossed. Yeah, right. Well, what's this? 
want a serious answer to that, or what? Hey, well, you know what I mean. It's a replacement for the van. Yep. See so these two or three. Hey, so these two, not bad. How much do you pay for this? 850 quid. Yeah, that's good. Hang on to it. Go up in price. Yeah? Yeah, become collector's items, these. Where'd you get it from? I made a Danny's. All right. Turning circle's very wide. Not very manoeuvrable. And the steering's quite stiff as well. Look, Kevin, I can get my stock in the back and the kids in the front, and that's all I care about. Yeah, well, they won't be very comfortable. Real bone shakers, these. Don't expect to go far as well, because they drink juice like Les Batters, but where are the kids, anyway? Rosie and Sophie's at a mate's house. Hey, Rosie! I didn't see you there. How are you? She's fine. If you say so. Look, I'll be in the galleys doing a bit of paperwork if you need me for that. Like what? I don't know. Might need to find out where the windscreen washers are. <laughs> What's the matter, sweetheart? Why aren't you talking? See? Oh, we didn't. <laughs> oh, I've always had my suspicions, actually. Oh. <sighs> that thingy programme, you know, with the chef and the makeover girl. I don't think I've seen that one. Yes, you have, anyway. Looks like they're more than just good friends. <laughs> oh! Oh, <gasps> shall I get it? <gasps> what? Oh, yes, love, would you? Why they do that? I'm in Fred. <laughs> just in the front room. Uh, mm. yeah. You've uh, you've got a visitor. Fred! It's Sunday morning. I'm aware of that, thank you. <sighs> right. Oop, sit down. I'll uh, I'll get the washing up done. Okay. Oh, uh, do you want a cup of tea, Fred? No, thank you. Right. Oop, just reading the Sunday papers. So I see. Now, but rubbish a girls. Mm. So you're not interested in the salacious personal lives of minor celebrities? Yeah, of course I'm not. As I thought. That's why I felt that when I entrusted you with one of my most enduring personal secrets, it'd be safe. Instead of which, I might just as well have stuck it on the internet. You, madam, have some explaining to do. Rosie! Everything all right, Sal? Oh, I don't know. Something and nothing, I expect. But ever since, I just seem so unsettled. Hardly surprising, is it? Yeah, I suppose so. I thought getting Arnold might cheer him up a bit. Arnold? I think it's what the girls have christened him. Well, no, if I'm honest, it's what I've called him. They don't seem bothered either way. They just want to stay indoors and watch the telly. Yeah, well, time's what they need, Sal. They'll yeah. come round eventually. I suppose they will. Never mind about my troubles. How are you two this morning? Fine. Great. We're going on holiday. You what? When? Tomorrow. You kept that quiet. No, I didn't. I didn't know. Old devious Danny arranged it. Half term break. Well, holiday's pushing it a bit. It's a caravan in deepest Wales. And what I've paid. Well, you can hardly call it luxurious. Madam Martin, you're giving away. Yeah, it'd be good for the kids. A bit of space so they can run around. That sounds wonderful. Right time and space to get your head together. I'm sorry. Do not worry, Sal? Martin, why do not Sally come with us? Oh, yeah, it's all right by me, but, I mean, I don't know. Well, I don't mean with us, but, well, you could ring the caravan site, see if there's a vacancy. How about it, Sal? Could you do it? Oh, I, I don't know. I, mean, I don't want to. I no problem, Sal. I'll just go and check it out now. All right? <sighs> Well, that'd be wonderful. And we'd have Martin to babysit. <laughs> She's not coming back. So she reckoned? Not you and Alma. Oh, no. Well, I know she was angry because I got the full force of it. Yeah, well, you only got a percentage of what I got. Well, then I feel sorry for you. Because what I got will stay with me for some time to come. I made one silly mistake. I never wanted to hurt Alma. I didn't want to put our marriage at risk and... Well, you know, that young bird I never took seriously. You know that, don't you? But she kept on and on and on and... 
Eventually, I mean... I know you love Alma. And I'm sure she does, too. She just needs a bit of time to get her head together. Neither of us have come out of this very well, but I'm sure that your marriage means as much to Alma as it does to you. It's a bit early, isn't it? <laughs> Should have seen what I had for breakfast. I'm going to do it. What? Drop Kelly in it. Tell the police a whole lot. Then with a bit of luck, I'll get my ten grand back. If Alma sees what sort of pressure I'm under, perhaps things will begin to sway my way. You can't do that, Mike. Well, why? Because they'll want to know why you didn't tell them before. Alma! The police don't care about your marriage. They'll just see it as withholding evidence. Well, that's just a risk I'll have to take. Mind you, there... There is a thing that's uh, nagging me in all this. What? What happened to those negatives? I mean, Kelly had them, and Sally said that he didn't leave them in the house because she looked. So where are they? The police must have them. They have them and they don't realise it, so uh, all I've got to do is make one phone call. And? Well, then with a bit of luck, uh, Kelly gets his and I get me ten grand back. And then I might be able to persuade Alma that uh, it wasn't me falling for a younger woman, but it was someone after me that just wouldn't take no for an answer. Can I get you another? Oh, no, I'm just on my way back. You all right? Not really. So, you Uncle Fred? Something like that. Look, I owe you an apology. Me? Why? You said not to say anything, but... You've told him? Yeah. You told him I told you? Yeah. Well, Ashley... I'm sorry, but it's a big thing, is this. He's on my mind all the time. I never tell him I know he's got a son somewhere. I have to tell him how I know. Yeah, I suppose so. What did he say? Oh, he denied it. Said it was a load of old guff. Well, I mean, my source isn't that reliable either, is it? Oh, no, it's right. I could tell. How? When you've been lied to as often as I have by my Uncle Fred, you develop a second sight. I know when he's telling the truth and I know when he ain't. And I know when he's hiding something. And that something's his son. I'm gonna sue him, you know. Who? Them soap powder advertisers. Sparkling, my back's broke. Cleaning them toilets. I won't care, they don't look any different to when I started. Oh, so what can I get you? Something to take the taste away. No, something to keep my strength up. <laughs> uh, how about a uh, steak pie and chips? Right, coming up. Jack, why don't you go join your Vera? Hey. Go on, I can hold the fort here. She could do with some comforting. Well, I don't. Oh, that's good of you, love. So make that two pie and chips. Right. No, no, no. No, don't you want to join me? No, 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 yes, I'll come and join you, yes, but I'll have salad and tuna. Tuna salad? Are you feeling all right? Yes, I'm fine, huh? Right, tuna salad it is. No mayonnaise, no dressing. Shall I make that too? <sighs> Over my dead body. Hi, hi. Pardon? Oh, come on, Sal, you remember? Hi, hi, campus. What, you mean? <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, thank you. Wait till I tell the girls. Yeah, well, start packing. Sally. <laughs> Sally, I need to talk to you about the other day. I thought I told you. I just want to forget it. Look, uh, I'm, I'm sorry about all this. That's not what you said in the Rovers. I know, but I'm finding things, well, tricky. What do you want? Well, you know when Kelly... Did he have a, a, an envelope or a, a package? It would have been addressed to me. We've been through all this, Mike. No. Did you have a good look round? Well, there's no need. I would have noticed a package. Yeah. Yeah, you would, wouldn't you? Thanks. Thanks, Sally. <laughs> What do you mean you don't want to go away? 
It'll be lovely. We're going to have a smashing time. Are you telling me I've got to go over to Martin and tell him to cancel? Well, when he's gone to all that trouble? Well, what am I going to tell him? Rosie's decided she doesn't want to go away. Why? Rosie, look at me. Why? I don't want to go. Well, I just hope you don't get upset when you want to go somewhere and I say we're not going. Suit yourself. Good day, good day, good day. And how are you this after? What do you want? Oh, still down in dumps then. Well, be they no more, cause your Uncle Fred has taken cognizance of your demeanour and is here to apply remedial action. Which means? I'm taking you to lunch. No, thanks. Oh, come on. Think on it. Roast beef, roast potatoes, Yorkshire pudding, roast beef, spring cabbage, roast beef, succulent gravy, and afterwards... Roast beef and custard. Now, there's a thought. What do you say? No. Oh, come on, Ashley. You're not letting this tittle-tattle get you, are you? It's rumour-mongering of the most pernicious sort. It's tittle-tattle from a prized tittle-tattler. It's, 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 it's hairdresser fantasy. It's what women folk gossip about under an hot hair dryer because they're not designed, bless them, to talk on serious matters. Now, take no notice. I say ignore them, and you and me can get back on road to serious relations. It's your relations that bother me. The relations you claim you don't have. I have not got a long lost son, Ashley. You are the sole heir to my empire. I've told you this, what more can I say? Uncle Fred, you've been good to me. Aye. In many ways, you treat me like a son. Well, I You've also I taken advantage of me. Done things behind my back and not been truthful. Yes, well. Only in your interests, Ashley. If I've ever been economical with the truth, it's been to protect you. That's what I thought. So how do I know that's not happening now? You know how hurt I'd be if you was hiding this from me. How do I know you're not trying to protect me again? So I'm going to tell Martin then we're not going. Right. You all right? Yeah. Oh. What about Rosie? What do you mean? Well, she just seemed a bit quiet this morning, that's all. It's obviously getting to her all this. Yeah, well, they're tough. Yeah, well, they need to be, don't they? You know what I'd do if they were still staying with me? No, what? I'd take them away somewhere. I'd use this half-term to take them away, well away from here. Doesn't matter what it costs. Yeah, well, it's all taken care of. You what? I'm off to confirm it with Martin and Gail. We leave tomorrow. We're going caravanning in Wales. It's a flaming mystery. Maybe detectives don't work on a Sunday. I phone them up, they said they'd take note of the information, right? Now, if they got the negatives, how could they not know it's blackmail? And if they do know, why haven't they been to see me about it? Are you sure there was an envelope? There must have been. We were due to make the exchange. Yeah, all right. Oh, I'm sorry. I just don't know what's happening. Where are you going? Down the station, see if I can find out what's going on. Do you know that your guy's working today? Oh, that's the point, yeah. I'd better phone. But I've got to do something. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Well, be you careful. Yeah, all right. See you later. Uh, pint, please, and I dry out wine. Right, coming up. Thanks. You know, Ashley's taking this thing really badly. I don't blame him. And what do you do when you discover you have a long-lost cousin? Especially one that'll do you out of your inheritance. I know, I just wish I kept my big gob shut now, though. Oh, are you all right there? <laughs> Have you had a good afternoon? Fine, I no. Here, what do you do with your sausage leftovers, you know, from your full English breakfast? I've no idea, Vera. You chop them up and mix it in with your spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> well, I thought that looked good, that. I've been with you this all afternoon. She's given some great tips. I tell you, <laughs> I was born for bed and breakfast, me. And I tell you what, thanks to her, I now know how to use, to use a melange of leftovers to concoct stunning and original recipes. What do you reckon? 
Well, I'd have thought you'd have shown a bit more enthusiasm than that. Blame me now. David Attenborough's come for his tea. Hey, silly. Oh, you look busy. Just checking everything's OK. We're going caravanning in Wales for half term. Oh, lovely. Girls will like that. Just what you need for camping, these four-wheel drives. Right, well, come on, you. Sally's got to get ready. Anyway, have a great time, love. You deserve it. Thanks, Janice. What is up now? I was being nice there. Yeah, well, it'll take more than a few kind words to make up for what your Greg did to her. Holiday, yeah? Wouldn't that be great? I'd give anything for a few days away from here. Well? Oh, stuff it. What chance have I got? Have we any dosh? Have we peanuts? Are you coming in or what? Uh, no, no. I've just remembered. I've got someone to see. I'll, uh, I'll see you later on. Are you ready then? Only Eunice said she'd go through books with me this evening. <laughs> hey, Jack, do you think I should go to night classes? You know, for hotel management, for when we get our own place. Yes, Vera, I do. I something like five nights a week. <clears throat> well, I don't know about that. I'd have to look into it. Now, look, are you ready? No, no, no. You go. I'll come on later. Oh, you can go now, Jack. I can manage. Oh, thanks, love. No, <laughs> no, no. I'd, I'd rather take me time. You go. Oh, all right then. I'll see you later. All right. See ya. Oh, Sarah. Honestly, Maxine, it's nothing sacred. Pardon? What I told you, that Fred was told to me in the strictest confidence. Was it? Yes, it was. So why did you tell me then? Well, because we were... Because you can't keep a secret, Audrey. Yes, I can, and the soul of discretion me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Honestly, Maxine, you know, you should respect what I tell you in confidence. Thanks to you, I'm in real bother with Fred. Look, Ashley happens to be my friend. I'm not going to stand by and let made a fool out of. He's really upset. Oh, is he? Yeah, of course he is. He's very unhappy. Oh, dear. <sighs> Maybe I should go around there then and, and tell him it's all been a misunderstanding. Mm. Well, thanks for coming round. I thought I was going to have to go down to your place. You would have normally. But you're on my way home, and that's where I want to end up, sooner rather than later. So what is it? New information, I'm told. Yeah. Drink? No, thanks. Oh, of course. Working. Driving. Oh, yeah. Can we get to the point, Mr Baldwin? Yeah, of course. Did you find an envelope addressed to me from Kelly? Yes. Well, why didn't you examine the contents? We did. Thoroughly? Get to the point, Mr Baldwin. That is the point. I was being blackmailed. Why didn't you tell me this before? Because I didn't want my wife to find out. You think we go around grassing up husbands to wives? Well, no. I mean, uh, start from the beginning. I think there may have been a terrible misunderstanding about something that I inadvertently may have told Maxine. Oh? Uh, can I sit down? Sure. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Oh, do you know, Ashley, you keep this place really nice, you do, honestly. I mean, I always say that. You hear so many stories about young people these days, don't you? But when folks try and do them down, I say, no, hang on. Look at Ashley Peacock. Who are you? Yes, I do. Mrs Roberts, it's kind of you come round, but... Yes, well. What do you want? Oh, yes, oh, no, well, I'm sorry. Well, what I was saying was... I think young Maxine, because she's young, may have got the wrong end of the stick. Really? Yes. And how do you know which end of the stick I got? Well, I... I've... Has my Uncle Fred been to see you? No, no, not at all, definitely not, no. I mean, um, the other day when he was talking about you. Was he? Yes, singing your praises. Like you're the son he wished he had. Like he feels really happy to leave his empire in your hands. And like he wished he could have given birth to you himself. Do you, do you know what I mean? I see. So you see, Ashley, look, when I passed this on to Maxine, I knew she'd probably bring it back to you. I mean, just to tell you how proud your uncle is of you and just because he was too embarrassed to tell you himself. Embarrassed? Your uncle Fred? Oh, yes, Ashley, of course he is. I mean, 
Look, I passed it on thinking I was doing you both a favour, not to be treated like some gossiping old washwoman. Did my Uncle Fred say you can we see me? No, not at all. I mean, he was adamant on that point. In fact, he said, I wasn't to go near you after all the trouble I, uh, I, I, I could cause if things got misconstrued, which, of course, you see, they were taken out of context. Right, well, thanks for coming out to explain. Oh, right. Well, Ashley, I'm just glad that I've made things clear for you. Oh, you'll have Mrs Roberts. I'm very clear now. Good. OK, bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Leah. See ya. Clear? Well, I didn't understand a word of it. With her and my Uncle Fred, it's not words you have to listen to. It's the way they say them that's most important. Oh, so do you understand, then? Only too well. Why didn't you tell me this straight away? I told you. I was worried. About Mrs Baldwin. Yeah, I know. You know when the best time to interview a suspect is, Mr Baldwin? Straight after the arrest, when their little brains are working 15 to the dozen and they can't quite remember what they've said or who they've said it to. Now, where Kelly's concerned, he's a real cool customer. The longer he has, the more difficult it's going to be to break him down. Giving me this information now is not helpful, Mr Baldwin. Well, I wasn't expecting to. You had all the evidence. The negatives. Oh, yeah. My sergeant gave me your message. Incriminating evidence of blackmail in an envelope addressed to you. Yeah, that's right. Well, I thought I'd bring it over, just so there's no confusion. It's empty. We removed the contents for examination. You have? Well, then, all the evidence you need. <laughs> really? Perhaps you'd like to take a look at the contents. Yeah, that's right. A wad of old newspaper. And you nearly paid ten grand for it. I'd say you weren't only being blackmailed, Mr Baldwin. You were also being conned. Hey! Where's your bucket and spade? Too old for digging on the beach. Oh, I see. Well, Rosie and Sophie aren't. It might come in useful. Go on, go get it. Right, come on, girls, let's get organised. Hey, Martin, I've got loads of room in here. Have you stuck? Oh, yeah. Listen, so I might have to put this one in. Hi, girls. Have a good time, OK? Yeah, I'll make sure of that. OK. Here's some money for them, you know, just spending that. Oh, there's no need. Well, I want to. Thanks. Meet me, Leslie. Hey, come on, you're sitting in the front. You're not staying there. Come on. Oh. Right, come on, kids. Are we all ready? Ready then, Sal? Right, we'll see you there. OK. Listen, if we get split up, I'll meet you at the first calf after Queen's Ferry on the A55. All right. See you later. Bye. Mum, are we coming back here? What do you mean? Are we going to another house? Because I want to live here, now, Dad. Where is he? This is our house. We're just going for a little holiday and then we're coming home. Let's see, Dad. Good morning, Janice. Enjoying your holiday? Not much. That's the spirit. Why can't we go anywhere like most normal people? I've told you. We will do. Just have a little faith. Have I ever let you down? It's Deirdre about. She's at the factory in ten minutes. Whatever you want to for, can surely wait till then. You could, I wouldn't be here. She's about running that place for you these days. I hope you're paying her for it. <sighs> All right, Ken. Hi, Mike. What's the problem? Him. That's the problem. Him. Sorry about that. You're on his territory. He doesn't like it. That's all right. No problem. Water off the duck's back to me. Here's the keys to the factory. Can you open up and get the girls cracking? Yeah, sure. Why? Has something happened? No, that's the trouble. I told the police about Kelly and his blackmail and how I want the scumbag charged and sent down and all I'm getting from them is a big nothing. Well, maybe that's because there's no hard evidence. Then they should find it. Photographic negatives. They're out there somewhere. So is Julia Stone. If they can't track her down, I will. Hiya. What's going on? 
What time is it? Half past nine. Oh, right. Thought I must have got up a bit early then. What are you still doing here? I may because I don't feel like working today. Oh, why are you feeling so good? Oh, I'm not poorly, if that's what you mean. I'm sick of being taken for a mug by people like my Uncle Fred. <phone rings> That'll be him now wondering why I've not shown up at work. Well, he can wonder. Oh, come on, Ashley. You've got to answer it. You can't just let it ring. And anyway, you don't know it's him, do you? Hello? Yeah, yeah, hang on a minute. It's your Uncle Fred. What did I tell you? Well, I've told him you're here now. Well, tell him I don't want to talk to him. No, I can't do that. Come on, talk to him. I've got enough problems of my own without playing piggy in the middle between you two. I know what you want and the answer's no. I'm not coming in today because I don't feel like it. He wants someone to do his donkey work for him. Well, he can go find himself another donkey. Jack? Oh, sorry, love. Just resting my eyes. You OK? Oh, you know me. I... Oh, bright-eyed and mushy-tailed, eh? Where's Vera? She'll be in any time now. Eunice, at the, the B&B, you know, she's going to Spain today, so she's showing our Vera around and with all the bits and pieces, you know. I sometimes think I should do B&B here. Two bedrooms upstairs doing now. Uh, uh. Morning. Just found Morning, these bags love. in the bar. Are they yours, Jack? No, they're not, no. Oh, you may as well have them. It's about half a dozen left in there. No, don't tempt me, woman. I've packed it in, smoking, do not I? Have you, honestly? Mm hmm Kicked it in a touch, finito, benito. Well, good for you. When was the last time you had one? Two days, 23 hours and... 13 minutes, approximately. <laughs> Hey, Sonia, look at this. <laughs> Bye, hey, Janice. I don't know how you do it, love. You get bonnier every time I see you. Oh, it's you. What the flaming hell's that? What does it look like? It's a mobile home. Mobile slum, you mean? Hey, 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 give over. Top of the range is this. <laughs> well, some stars use these on location. For what? Toilets? What is up with you? Knock, knock, knock. This is our holiday. You're not serious. See? See? <laughs> she keeps moaning on about how we can never get away. Well, now we can. I've done a deal with Charlie here. The van's ours for two weeks. Here, hey, up. Compact, but cunningly constructed. Your bedroom's up there, see? How are you supposed to sleep up there? You don't have to sleep. Oh, I wish I were going with you, Janice. <laughs> It'd be a passion wagon and no mistake. <laughs> Can you get your mate on a lead before I chuck a bucket of cold water over his head? Oh, well, I'm off to the pub to drown my sorrows. It's all yours, Les. Here, if ever he leaves you, Janice, you know where I am. Get lost. Hey, right, thanks, Charlie, mate. Yes, mate. Hey, what do you reckon, eh? We can go anywhere we want in one of these. Not like them caravans you can't ship, eh? Better than nothing, I suppose. Hey, you wouldn't chuckle. Now, you go and get your packing done, and don't forget your bikini. We'll be on a beach by tonight. You're not really going on holiday in that, are you? Of course we are. And it's not just me and your mum. This is a family holiday. You're coming as well. <laughs> We're going on our holidays. <laughs> You know you could eat your dinner off them toilet floors. I'll say this for you, Miss G. Well, she's got her head screwed down when it comes to cleaning. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, all her services, yeah, they're all them wiped down. You hardly have to do all. Well, that'll suit you down to the ground, then. Uh, well, I'll tell you this, it's a lot easier doing a B&B &B than running a pub. Do you know, I'm surprised you never went in for B&B &B when you had this place. All those rooms upstairs doing out. Yeah, well, happen if I had her done. Still a bit landlady, instead of skivvy. Having another? Oh, no, thanks. I've no time. Got to get back to Underworld. Oh, come on. You've only been here 20 minutes. You're entitled to a lunch hour. Well, with Mike being out, I feel as if I need to be on the spot. You do realise that man exploits you? He's in a lot of trouble, Ken. Which he's brought on himself. Well, I dare say. But he stuck by me when I was in trouble. I'll do the same for him. Anyway, I'll see you later.
Now then, Jack. Oh, now then, Charlie, old lad. How's my pigeons? Oh, champion. Huh? Eating their heads off. Huh? Yeah, give us another pint, will you? Aye, aye. And have one on me. Uh, no, I won't have a drink with you now. Go on, get it down here. Well, well, go on, then. I'll have a glass of red wine with you. Red wine? Medicine. The doc says it's good for me. Oh, doctors, no, no. Tell you what you need. Bags of fresh air. Now, I've got a camper van you could rent off me. Les Battersby has got it at the minute, but you can have it after him. Hey, you and your Vera, you could go anywhere you fancied, sleeping under the stars. Me and our Vera sleeping in a van? It's what's called togetherness, Jack. I'd rather sail round the world on my own on a rubber duck. You can't make me go. I'm stopping here. You've had that, lady. The house would be a nightclub. I know you. You'd have the lads in. The lads round here? You must be joking. Look, I'm not arguing with you. You're going. Oh, come on, tell you. Cheer up. Why do I have to go? Because we're a family. Or at least we're trying to be. You might have some fun. You might meet some nice lads. Anyway, you can do your revising while you're sat on a beach, can't you? Spencer. Right! All aboard the Skylark and it's wagons oh! Hey, hang on. Hey, can we go? You're banned from driving. Don't mind me. You're not, though. You're driving. I'm riding shotgun. And Muggins is in the back. Where are we going, anyway? Blackpool. Oh, no, we're not. We're going to North Wales. Hey, yeah, yeah, where them snobby blacks have gone. Brilliant! Janice, round them up and head them out! Yeehaw! I hope you know where you're going. It doesn't matter if we don't. Because wherever we end up, we've got our beds with us. So, it's off! Into the wild blue yonder. Come on, come on, come on, our holiday. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Any luck? Not a lot. I spoke to a lot of people that saw Julia at the rag trade do, but uh, no one seems to know who she is. Well, if the police can't find her, what chance do you stand? Well, they didn't seem to want to look. That's the impression I got. <laughs> Would you have a word with them? Oh, hang on a minute, Mike. I've had all I want of police interviews, believe you me. Yeah, but this is different. You're just a witness. I mean, you were there from the off when she started hanging around. And later, when she was putting the screws in, they'll have to listen to you. Oh, all right, then. If you think it'll help. Ah, oh, thanks, Deirdre. Thought it might be you. Of course it's me. I want to know what you think you're playing at. I told you, I'll phone. I didn't feel like working today. What kind of talk is that? You're not a woman. Now, see, I've been doing your job all morning at Fresco's when I should have been at the shop. The sausages won't you make it. You think you've put wool over my eyes, don't you? Well, you haven't. I know it's right about you having a son. I ain't being taken for a mug. I thought we'd You mean you thought that... you'd fill me? Well, I'm sick of you telling me lies. Ashley, come and have a drink. And I'm sick of being laughed at behind me back. And I'm sick of your promises. How you'd see me right and how business would be coming to me. Well, I'm finished. I'll not work for you anymore. If you want someone to do your hard work for you, get your son to do it. Mr. Navigator, where the hell are we? Hang on while I study the map. That means we're lost. Can't be lost in a camper van, can you? Because wherever you are, you're in your home. That's the beauty of it. Beauty? It's an heap of scrap. And there's a funny smell. Well, it's not me. Not that sort. No, I think it's the engine. And I keep hearing this funny ticking noise. Oh, give over, will you? Janice, is Bay Colwyn the same as Colwyn Bay? Depends which way you're holding the map, I should think. Well, we better stop at the next pub and ask directions. Oh, no. We're not stopping at any pubs. 
Not until we've got settled in for night somewhere. Ah, well. Press on, eh, girls? As long as you've got water on one side of you and mountains on the other, you can't really go wrong in Wales, can you? Hey. <laughs> This is the life, mate, girls. King of the road. Third box car, midnight train. Destination Bangor, Maine. It's right what they said in war. Careless talk costs lives. Oh, Fred, come on. Now, I think you're making too much of this. I am Ellis like. Let's jack this job in. Tell me what I can do with it. Ashley's chucked his job in? Yes, Ashley has. I've trained that lad. I've worked on him like an artist, taught him everything he knows about the butchery trade. It's all down to me. But now he's been knocked off balance. He's been thrown right out of flunter by folk foolishly talking out a turn. Oh, now, Fred, stop it. Now, stop putting all the blame on me and Maxine. What about you? You're always trampling on the lad's feelings. Me? Yes, you. I know what's happened. You've said something to upset him. Never in this world. I am known for my tact, me. I and my discretion. I weigh my words. I don't blurt out first thing that comes into my head. No. Them must say something to the lad shouldn't. They know who they are. <laughs> so, come on then. Are you glad we came? Oh, it's lovely. It's great, isn't it? The kids like it too. Yes. And you're going to enjoy it as well. And that is. Oh, sounds good to me. Mum, all the table and things fold up in the wall. Yeah? So are we going to enjoy ourselves then? Yeah! <laughs> hey, Sal, first you wander around, see what's on offer. Yeah, OK. Come on, girls. Well, there's supposed to be a playground round here somewhere. Come on, David, Sarah Lou, let's go and find it. We Pass are going to have a back. lovely time. The best time we've had in ages. Do 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 happy holiday. Do 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 on a holiday. Hey, I can't hear you singing out, Sawyer. I'm trying to read. You do too much of that reading. It's not natural. Hey, what was that? What have you done? Nothing. Well, oh, blame me, Janice. Trust you. Hey, don't you start on at me. It's that flaming van. All right, all right. Don't panic. I'll sort it. Have no fear. Les is here. Hey, oh, look who's here. Now, you know Eunice, don't yeah, you? Yeah, of course I do. Hello, love. I'm just on my way to the airport, jetting off to the sunshine. Every forest oh, fire. Well, it's all right for some. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to give Jack and Vera a bit of a send-off first, seeing they're looking after the B&B for me. Uh, so, do you happen to have a bottle of champagne? Oh, I think I can sort that. Jack, bring us a bottle of champagne, will you? Right, will be. Then chocks away, then. <laughs> Leanne, you get some champagne glasses, all right. Look. <laughs> oh, do you know, I love Spain, me. Mm. The people, they're so, how shall I put it, spontaneous, <laughs> especially the men. <laughs> <laughs> well, me and our chat loved it last time we went. Oh, I wish we were coming, were you? Well, somebody has to keep my little haven ticking over. <laughs> but I'll think about you, Vera, when I'm sat on the front at Santa Ponza, sipping oh. my champagne cocktail with the smart set. <laughs> hey. By the way, Mr. Eckersley, bedroom across the landing from you and Jack. Yeah. Don't let him take any liberties. What do you mean, liberties? You know, men's liberties. He will try and sneak fish and chips up to his bedroom. Nasty, greasy stuff on your fingers. Well, you never know what a man like that's going to wipe on your curtains. Mm, no, well, I'll watch him. <laughs> Jack, what are you doing with that bottle? Just having a bit of a problem with this top, you see. <laughs> Do you know? Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> right, thank you. Let me pour it. Here you are, ladies. It's only two glasses. What about mine? <laughs> oh, yes. Come on, plenty new. Will you have one as well? Come yes, on, get it. You're getting one. Oh, thank thank you. lovely. Oh, well. well, then, cheers, everybody. Oh, yeah, cheers, cheers, love. Cheers, cheers. cheers. Well, happy holidays. Good health. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Have you got a flaming update, Tom? No, I haven't. I must be mad going anywhere with you two. Shut up and push. What now? This isn't getting us anywhere, is it? It gets us off that road. What on earth's going on? Can't you see you're blocking my gateway? Now get that heap out of here. Break down, pal. But it can't stop there, now, can it? 
Well, you shift it then, because I can't! All right, all right. Come on, Owen, we'll have to drag the damn thing out of the way. Oh, brilliant holiday this is turning out to be. Oh, I don't know about that. Hey, Rowan, let me tell you. Owen, don't just stand there, boy. Go and get the dumper. This is Rashid, is it? Yes. Detective Sergeant Reynolds with the field CID. May I come in? Yes, sir. You'd better. Hello. You work for Mr. Michael Baldwin, I understand. Mr. Baldwin tells us that a man called Greg Kelly, who we have in custody at present, was blackmailing him. He says you have information about this. Uh, just a minute, just a minute. You don't have to get dragged into all this, surely? Yeah, calm down, Ken, OK? Yes, I do know something about it. Are you willing to make a statement? Yes. Oh, for heaven's sake! We need to talk without interruptions, Mrs Rashid. Perhaps you'd sooner come down the station with me. No, no. Um, Ken was just leaving. Ken, why don't you go and have a, a drink or a, a walk round the block, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bon voyage. Right, right. Enjoy Thank yourself. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, 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 Jack. Bye. See ya. Bye. Hello. It's the right case, sir. Uh, yeah. <laughs> She's man mad. Oh. Is that right? I, I, I never noticed that. Well, you don't notice that, have you? Mind you, Vera, looking after the boarding house. Hope it doesn't mean you're going to be skiving on your cleaning work here. Okay. What the hell is life? I don't want you mopping this floor opening time. I want you here, as usual, bright and early. Do you know, one day I'll take the mop to work. I will. A large scotch in there, please. Yep. There's a policeman at my house questioning Deirdre. So she's not being accused of anything? That's not the point. Look, why the hell did he have to drag her into your sordid private life? I haven't dragged her into anything. She's there because she works for me. And she might know something that could be helpful to the police. What you mean is she might know about your furtive liaisons. Oh, get off your high horse and get off my back. You're no innocent yourself. Can we cool it here, please? So do you think Deirdre's had enough police investigations to last her a lifetime? She doesn't need you to fight her battles and a good job, too. Cos when you come to the crunch, you're no good. Remember? I bet she does. Did you come in for a drink? Oh, yeah, sorry, half, half a better. Only it looks to me like you came in for a fight. Um, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Oh, look, it's nice. Where are we sitting? Yeah, nice oh, grab place. that table over there. Nice, That's bigger. it. Yeah. Right, come on. <laughs> Who's hungry? Because I'm starving. Hey, Hiya. It's lovely what to be here. On? Hey, don't that look like tire batters, Bear? Oh, yeah, it does. Hang on a minute, that is tire batters, Bear. Oh, tell me I'm dreaming. I'm not that one. It's the flaming Buttersby's! What are you doing here? I own this house, Ashley. I'm entitled to enter it. Well, you can please yourself. She'll be moving out. I'm going to find myself a new job and somewhere else live. Ashley, if you'll just... I'm not going to stand for being flannel for Uncle Fred. Not anymore. Ashley... I know damn well it's right about you having a son. And I know you took me for a right mug, slaving away for your new cracking on it's all coming to me. Hey, shut up, I'm going to get You're right. I've not been frank with you, I admit it. About time. I want to be straight with you, Ashley. You see, I... It's very difficult, is this? I have got a son. I knew it. I... It's you. I'm not your Uncle Fred, Ashley. I'm your father. Have you been sitting there all night? You think I could sleep after what you told me last night? No, I suppose not. So it's nice to know you're talking to me this morning. 
You'll be late for work. I'm not going to work. There's no need to stop on my account. If I have to spend the rest of my life on this sofa, I'm not shifting until we've sorted this out. Sorted it out? How can we sort it out? We're talking. There's no problem that can't be solved. If the party's concerned, are prepared to communicate. We've been talking all night. And we'll talk all day, if that's what it takes. What do you want me to say? You pee me, Uncle Fred's me dad. Last night you told me my whole life was a lie. My mum's not my mum anymore. My dad's not my dad. My uncle's me... Not my uncle. My head's spinning so fast it feels like it's gonna explode. Why did you wait so long to tell me? When Belle agreed to bring you up as her own, I swore never to tell a soul she wasn't your mother. You don't make a promise like that lightly. Except you broke it last night. Yes, well, I didn't have much choice, did I? Luke. I've been aching to tell you since you were born, but I promised. I had to keep my distance. Do you remember your first school sports day? No? Well, I do. You were seven. You won the egg and spoon and the sack race. And you'd have won the three-legged race and all if they hadn't tied you up to Billy Bunter's big brother. I was so proud of you. I thought my heart would jump straight out of my chest. I wanted to come and grab you in my arms and hug you. Don't talk like that. It's not right. It's the truth. No, it's not. It's a lie. A great big dirty lie. The same lie you've told me every day for the last 22 years. Of all the campsites in all of Wales, we have to break down into one with Florence flaming plat in it. I knew this van was going to be a disaster. Ooh, what's that smell? I don't think the chemical toilet's got any chemicals in it. Now, why doesn't that surprise me? Don't you worry, love. Charlie will see us right. <laughs> if Charlie West's our only hope of getting out of here, we might as well start digging in for winter. Charlie's a good mate. When he finds out we're stuck, he'll be out here quicker than you can say one of them long Welsh names. I knew I should have stayed at home. It's only a minor hiccup. Being on tours like that, a new adventure every day. Oh, who's that? Get on that phone now to Charlie. As soon as I've had my brew. Well, bad luck. Because the gas canister's gone. No gas, no brew. Oh, oh uh, hiya. Hiya. Hello, uh, come in. There's plenty of room if you're breathing. And what do you want? I was just wondering how you were getting on with fixing the van. We find some. Everything's under control, no problem. Well, if you want, I could have a look at it for you. No need. Once I've spoken to my mechanic, we'll be out of here in no time. Have you seen my mother? My real mother? When you were born, she vanished like a puff of smoke. She never bothered to get in touch? I knew she was running away from. It were me. She used to work for us in the thole shop in Nelson Street. Good work of mine. Never afraid to get stuck in. It were a year since Sybil died and... I don't mind admitting her death at me hard. I'm not making excuses. I knew what I were doing and so did Kathleen. Kathleen? Ah, Kathleen. Pretty girl. Bright as a bum. Dark hair, a touch of red. I think there must have been some Celtic blood in there somewhere. It probably seems a, a sordid business to you, a middle-aged butcher courting an innocent young girl who works for him. But I cared for her. 
I did. And all this were before she became pregnant. When she told me she were expecting, I asked her to marry me. And what did she say? Near as damn it. She laughed in my face. She were young. All she wanted to do was run away. But I couldn't let her take you away. So we reached a compromise. Beryl couldn't have any kids of her own. So it were agreed that the best thing to do were for her and Sam to bring you up as their own. It seemed like the best solution at the time. And everybody lived happily ever after. Listen to me, Ashley. I love all black and white movies, but life doesn't come in black and white. It comes in one colour only. Dirty, muddy, brown. It's not a lot to go on, Mr Baldwin. That's what the police said. I was hoping your methods might bear more fruit. If Julia Stone's still in the area, I'll find her. And if she's not? I'll still find her. But it could take a lot of my time and a lot of your money. How's it going under there? It's cooked. Hey! What do you think you're doing? Oh, I asked him to have a look at it. And? Sorry, mate, it's dead. And we're buried. Did you get through to Charlie West? Is he going to come to our we'll rescue? Is he, heck, is like. He's only bogged off to Benidorm. You what? Left us right up the Swanee. You didn't know the Platts were going to be here, did you? How could I? It's bad enough having to live in the same street as Florence without having any sour face ruining my holiday. Aye, aye. Still here, then, are you? Not by choice. Well, this can't stay here forever, mind. Yeah, well, give us a bit of time. We'll sort it out. Yeah, well, while you're sorting it, where will we be staying? In the van, of course. Ah, no, well, that's where we've got a bit of a problem, see? Because this park's for statics only. No, no, you're in luck, because right now we've got just one free. That's a very kind offer. A welcome in the hillsides, like. Ah, I think you'll find our rates are very competitive. Rates? What rates? I thought you were offering to put us up for free. Oh, no. This is a caravan park, not a rubbish dump. Right. Well, I suppose you'd better show us this caravan. My pleasure. Janice! I don't mind stopping here. We can't afford it. Yes, we can. Janice, that's my beer money. Take a deep breath, Les, cos from now on, you're going to be getting drunk on sea air. <sighs> It's not like you to give up so easily. What did you say? I never thought that you'd give in just because of a few tiny teething troubles. This has nothing to do with teething troubles. I want to achieve something on my own, not just because my father owns the shop. Are you ashamed of working in the family business? Of course I'm not. Nita, darling, you belong here. Your place is here with the family. This is where you belong. Answer me one question. Ask. What happens when you die? That's a morbid kind of a question. What happens to the shops then? So you want me dead now? You know very well that the shops will go to Vikram. If I want to do something, I've got to do it outside of the family business. So I'd be grateful if you could stop all this fuss. Is it so bad for a father to want to keep his daughter close to him? It's just an interview. But you're bound to get the job. You're bright, you're beautiful. I'd give you a job in a second. But when you start this new brilliant career of yours, where will you live? Sorry? The flat above the shop goes with the job. And if you don't want the job... Make up your mind, eh? Either you want to keep me close to you or you want to make me homeless. Which is it? I'm not a little girl anymore, Dad. So you can stop trying to manipulate me. If you're really that bothered about the flat, I'll pay rent. Well, it's a bit small. It's ten times bigger than Charlie West can provide. You want 95 quid? For a week in this tin box? We'll take it. Hey, now, hang on a minute. What do you reckon, Toya? Yeah. yeah. Right, we'll take it. Flaming Nora, don't I get a say in this? No, Les. No, you don't. The van is knackered. The two is over and we're stopping here. Any problems, just let me know. Thanks. Are you ready, then? Hey. 
Well, I need you to come home. Do you know to shift them beds? I've got new arrivals at six. No, I can't. What do you mean? The boss has asked me to do a couple of hours extra. I mean, what can I say, Bill? Well, you could say no. Look, you're not in a good condition, you, to do overtime. There's no wrong with my flaming condition, just your mithering. Look, ask Mr Truscott to help you with the beds. She seems a fit enough bloke. Well, you've changed your tune. Needs must, Vera. Now, yes, look. Uh, can I have uh, two gin mm. tonics, please? Coming up. Thank you. Oh, Fred, now. Everything all right between you and Ashley? No. Things are not all right. Things are most decidedly skew whiff as it happens. I feel terrible. It were all my fault. I should have kept my big mouth shut. I had to tell him the truth. What truth? I'm his father. You are? Ashley's your son. Yes, he's my son. And no, he is not best pleased at the sudden change in his parentage. I do not believe it. I've done it again, haven't I? I say I've done it again. Shared my guilty secret with the biggest blabbermouth in Weatherfield. Oh, now, Fred, honestly, the, my lips are sealed. They can torture me, whatever. I won't say a word, I promise. Aye. That's what you said last time. You don't seem that surprised. <laughs> Very little Fred Elliot could do that would surprise me. Well, it's not me until the middle of next week. I don't know which way he's up anymore. If he was so proud, why has it took him so long to tell me? Probably because he knew how upset you'd be. So it's better to keep telling me lies? If he thought the truth would cause you pain, naturally, he'd try and protect you from that. Well, I didn't think you'd be taking his side. Oh, is that how you see it? A big fight? You versus Fred Elliot? It's how it feels sometimes. Look, you're a lovely lad, Ashley. One day you'll have kids of your own, and I'm sure you'll be a great dad. But you'll soon find that being a good parent's not all that easy. It's not that easy being a good son, not when you don't know who your parents are. Don't look now, but your husband's just walked in. Well, it's a free country. I'm glad to see you've got the right attitude, lovey. Listen, you can hold your head up anywhere, sweetheart. Tim should be hiding under a rock. Well, I just want to get on with my life. Look, Jack, why don't you get off home, eh? I'm sure Vera could do with a hand down the B&B. Well, she's a very resourceful woman, our Vera. She'll have it all going like clockwork, you know. Yeah, so take a break. We can cope here. Yeah, but if we go there, I don't want to be under her feet. And to tell you the truth, I find it more restful here. Mr Watts, I'd be grateful if you could stop putting fanciful ideas into my daughter's head. I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. I know it was you who influenced my Nita into going for a job at Freshco. I don't take kindly to people poaching my staff, and I take even less kindly to you trying to break up my family. From what I know of your daughter, Mr Desai, she's uh, not the type of young woman that would allow herself to be influenced by anybody. Forgive me, Mr Watts. I think I know my own daughter. Well, if you think that Nita could be persuaded to do something against her will, then maybe you don't know her as well as you think you do. Call me if anything turns up. Yep, anything at all. Bye. I thought I might find you in here. You do realise we lost the lacy wear order? I've just hired a private detective. If what? Well, if the police can't find him, then... Mike! There are more important things than finding Julia Stone. Well, that's where you're wrong. I'm not going to let them get away with it. And right now, there is nothing more important than finding Julia Stone. You know what my Uncle Fred's like. He'd make you believe black's white if it suits him. But my mum, she's different. I can't believe she's lied to me all these years. I'm sure she had her reasons. I'm not a child anymore. Don't I deserve to know the truth? You're asking the wrong person. Only me, Ashley! He's got his own key. Do you want me to go? I suppose. Now oh, you're here. I was just leaving, actually. I expect you two have been having a cosy little art to art. That's right. And before you ask, yes, I know the whole story. Well, I hope you can trust you to keep it to yourself. Unless you've taken out a notice in Gazette. I've only told Maud. Good. I'm no tittle-tattle. 
I know how to keep a secret. Well, let's hope you can. Now, I am sure you will understand that me and Ashley have a lot of talking to do. Be sure that you let the lad get a word in edgeways. I'll see you out. <laughs> now, it's nice to see him enjoying himself. Martin is so good with the kids. Well, you deserve a break yourself, Sal. And I should thank you for asking me to come. Don't be done. Hey, if you want to keep an eye on David and Sarah Louise while you and Martin have a better time to yourselves. Oh, Sal, that'd be really nice. Well, it's the least I could do. Oh, no. Oh, just ignore them. How do you ignore the batter's biz? Especially when the caravan's parked bang next door to ours. Oh, I don't know, but I'm not going to let them spoil my holiday. <laughs> Cheers. Is this the entertainment, then? Florence doing his spy school impressions. Oh, give over. Oh, I'm going to play. Well, you seem to be popping up all over the place. That likes to keep you busy, you know? Do you never get any time off, then? Oi, oh, oh, call an undertaker. Your social club's just died. Oh, no. Don't tell me. Don't tell me you're in charge of the entertainment as well. No, no, I'm not. Frankie Diamond is. Frankie Diamond? Never heard of him. Well, he's an ex-red court. He's into disco, karaoke, bingo, everything. He's very good. Well, he'd have to be if he can get this place rocking. I've seen more life in my vest. What time's he on? June. June? We'll be gone by June. Well, June is when the high season starts. Flaming Nora. Come away for a week and it feels like a month. Leave arm, sit down. Just because of me son, don't mean you have to listen, you tell me. Oh, no. It's a rum do. When you thought you were my nephew, you were more obedient. Well, maybe he was trying to impress you then. And now? Now I don't have to. Now I don't care. Put him down! You're too old to play rebel without a cause. Besides, there are more important things to talk about. I'm sick of talking. You were up and jabbering away to more then. Well, maybe I'm sick of talking to you. Maybe you should talk to me, ma'am. Oh, no. I don't care what you think about me. You can hate me as much as you like, but you're not saying out to battle. I forbid it. I've a right to know why she's lied to me all these years. No, you have not. She's a good woman, is your mother. She's made sacrifices to bring you up. You have never wanted for naught. It is my mistake. I'm the one who opened this big gob. If you want to take it out on anybody, you take it out on me. I don't want to take it out on anyone. Then let's leave it, then, shall we? I just want to know the truth. I've told you the truth! I've said before, I... I am so proud to have you as a son. And maybe deep down I wanted you to find out. Nobody tells Audrey Roberts out they want kept secret. But this is where it stops. Do you hear me? Nothing's changed. Your mum's still your mum and I'm still your Uncle Fred. Everything is back to normal. Do you hear me? I hear you. And then we agreed. You know the truth, and that's the end of it. I suppose. Are you hungry? No. Well, I am. I say I am. Let's go and have dinner somewhere. I don't want to go out. I'll tell you what. I'm sticking to these clothes. I'll go back to the house and get some freshens. Then I'll bring us back a nice piece of steak for us tea. What do you say? I said I'm not hungry. No, but you might be later. Now, you stick there. I'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail.
Mom. It's me. Ashley. Will you get some bog rolls as well, cos we're running out? OK. I know it's my turn, but Natalie's asked if I'll do a double shift, so I'll probably only get an hour off. It's OK, I don't mind going. Anyway, you're the one who works in a supermarket. I'm most likely nip across the street, actually. I'm not going in work today. What, again? You haven't been in all week. Have you got something wrong with you? I'm just having a few days off, that's all. What, just like that? No particular reason? No. I reckon you get special treatment cos of who you are. And what's that supposed to mean? Well, if I just suddenly decided to take a few days off just like that, I'd get the push. Different matter when your boss is your uncle, eh? Well, he can sack me if he wants. I couldn't care less. You've been really funny these past few days. Are you all right? I'm all right. Are you sure? You best get going. Else you really will be getting pushed. So, what are you going to be doing today? Revise, I suppose. What, on your holiday? That's a bit miserable. Yeah, we'll make exams start next week. Exams? I don't know why you're bothering. I never did. Yeah, and look at you. Well, it's a pity you can't enjoy yourself for a couple of days before they start. Eh? Yeah. I might take my books down to the beach. Hey, that's a good idea. Let's all go down, get some sea air and a few cans. No, Les, you're not going anywhere. Why? Because I said so. You can help me tidy up this lot first. Hey? I mean it, Les. This is my holiday just as much as it's yours. We'll follow you down later, love. You won't be revising tonight, though, will you? I don't know. Why? Well, I thought we could go down the club, like, you know, have a knees up. Great. Did you not like it? Well, it's not exactly throbbing with life, is it? Oh, she's right there. It's like a morgue last night. They should be laying on proper quality entertainment. Mm. Hey, I'll tell you what. If I had my gear, I'd show them how to party. Mm. So, what time is your interview? Oh, four o'clock. Do you know, Kelly, I haven't felt this nervous since I did my GCSEs. You'll walk it. I don't know. I hate interviews. I either get tongue-tied or I come across too aggressive. You'll be the best candidate they've had in ages. But I haven't got any retail qualifications or practical experience. You've been running this place practically single-handed for six months. Courtesy of who, may I ask? It's a small backstreet corner shop, Curly, not a nationwide chain. The principles are the same. Yeah. So what do you think they'll ask me? Well, uh, 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 that's privileged information. It's not fair on the other candidates. Mm. Says the man who only ever hires members of his own family. That's different, because this is a family business. Ignore him. Well, they'll probably ask you, are you interested in working in a large-scale retail outlet? Uh, because she is a traitor who has no loyalty whatsoever. Give it a rest, Dad. What am I supposed to feel? It's bad enough that his company is stealing my business without them stealing my staff as well. Oh, come on. I mean, you can't be doing that badly. You've got about eight shops. You wait and see. In five years from now, they'll all have been swallowed up by Frechko. Well, if they've got such a big future, I'd better get in there quick, hadn't I? Hey, how are you doing? Settling in? Yeah, fine. I'm just going to the beach. Oh, yeah? Well, if you walk along the cliff path just up the way there for about half a mile, the view's fantastic. I sometimes stand there for hours just watching the sea. Well, why don't you come with me? A million and one jobs to do, sorry. Maybe I'll see you in the bar later? Maybe you'll see me behind it. Oh, come on, it's only down the road. Well, I'd still rather we take two cars. <gasps> well, I don't mind driving as well. Right, well, however we go, can we make it today? Day's half gone. Hey, Hello. Toya. Hiya. All right. You have somewhere nice? Yeah, off to the beach. Oh, I don't suppose I could catch a lift, could I? Well, yeah, we could squeeze one more in, if you're quick. I want to <laughs> sit next to Toya. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got a fan there, Toya. She's been asking where you are all morning. Right, where's David? David? Do you want one of these jelly things? Oh, no, Tar. They're made up of crushed up animal bones. 
Have you seen this? Seen what? I will tell you. She's only going to the beach with them plats. As long as she's away for a couple of hours. Who cares? I don't like her fraternising with them. They're bad news. I still can't believe they're here. It's a jinx, that's what it is. I said, as long as she's out at work for a couple of hours, who cares? We've got the place to ourselves. So what do you reckon, Tiger? How are we going to kill the time? There you go. Well, come on, then. What are you waiting for? Mm. Hang on. Hang on a minute. Wes? Hand. Oh, 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 hang on, girls, hang on. Oh, there you go. Hey. Ooh, has anyone ever told you you're a dead ringer for Melinda messing you? Get off. Oh, hang on, girls. Come on through, Hayley. Um, I was looking out for you at Fresh Calls, but they said that you'd phoned in sick, so I <sighs> thought I'd just drop round and see how you are. Bet with the talk of the factory. <laughs> Not at all. And obviously, we we're all very concerned. I just think it's really sad. Oh, I hey, don't you go upsetting yourself. Come on, come and sit down. Pathetic. I'm meant to be <laughs> one cheering you up. No, no, I'm OK. I just can't face going in, that's all. I, I seem to walk around with a permanent knot in my stomach. You're bound to feel like that. No, no, no. I, I don't feel too bad. I, I woke up quite cheerful this morning, even. Well, you know, for an hour or two, and then wham, it hit me. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't want to be listening to all this. Oh, yes, I do. It's not what he did. It's the fact that he did it now at a time of life when you think he'd be beyond all that. I don't know why, but I think that's what I found so hurtful. Is there no way back for you both, then? Sure, if I took him back, I'd just feel like I was humiliating myself. But then, I mean, the thought of ending my days as a divorcee... <sighs> ..does seem very drastic. No, it is pathetic. That is what it is. Well, for what it's worth, it's obviously it, Mr Baldwin hard. Really? Yeah, I mean, not that we've seen much of him these last few days, and he's not one for opening up, but you can tell he's very, very upset. Am I being unfair, do you think? No, no, not at all. Anybody would feel like you do. I just wish I knew what to do for the best. Look, say no if you don't want to, but it's my day off today and, and I thought I'd go into town and do a bit of shopping. Why don't you come with me? We could grab a bite to eat. Why not? Beats mobbing about the place. There you go, Jack. Water, oh, right. no salt, no butter. Nope. Go. Watching your waistline, Jack? Me heart. I think the secret to a long life is to indulge in all the little luxuries, not cut them out. Uh, that's what I thought until I finished up in intensive care. Dicky ticky, you see. Really? Mm. I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to. No, 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 that's all right. No, no, I feel all right now. When did it happen? Oh, a couple of weeks back. But shouldn't you be at home, convalescing? Oh, well, no, I'm, I'm all right, as long as I don't lift any heavy weights, you see. Which is a bit of an handicap when you're a cellar man. 16, 24, 36, go! And it's a great road by the quarterback, and he's through! Oh, and he's in there for a touchdown! Yes! Dead lucky having a fellow like Martin. <laughs> we have our moments. Well, I'm not saying your life's easy or you don't have any problems. I just mean he's a good husband. Yeah, and he's a good man. And he's honest. And he loves his kids. He worships you. People used to say that about Kevin. Don't mean we were right for each other, though, does it? it seemed that way for a long time. Yeah, well, it's all water under the bridge now. I'm going to finish with men. <laughs> Oh, I mean it, Gail. I can't take any more risks. Sally, any woman that's been through what you've been through would feel the same. Just give it some time. Yeah, I will. A lifetime. A young, good-looking woman like you can't stay single forever. You just watch me. Sally, you've made one mistake. Don't punish yourself forever. 
Gail, I've made a decision and I'm happy about that. From now on, it's just going to be me and the girls. So very much, Fred. Thanks, Jack. Here you are. I bought you a double. I think I need it after the night I've had. Did you ring him back after you spoke to me? Only to say I were coming round tonight. Check you were going to be in. Oh, he's in all right. He's not been in work all week, on strike. I feel like I've been pulled through a mangle. For what it's worth, I did ask him not to say out to you. You expected him to carry on as normal, did you? The lad's bound to want some answers after the bombshell you've dropped on him. I thought there'd been enough upset as it is. And whose fault is that? Mine, I know. That's what I can't fathom. I kept asking myself over and over, why would he do a thing so stupid? I foolishly, very foolishly, let slip to a friend of mine that I had a son. Why? I Who? I didn't think it'd get back to our Ashley. But it did. Yes, it did. But not for one second did he think it was him. But it started his mind worrying, he started asking questions. And so you told him the truth? Not at first, no. I told him it was rubbish. But he could tell I were riding somewhat. It was very awkward. And while all this is going on, did it not occur to you to pick up the phone and talk to me? I didn't think it needed it. You mean you thought I'll handle this my way? I know best. You sound as if it would, as if it, it were planned, but it weren't. It were, it were a spur of the moment thing. You couldn't keep your big mouth shut, could you? And then when the truth was out, you wanted Ashley to keep it a secret from me. I was in a very difficult position. I'd have done anything for a baby, you know that. But we agreed I'd bring him up as my son. We agreed never to tell the truth. I know. And even if Ashley were ever going to find out, don't you think it would have been better if you'd talked to me first? We could have sat down and told him together. Things don't always work out that way, do they? They certainly don't with you around. You wreak havoc wherever you go. I handled it very badly, and I'm very sorry. But now the truth is out. I know you won't see it like this. But I think in long term, it's for the best. You've turned that lad's world upside down. You've turned my world upside down. And what's more, you've done it in the ugliest, messiest way possible. Forgive me if I can't see bright side. <laughs> for what happened with Greg. Oh, give her time. She'll come round. Oh, no. For an hour or two there, I actually forgot he was here. Ignore him. That's what you do when you're in the Rovers. All right. This social club's a casa. We might as well have stopped at home. Oh, keep your voice down. They should be dancing girls, wet t-shirt competitions, cabaret! I'd be happy with a game of bingo. Yeah, well, at least you two can have a drink. Well, I've had enough of this. I'm gonna have a word with the management. You don't start on Owen, it's not his fault. Stop him, ma'am. Hang on, pal. This is not on. What's not? This place, it's like a morgue. We want entertainment. Yeah, hold on, hold on, i got something for you. What's this? A set of darts. Is that it? Well, I think we might have a pack of cards somewhere, too. I meant live entertainment. Well, like I say, we don't normally have acts on until I see them. It's not even a dartboard. Yeah, well, I don't normally put it up. And... I see them, yeah, yeah. Look, it's, it's in the storeroom, right? But wait till I finish serving this customer, and then I'll go and get it for you, OK? I wouldn't mind. But it's only two darts. Hiya. Mm. Hello. I'd just seen you get off the bus, thought I'd pop in, see how you went on. Oh, very well, I think. I hope. They seemed very interested in what I had to say. They'll snap me up if they've got any sense. Can I ask you something, Mr Watts? Do you enjoy breaking up families? Do you know, I think what swung it was when I told them I had a complete lunatic for a father. They took pity on me. 
A lunatic father who might not be around very much longer. You are fitter than I am. I could drop down dead any minute. Look at poor Jack Duckworth. Jack's not dead. A man in the prime of his life, and suddenly he has an angina attack just like that. But he drinks like a fish and smokes 40 a day. But it could happen to me. What will we do then? Then, my dear father, we'll just have to cross that bridge when we come to it. Nita, my darling, I need you by my side. Please reconsider. You better sit down. Do you want a coffee? Uh, no, I'm fine, thanks. Nice place you got here. You've not been before, have you? No. Just the two of you now, isn't it? Me and Leanne, yeah. She might come back while you're here. I'm not selling anything. Oh, so. I understand what you're saying. It's funny, isn't it? I've been living here nearly two years now and you've not been near. We weren't on the best of terms when you moved out. Truth be told, we've not been on very good terms since Trevor moved in. And now we don't even speak anymore. Except Christmas and um, Mother's Day. You've grown up. You've got your own life to lead. We've drifted apart. Maybe we weren't that close in the first place. I know we're not as close as I thought we were. Here we are. Oh. I know it's in here somewhere. Ooh. Hey, you're the only frightened life, aren't we, then? Ah, uh, it's only Albert. He belongs to Frankie. Frankie? Yep. He's our club entertainer. Ah, uh, the dummy's part of his act, to take it. He's very versatile. Hang on. Hang on a minute. What's this? It's an amplifier. What's it doing here? Well, the amp and the twin decks are for the disco. Here we are. You mean to tell me we've got to make do with two darts? When there's a PA and twin decks in good working order just sitting here? Yeah, well, until Frankie comes back, we haven't got anybody to operate it, I'm afraid. You are going to be so sorry you let him in here. <laughs> I know you feel hurt and angry. I'm bitter and cheated. But I just want you to know that as far as I'm concerned, you're still my son and you always will be. No, I'm not. I'm your nephew. Don't say that. At least me Uncle Fred can admit the truth. You can't even do that. But I brought you up as my son. I never asked you to. I loved you as a son, still do, and I always will. You're me auntie. Why can't you just face up to it? Who clothed and fed you? Who bathed you and tucked you up in bed at night? I was a good mother, Ashley. You wanted for nothing. I'm not even sure it's legal what you and Fred did. Surely you can't decide between yourself to take someone's baby and say you're mother of it. Seemed like the right thing to do. I don't think anyone else would see it like that. In a funny sort of way, it was as if it were meant to be, like fate. Don't talk like that. You must have known what you were doing were wrong. No, I'm not saying we didn't have doubts. Going to the hospital to fetch you, I was terrified. I kept thinking, what if he rejects me? What if I don't like him? But the minute I saw you, the minute I held you in my arms, I knew it was going to be all right. I knew. No, he definitely said he found twice. Well, Alma's have just nipped out. Yeah. And does he want it? Yeah, I think so. Oh, good. oh Alma! Excuse me, Deirdre. Could I, uh, could I have a word with you for a moment, please? Yes, of course you can. Wait me a minute. <coughs> I had my credit declined today, and when I rang up to ask why, they told me the principal cardholder had cancelled it. Is that true? Ah, oh, well, you can't have it both ways. What do you mean? Both ways. But you walked out. What? I mean, are you, are you trying to punish me or something? No, but if you're not living with me anymore, why should you have all the benefits? Oh, and to think. I was just beginning to feel sorry for you. Oh, well, that's different. If you come back, everything goes back to normal. Come back? After you pulled a stunt like this? Here. Here, just take, take, take the lot. What did you do a stupid thing like that for? What do you mean? You were the one that said I should let her see, but she was letting go of. I was dreaming, but I'd rather be with you instead. So, wake me up before I go-go! Oh, so much for ignoring it. Come on, Gail, we're going back to the caravan. Oh, Martin! 
Come on, we're going. We're putting up with it. <laughs> I'll say one thing for my husband. He's never too frightened to make a complete idiot of himself. Which he does most of the time. At least he's breaking this place up a bit. Yeah. So, uh, how far is it to a proper town? But half hours drive, why? I just wondered if you fancied going somewhere else. I wish I could. Don't you ever get a night off? Oh, yeah, plenty. Between November and March, when this place is shut. Aww. Take the moon the With a beautiful ballad, made famous by the immortal George Michael! Will you dance with me? I should be serving. Oh, go on. For me. If you were so sure about what you were doing, why couldn't you have been more open about it? What do you mean? You could have adopted me. And there'd been no need for any secrets. We didn't want anybody knowing our business. You like someone to out at dark ages, you and Fred are. Part of me wanted you to know the truth. But the older you got, the harder it seemed to find the right moment to tell you. And what about when my dad died? Or the man I thought was my dad? Wouldn't you have told me then? No. You were upset enough as it was. I was grieving because I thought my dad was dead. But he wasn't. In fact, my real dad was holding me on at funeral. Have you any idea how that makes me feel? Yes. So how could you stand by and watch and not say anything? Sam was your dad. Not biologically, but he was your dad, not Fred. That's what I can't go with the DC. He's made a mockery of everything. That's why I would have preferred it if you'd never found out. What you don't know can't hurt you. Here. I'll get that. Say, if you want me to go, I... I thought perhaps it'd be best if all three of us were talking. Well, you can come in. Come and see what you've done to Just shut life. up and get out of the pen here! I, should... I mean it! I don't want to see either of you ever again! Was I good in here last night or what? Well, we had a few more in, but it wasn't exactly Woodstock. Well, obviously, you've got a builder following, haven't you? You were well into it, I tell you, weren't you? Tell him. What can I say? My mind was blown. I suppose we could think about having another go. I'll give you a hand. Hiya. Hi. I'm a bit busy. Give us another go tonight. I'll have this place rocking and rolling. How much? Well, uh, I do have a regular gig in the centre of Manchester, like. Well, I obviously couldn't afford you then, could I? Well, uh, uh, just outside, actually. I'll do it for the rent on my caravan. All right, I tell you what, we'll see what happens tonight. Now that people know what you're about. If it goes down well, we might do a deal. Now, I can't say fairer than that. You've made a wise decision. I'll be in later on this afternoon and set all my gear up. That's all you. Dead easy. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's the night because there's going to be good rocking. It's a night. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's Les, going to be rocking. Shut up, will you? Right. I won't mind, but I'm going to have to start again when I get back to B&B. &B. Do you know, it's all I ever do. Oh, Vera, you're so good at it. You see, you're a veritable cleaning machine, aren't you? I tell you what, I wish I had one. The muck in here sometimes. Yeah, well, I wish I could give you a lift, but you... No, know. listen, you're doing enough already. And I tell you what, I want you back in that front room, feet up watching the telly by two. Feet? No later. No matter what anybody else says. Fear that nobody is forcing me to work. Well, just think on, that's all. What have you done now, Jack? Uh, same as usual, working too hard. You won't be told, will you? Anyway, I'd better get back to my guests, make sure everything's in... Uh, 
proper order. Right. Have you done the gents? Oh, yes. And here's a different cloth for the tables. Good. Sounds like delivery's in, Jack. Aye. Shall we? No problem, love. There will be, if you're not back home by two. Good rocking tonight with Les Battersby. Sensational sounds from the North's number one. What about that? Fab. Now, do you mind? I'm trying to revise. This place was a right one-horse dump till I got here. I've seen more culture in a yoghurt. They don't know how lucky they are. Hey, love, uh, are you busy for a few minutes? What does it look like? It looks like you're sitting there doing now. Just because there isn't a big hammer or a shovel involved doesn't mean it's not work, you know. Listen, go and see that dozy Owen and see if you can get him to let you use their uh, photocopy to rip about 50 of them off. He's not dozy. You just don't know him, that's all. When the holiday season's over, they all start drinking moonshine and playing banjos. I know. Not like you suave, sophisticated city types, eh? Yeah. <sighs> now, don't you go spending too much money. No, oh, chance will be a fine thing. <laughs> now, I won't be long. And don't worry, cos I'm fine. I meant what I said before, you know. You're welcome to stay as long as you like. I've never been one for being on my own much, and it's nice to have someone to talk Audrey, to. Audrey, me, I can talk a glass eye to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, stay as long as you need, all right. You know, I can understand people assuming that because Mike and I have been together for such a long time, we're just going to wander back together and carry on like nothing happens. Yeah, well, I suppose it's because it's difficult to imagine you without one another, really. You know, since I had that cancer scare, it's made me think about a lot of things. You start looking at your future in a pretty clear way when you think you might not have much of one left. And it teaches you a bit about coping and coming to terms with some things that you just thought were unthinkable, I suppose. People say it can make you stronger. Yeah, well, maybe it has. But I know one thing. I can manage. And if I have to manage without Mike, fair enough. Have you seen this? Les Battersby, the North's number one. Yeah. Number one pain in the backside. Well, what's he done now? Well, read it. David just picked it up in the shop. Oh, I don't know. Talk about holidays from hell. I mean, what have we done to deserve this? Mrs. Battersby? Mrs. Battersby? My dad thinks he didn't give you enough change. You're ten pence short. Oh, right. <laughs> Cheers, love. You could have waited. Well, I was coming this way, so I thought I'd better, you know. I bet you like working on here with your dad, don't you? I suppose so. Well, since my mum died, I had to, really. He couldn't run this place on his own, but it's okay. I didn't know about your mum. Sorry. How could you? But thanks. <laughs> no, we got it running great between the two of us. I mean, I had half the chance of going to university, but all this kind of took over, you know? I bet there's a lot of lads jealous of you. Working outside, loads of girls. They only see it in the summertime. And the trouble with girls on holiday is... Well, not like yourself, like. Well, I'm hardly a girl. <sighs> Well, most girls, anyway. They're gone before you get to know them. You don't really get a chance to talk, you know? It's not often you hear a lad saying that. Well, I can't be doing with all that desperate holiday romance. It's all just kid stuff, really, isn't it? Well, you just haven't found the right girl. That's your trouble. Do you know, I've walked straight past. <laughs> what am I like? <sighs> it's my fault, keeping you talking. Well, there you are, then. We're both as bad as one another. Anyway. I met Les a bro. See you, love. Oh, and thanks for this change. <sighs> right, well, that's me done. I'll shift these empties and then I'm off. Eh? Are you all right, Jack? You've been on pins ever since we opened. Vera has been expecting me at two o'clock on pain of death. Nice and lemon. <coughs> mm. 
By gum, they could do with me in that test team, couldn't they? Hey, you can still move a bit when you have to, Jack. Aye. You all right? Fine, no problem, no. Jack, why don't you go and sit down a minute? No, I'm all right now, as long as young Leon doesn't throw me any more leg breaks. I'll, uh, I'll go and get me coat. Jack, if you're not right, I want to know. Because I don't want you having to do anything that's going to give you problems. Here. <coughs> what time do you call this? Jack's not well look, here. Look, look, look. I've had a tiny little flutter, that's all. It, nothing unusual. I feel fine. What? When? Look, I've told you about carrying heavy weights. I wasn't carrying anything. You're having him doing too much, you know. You should have been finished by two, not flaming half past. Hey, hey, hang on a minute. Look, Jack, I have no intentions of coming here and finding you flat out in that cellar. But you won't listen to me, will you? Right, before we all start having a shouting match and everybody getting in a state, we need to talk about sorting this out. Because I'm sorry, Jack, but we just can't go on like this. Can we? Do you think he's nice looking? Who's that, love? I see. I think he's a bit sorry. These chips are good. Say, yeah. Do you fancy coming round later to listen to some music? Um, I don't know. I might have to uh, revise for my exams. OK. Do you like my nails? Oh, they're very nice. You look right grown up, love. Don't she tell you? Yeah. Uh, nice. So I might see you in a bit then? Well, uh, we'll see what we're doing, love. OK. Oh, do you know, it's going to be time for going home at this rate. I don't think he's interested. Oh, you never know. Seems like a right nice lad. Maybe you should just go over and talk to him. Yeah, but we're running out of time, though. <laughs> I'd hardly say that at your age. Oh, it's all right for you. I just want to know how many you've had. Vera, they are not attacks. As long as I remember me spray. Once I've had that, I'm as right as rain. Well, I just want you to tell me. Every time it don't feel right, you tell me. Are, are you listening? Vera, what am I supposed to do, eh? I've given up the drink, I can't eat fat, I can't have a fag. He's down left. Well, you didn't tell me you'd stop smoking. I had no choice, did I? Ah, oh, do you know, I'm really proud of you, love. You know, that you're making this effort. But you've got to let me help you, cos we'll manage between us. I hope so, Vera. Hey, now, don't you be thinking you're going to be dying on me, Jack Duckworth. Because there'll be trouble if you do. Done. You should have left him. Oh, come on. At least let me do the washing up. I've got to do something. Come and have a sit down. Oh. <sighs> Actually, you know, uh, I was thinking about what you said earlier about you and Mike. Did you really mean what you said about being ready to make a go of it on your own? Well, I wouldn't have said it otherwise. Well, you've got to... And I know you're going to say that I'm being too previous, but you've got to start thinking about your finances. Oh, come on, I can manage on what I'm earning. No, I mean a settlement. I mean, after what he's been up to, you can't ignore it. There's a lot of money tied up with what you and Mike have got between you. You want to get yourself a solicitor as soon as you can. Well, I haven't really thought about that side of it. I suppose I should. <laughs> yes, you should. But there's no shame in it, love, eh? You said yourself it may be painful, but you've got to look after your own interests once you're out there on your own. Testing, one, two, one, two, check. One, two, three, Janice, what do I sound like, love? Go and rescue Sally with them drinks, Martin. Hey, look, she's in there. We've got one balance on the chat room. Come on. All right. Uh, uh, young lady, come on. Back to that caravan now, Sorry, you. I have seven. I don't care. You've got too many big ideas, you have. So come on. I want to stay with Toya. You can't stay with Toya. Look, I don't mind going back with you for a bit. 
Oh, Tonya, do you mind? Just till the second. I'll only be a few minutes. Right, come on, you lot. Back to base. Thanks, Tonya. I hope you're on. Go on. How many jobs have you got? Too many. Hey. Does your husband really do the clubs here in Manchester? Is that what he told you? <laughs> the white horse in Weatherfield. He makes a scene more like. He's got all the part that I'll give him that. He must work at it. All that flash DJ stuff. Yeah, unfortunately, it's the only place he ever does work. Everywhere else, he's a complete dead leg. Are you ready? Well, I... Offer, actually, so I got three. Oh, it's nice. Stra I'm not expecting anybody, are we? Hi, oh. right, can I come in? Well, I don't know, Mike. Well, I only want to come in. Just let me in. I won't be long, honestly. I think. It's Mike. Have you come to give me my credit cards back then? Shall I leave you to it? No, it's all right, Audrey. It won't be a minute. I haven't come here to argue. Well, I should hope not in somebody else's house. Look, I didn't mean to cause a big row in public over this. I thought if I cancelled your credit cards, well... Well, damn it, I've run them past the limit anyway. Well, whose fault's that? Well, I just wanted you to see that you didn't have to try and get by without all the things you've been used to. I mean, well, I suppose I could have handled it better. Oh, you're dead right. I was a bit clumsy, I suppose. Clumsy? Is that what you call it? Oh, go on, Mike. Get out. You make me sick. You really are determined to put me through it, aren't you? Could I have a word? If you like. Somewhere a bit less public, huh? Whatever you want. I'm sorry I went off at you before. I think I'm afraid. I know, Vera, it's all right. I just don't want a repeat of what happened this afternoon. I don't think I can let him keep working down that cellar, Natalie. I mean, it could be worse next time. Well, the work will get done. It's Jack I'm concerned about. Well, we might know more once he gets his test results. Yeah. Well, let me have a think, eh? We'll sort some it out. I'm gonna have to. Uh, yeah, I think you missed out there, Sally, because I think it could be a real nice bloke underneath it all. <laughs> You saved me there, Martin. <laughs> he asked me to go and have a look at his lurcher. Oh, <laughs> it. Go and make yourself useful. Go to the bar. OK, same again. Same again. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. Martin, have you seen Emma yet? Yeah, she took the kids back up to the caravan. She'll be back in a while. All right, what else? Hey, Janice, is that my beer? It should be up here, not down there. I think I'll go back to the van. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. Oh, too much excitement for me, Owen. How do you think I feel? <laughs> well, I would tell you I'll be back in a few minutes. You can have a dance the ball for you. I mean, she's revising all day. You're working. You should start enjoying yourself at your age. Maybe when I finish this. Hey, come on, I'll walk back with you. Yeah, all right. Do you think I've not wanted to tell you, Ashley? After all these years? Are you ashamed of me or what? No. Oh, no. It weren't that. It's like I said. There were other people's feelings and all. And what you don't know can hurt you. I know now, don't I? I brought you some it. I want you to see it. What is it? 
It's my will. I've made out everything to you. I don't care about your will. It all feels like one big lie. Everything I've ever done. Everything you've ever said. Then let's start putting it right between us, shall we? You and me? You're my lad, Ashley. I love you. I've loved you since the day you were born. Let me be your father. Bar. I don't suppose you need any of these, do you? <laughs> no, we're all right, thanks. She'll come back here, tell you, when she sees that I'm not in there. Why don't you wait a few minutes? And when she gets back, she can help you, you'll get done quicker and you can have a dance. What? You mean come in? Yeah, you might as well. I'll put kettle on. <sighs> no, no, I'm, I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> do you know, I think that's an automatic reaction. Every time I come in, putting kettle on. Comes from living with Les all this time. She should be back soon. Janice, I think Ty is a really nice girl. I do. But I... It's all right, love. I'm not trying to get you married off or out. You're safe. Well, why don't you sit down for a bit? I mean, you spend half your time running around after everybody else. Oh, steady on. I'm not used to having a considerate fella in the same room. I know. Do you mind? I suppose I should be sorry, but I'm not. We'd best be getting back. I didn't mean to upset you. No, you haven't. Let's just forget about it, please. No. One more. One more, then I'll go, I promise. Owen! Hi. Um, Gail said you might be looking for me. Yeah. Didn't expect to find you in here. No, uh, well, your mum was in, so she said I could wait. We thought you got lost. <laughs> Wait, 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 uh, didn't we all win? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we were ready to set up for the search party. Well, you went to the bar. I'm surprised you missed me. Well, uh, you found each other now, haven't you? So, uh, I'll leave you to it. Oh, and Toya, Owen's got a few jobs that he needs to finish, so uh, don't be letting him stay too late. Will we see you in the bar later on, Mrs. Battersby? Uh, maybe. I, I don't know. Mm. So, um, uh, enjoy yourselves. See you later. See ya. Well, here we are. Amy Corner there with a little bit of family shape. <laughs> <laughs> my joints like the green beans. Now you remember the fabulous sounds of the swinging blue jeans.
Can I get you anything, love? Just a pint for me as well, thanks. Are you going to be much longer? I've just checked. That bus to rail is half past every hour. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be finished in time for half nine? What about the half ten? I get bored of this. Well, will you get a move on? Give us a chance. Oh, it speaks. I've just got my tape to finish. I'm doing a compilation quiz for tonight. Now I'll have a bit of 60s and 70s disco. That's if he'll let anyone else on the dance floor. I thought an hour's disco, and then... A bit controversial, this. I thought about a wet T-shirt competition. Oh, great. Put us down. You what? Me and Toya. Put us top at list. I'm not having you. Why not? And as for her... It's perverted. She's my daughter. We're all somebody's daughter. Aye, well, I might just check her in check on that one. Wet T-shirt. It's so 80s. Hiya. Hey, do you need an hand? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. We're off to real <coughs> today. Get in the bus. Do you fancy it? I can't, I'm working. But it's bank holiday. Not for the likes of us, eh, Owen? The show must go on. Yeah. I'll make you a bacon butter. You've got ten minutes. I've got all this to finish yet. Make it fifteen. Fifteen? And it's going in the bin. Oh. Now, come on, Les. Think. What's oh, so. up? You've never been sat there like that. Yeah. What if she comes down? Oh, she's managed to resist me so far. What is it you wanted? I thought I'd give you a lift to work. I just feel like chilling out today. Doing what? Just mooching. Mooching? Where do you do that, then? Rambling about. Look, I'll be in tomorrow. Does that suit you? Half eight on dot. All right, all right. I know when I'm not wanted. I didn't mean it like that. I don't know what I'm doing today. All right. No need to explain to me. I might pop it rolled about lunch time ish. See you there then. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, it's cold. If you'd have been here on time, it'd have been hot. I've been talking to Taffy Williams, haven't I? And he's agreed to my offer. He's given us the pitch and the van rent free. Come again? Well, he liked me spot so much last night in the clubhouse. He's asked me to do it every night till we go home. You're joking. No, I'm not. What's up? Les, why did we come on holiday? To get away from it all. And? To be together. Me, you and Toya. Yeah? Well, we won't be. Cos you'll be up there behind your mic. Toya will be wherever and I I'll be sat there like Billy No Mates. Look, there's no need to be jealous. It's like the song says, you are the wind beneath my wings. I'm not being flaming jealous. What then? We'd have been in the clubhouse any road. Together, as a family. Yeah, well, now we're getting paid for the privilege. Look, there's plenty of days we can go out on holiday. I mean, what's this trip to real if it's not a day out? If we ever get there. Look, there's nearly an hour to the next bus. So while we're waiting, let's go inside and play mummies and daddies. Come on. Where are you? Hmm? Oh. oh, you're never going in. Well, of course I am. Oh, it's going to be such a lovely day, though. Oh, well, people have to eat, even if it is a lovely day. Ring in, come on. For hours, sicky. Audrey Roberts. And you, an employer. Yes, well, employers expect it on a day like today. Oh, to be honest, I want someone to play with. Well, you're forgetting I was a brownie, you know. I have to do my duty. Mm -hmm. Later, then. Let's go out for a night on the tiles. 
Oh, my love, give yourself a break, for heaven's sake. I can't remember the last time I saw you laugh. And you wonder why? <sighs> yeah, we'll get all dressed up, have a few drinks, and then have a meal. Don't you think you deserve it? Eh? Well... Yes. Hey, you can contemplate life being a lady of leisure. That'll put a smile on your face. Because you can throw away that uniform, you know, once you've got Mike's settlement in the bank. Think about that. Don't look at me like that. Like what? You threw me out, honest. Did you try to get the kids to sleep? Yeah, that old chestnut. I'm going to take them out later in the pram. Fresh air's still free, innit? Yeah, but for how long? Oh, sorry. No, no, it's all right. I've done it. It's done. Right. Hey, he's not been trying to poach you behind my back, has he? If anybody's grooming this lad for greatness, it's me, I say me. We were just chatting, Fred. I've already had hunted Miss Dessai, don't you? Correction. She came to me. Oh, oh, that's what you led her to believe. Let's have a couple of bags of nuts, Jack. Look, it's nice to be seen as being dynamic. Make them cashews. Let's push the boat out. Uh, but the truth is... The truth is we should have gone in work today. At least there we get paid for talk shop. Gary, um, tell me where to get off if you want. I don't ever like the sound of this. Well, I'm looking for somebody to do about an hour a day. You know, shifting carry and that sort of thing. How are you fixed? Well, that's Jack's job. It is. But I know he's not up to the job. And he knows he's not up to the job. But neither of us has got the heart to say anything. I mean, it'd only be temporary, you know, till he's back to his old self. But I'll make sure we don't put his nose out to joint. Jack's a mate. Yeah, and a good barman. Which is why I don't want him keeling over on me again. Just an hour a day, you say? Well, probably less. But I'll pay you for the full hour, and obviously I'll fit it in around Judy's shifts. What do you think? All right. If it's all right with Jack. Leave it with me. Oh, someone's got a happy bunny. I've been stood up. Who by? My own parents. Oh, well, it's a new one on me. We were supposed to be meeting me at the bus stop. You know, we were having a bit of a day out. Except they didn't show. I felt like a right mug. Yeah, well, some would say we're a lucky escape. <laughs> All right, Kath. Oh, did I speak too soon? Nowhere near as big as yours. <laughs> hey, Les, come on, get a new Hey, good morning! Hey. Oh, what a night last night, eh, gang? Oh, don't forget, same again tonight. Sounds of the 60s and 70s, but an arse number one. Les! You've been avoiding me. I've not. Have you changed your mind, then? Oh, changed my mind about what? About me. Owen, this is not a good idea, love. Don't call me love. Here she comes, Teresa. My lovely lady wife. Who'd have thought a robber's dog like me would have ended up with someone as beautiful as her? Look, I'd had a few drinks. I can't even remember half of what happened. Sorry I'm late, Toyla. Not only is she lovely, Teresa, she's also a game thrower. Watch this. Oh! So, what you got for me? A bill? Most clients prefer to pay as we go. A lump sum at the end can cause quite the shock. Uh, they are the rates we agreed, Mike. I'm uh, not ripping you off. It's a cheque, all right? Yeah, no problem. I know where you live if it bounces. <laughs> so, have you found her? No. I'm pretty sure Julia Stone's not a real name. And I thought we had a lead at the hotel. Her bill was paid on a Mrs Bestman's credit card. Yeah? Yeah. Um, but they made a mistake on reception. Two women checking out at the same time they got the bill swapped over. Yeah. Mrs Bestman's bill was paid in cash. 
Mike, can I ask you something? Yep. What do you realistically expect me to achieve? <laughs> I thought that was obvious. Realistically? I want to know, Kelly. I want my ten grand back and I want my wife back. Why? Well, the way I see it is this. It hinges on Kelly, not Stone. She's signed off. Cheery bubbles. Every lead we've had has dried up. Kelly knows who she is, where she's from, and who her pals are. Yeah, but Kelly's keeping Stone. Can you blame him? Yeah, well, uh, if he was uh, out on bail, maybe I could get to him. But while he's in custody... Oh, well, that's marvellous, isn't it? Bloody marvellous. Here, it's the last check you're getting off me. Mike, I'm... What's wrong that... with this country? Why did I have to go to you in the first place? This is a police job. They should be leaning on him from a great height. Yeah, maybe we should bring her on holiday more often. Yeah, we could take a ski in this winter. Nah, I quite fancy the Caribbean. For a change. Yeah. Although, knowing our lot, we'll probably get a tidal wave and you know who will get himself washed up on the beach. Oh, and here's me thinking this afternoon was a Battersby free zone. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I turning into a Battersby bore? Well... Well, it's not just him, it's... It's Janice and Toya as well. No, it's not them. It's the likes of him. We get them in work all the time. All battered and boozed and still giving it loads. You know, I go to football matches with our David on the touchline and they're all getting steamed up about a game. A game of football. Jobs. Yeah, well... Sometimes it just feels like they're taking over the world. And I'm not being a snob here, Gail. It's just... I just wanted to bring the kids away and get them away from all that. Just relax. They've had a great time. And you can't wrap them up in cotton wool. You know, they've got to find out for themselves. No, I know. They're lucky. They've had good teachers. Yeah. We haven't done bad, have we? Bad? Flaming brilliant. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. I mean, look who Sarah Lou's taking on as a role model. <laughs> Tell you about us, <laughs> <laughs> And was it a good film? Haven't a clue. Oh, don't tell me that you were canoodling on the back row. Oh, yeah, in my dreams. No, I couldn't hear a word with all that popcorn crunching and drink slurping and girls going out to the toilet. Oh, dear, it sounds as if you need a drink. Uh, no, it's all right. It's neat as round. <laughs> a mate of mine in personnel gave me a call. The offer's in the post. Really? Yeah, well done. Oh, thank oh, you. Congratu yeah. Congratulations. Judy, has Sir Gary mentioned? Oh, he has, yeah. So what do you think? Well, anything that gives an extra bob's all right by me. As long as it's all right with Jack. Well, I'll make sure it is. Cheers. Your <laughs> usual lady? Oh, if you were Jack, but we're not stopping long. Ah! No, I don't want to bump into Mike looking like this. Oh, this is exactly when he wants to bump into Mike. Remind him what he's missing. Make him doubles, Jack. Well done, girls. <gasps> How many times? It was a joke. Do you see me laughing? We watched it stopped. It's all steamed over. My dad bought me this for my 18th. But? You say so. Don't you start slagging off my dad. Ah, it'll fill up in a minute, sir. Don't you fret. Any road, I suppose you want to see me running order. Oh, do I? A couple of lads were after a wet T-shirt competition, but I said no. Frankly, it's so empty. Family entertainment, Mr. Battersby. That's what we want. Gotcha. Where the hell have you been? I'm shaking off my fan club, man. Get up there and dance. Make the place look busy. To this? Oh, get me mum up in jail. Look, if I wanted pants, people, I would have booked them. I'll put something more happening on. You get up there and strut your stuff, kid. Oh, come on, we'd best be off. We're late as it is. No, it's all right. It's one of them bar restaurants, you know, they serve till real late. Bar restaurants? Mm -hmm. So do you mean it's going to be full of all those 30-somethings with mobile phones? As long as they're 30-something men, darling, who cares? Well, I do. Oh, rubbish. But it's so undignified. Oh. oh, I know what you're saying, it's only a joke, but, well, I mean, if we are 20 years older than the rest of them... <sighs> Well, I'm having another. What's yours? A milk stout and a packet of port scratchings. Oh, that's what. You see, part of me's really excited, but the other, well, it's my father. I feel I'm letting him down. You feel that, or he's making you feel that? Well, both. Why? 
You're taking all the things he's taught you out into the big wide world. He should be proud. It's all that the young can do for the old, to shock them and keep them up to date. <laughs> Spoken like a woman without children. Spoken like George Bernard Shaw, actually. I've been, um, talking to Judy. I didn't realise just how strapped they were for cash. I know, but they don't come cheap, kiddies, and especially not these days, do they? So I've been racking my brains to think what I could do, but, you know, Judy's a bit stymied with the shifts, what with having to babysit while Gary does his rounds. Ah, will be, will be. So I did think of something, but then I realised. What? Might be treading on your toes. How? Well, there's not a lot I can do with Gary. I mean, he already does me windows, but, you know, he's not exactly bar material. So then I thought what I could do is play to his strengths and to yours. Get him in for about, you know, hour a day to do the donkey work, shifting barrels, that sort of thing, and uh, put you where you're at your best. Customer relations. Like I say, I want to help, you know, so what do you think? Just shifting and carrying, like? Oh, just that. I mean, I wouldn't have him anywhere near my pipes. <laughs> and obviously he'd be answerable to you, you know, your assistant type of thing. <laughs> Except we wouldn't call him that to his face. Oh, no, 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 no. So what do you reckon? Aye. Aye, aye. I think it'd work, aye, aye. Let's do the lad a favour. You bloody idiot! Screwed me off to death. Sorry. I'm sorry, all right? Where are you going? Oh, go and play with someone your own age, will you? All right, so I'm just a soft kid now. And you happy with Les? Happy with your life? Is everything in the garden rosy? You don't know the first thing about my life. Well, you work your fingers to the bone and nobody notices. You crack jokes, I mean, they're funny jokes and nobody even laughs. And when you're with Les, what you think doesn't count. You're invisible. You've got some nerve. I just see that. I see it and it knocks me sick. Janice, you're funny and kind and generous. Your eyes go all crinkly when you laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're lovely. And you're half my age. So? So, look, Owen. I was into Blondie the first time round. Why can't you get it into your head? Last night was a mistake. So you remember it now, do you? Yeah, and I was flattered. But that's as far as it goes. That's as far as it can go. Janice, last night you admitted something to yourself. You deserve better. Oh, God. Oh, God. I told you we should have gone sooner. Rubbish, it's a free country. Come on. Hi, Mike. Uh, hi. Hi. This is the first night out I've had, the first one. Sweetheart, not my business anymore. What do you want to go and say that for? Oh, come on. Large scotch? Day I've had, make it a very large one. I'm just saying, back off a bit. Oh. Well, we've never lived in each other's pockets before. Why start now? But we've so much catching up to do. No, we haven't. Yes, we Think have. Think about it. Do you know more about me than my mother does? Better mean. Most lads my age don't even want to talk to the parents if they can help it. Me and you, we work together, we drink together, you're my landlord. But when all's said and done, I'm your... Now you know, I want the world to know too, Elliot and Son. No. What do you mean, no? In me head, my dad's my dad, that'll never change. You'll always be my Uncle Fred. But I'm closer to you than you ever were to him. Are you? Go as I am. I don't want to sound ungrateful, just truthful. Well, it's like they say. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Exactly. But... Elliot and Son... Don't it sound... seductive? I don't know how you did it, but I used to put a bit of grit in the food. 
Jack. I'll see you. I'll see you, Jack. I'm ever so grateful. This job of Gary's. Well, you can hardly call it a job, love, can yeah, you? Yeah, well, call it what you like. It's extra money in our pockets, and that's all we care about. You could have been dead to stop him. Most men I know would have been. Right, well, between me, you and the gatepost, yeah. he's, he's, he's doing me a favour, isn't he? Because I'm still not feeling right after that ticker thing, you know, so... I'm glad of the help, but that between me and me. Right, right. You've not seen my mum anywhere, have you? Um, and she and the ladies? No, I thought. And now, an old time favourite of mine from years gone by. Come on, I want to see you storm the floor for rocking all over the Everybody. Is he breathing? He's all right. He's going to be all right. Phone an ambulance. Where's his wife? <laughs> what are you doing? His heart stopped. We have to get it going. Where's Janice? I'll go. I'll go. <laughs> I've just worked it out. It's 16 years since I had an holiday romance. You're not jealous, are you? No, I told you, I could get that every week. It's not what I want. Janice! Janice! Are you there? What's up? What's happened? It's Les! He's been electrocuted! What? Yeah, OK. Um, how far has the ambulance got to come? About 15 miles. Okay. He could be dead! OK, Tyler, you're all right. I think I've got a faint pulse now. So just, just help me. Just help me push him over, please. That's it, that's a good Why? Just bend his legs down there. Please! Please! He's going to be all right. Just what happened? Just keep him on his side, Tyler, OK? What happened? He's had a shock. His heart stopped. Martin saved his life. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Where were 